It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, February 12, 2024. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well. It is a great day to be alive. Welcome back to the program. It is a beautiful day here in New York City. The NFL season is finally over. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Womp womp. Can I get a womp womp, Frank? Yeah, that's how I felt. I'm not a Schadenfreude. I think I botched that type of guy. Let them be happy. I don't really care. I just wanted the whole thing to be over uh, because it hurt too bad because I know in my heart my Buffalo Bills should have been the Super Bowl champions uh, this year, last year, the year before. But nevertheless, congrats to all the fans out there, Chiefs Kingdom, yada, yada, yada. Now we can move on with our lives. And uh, it was a fun time. I have some thoughts regarding... Uh, people's expectations um, about the uh, supposed UFC 300 announcement at the Super Bowl or during the Super Bowl or during the commercials. I don't know what you guys were talking about, but we'll talk about a lot of that in the first half hour of today's program. Of course, we are a combat sports program, and it was you know, a relatively busy few days since we last spoke. We had the Tiafimo Lopez womp womp fight on Thursday, which wasn't great. He was victorious, but nothing to really uh, write home about. Obviously, the Apex event on Saturday uh, was what it was, and I have some thoughts on that as well. But congratulations to Jack Hermanson, who will hopefully join us on Wednesday's program to talk about his big win over Joe Pfeiffer. Uh, another, you know, a, a, another lesson, a teachable moment for Pfeiffer. I don't think this is the end of his run. I still think he's a massive prospect and a future contender. But Jack Hermanson is a big step up. And he's a really tough out, and he's a crafty veteran, and he's been here before in these big spots. And you saw a lot of that come into play on Saturday. Dan Ige had a nice win. Uh, I mean, that's actually putting it mildly, if I'm being honest. A insane knockout of Andre Feely. That was like a rifle. It was like a rocket of a right hand. Knocks out Touchy Feely, who it just seems like a win, a loss, a win, a loss. And I feel for him because you know he's so talented. And he took this fight on short notice, so... Fair play to him, but that was a big-time dub for uh, Dan Ige. A bunch of other stuff happened as well, and there was a big fight announcement on Friday. Devin Haney against Ryan Garcia, April 20th. What what an April we're getting. Uh, Six and seven, we get WrestleMania. 13, we get 300. 20, we get Haney Garcia, and there's more to come. And I love this fight. And in particular, because in the past, these fights aren't getting made. And Haney and Garcia are the two guys who continue to exemplify that they are running towards the big fights. Instead of padding their records and giving us these ho-hum matchups, Haney, I mean, he is at the top of the list. And Garcia as well. He's not running from anything. You could say after his last performance, ah, you know, maybe a couple more fights with Derek James. Ah, you know, he didn't look great. He's coming back after the... Tank Davis fight. What does he do? Now he books himself against one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. Just won the 140 title. Haney Garcia is a great fight. So a lot to get into, a lot to talk about. I'm very excited to be here. And as always, our good friends over at DraftKings Fantasy Sports are presenting today's program. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with the code, the MMA Hour, because life's more fun when you're in on the action. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem, call 100 Gambler. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. Uh, I didn't use any sort of gambling apps yesterday, but it was just my boys and I watching the Super Bowl, and I wanted them to be a little, you know, like me, they're diehard Bills fans, and I wanted us to have some skin in the game. And there was a part of me that felt like, am I taking them on the uh, the gateway to gambling? But we did a little, I didn't call it a props thingy, but, you know, how many touchdowns, how many field goals, what color the Gatorade, um, how long the halftime show was going to be, coin toss, things like that. And lo and behold, they stayed up to the very end. And then we're getting really into it. And even we're dying to find out, you know, what color the damn Gatorade was, purple in case you were wondering. And uh, my son, Walter, won. So fitting on his birthday week, he wins. Now I have to figure out what to get him. 
Uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Today's program is one you're going to enjoy, and I'm looking forward to it very, very much. Um, back into the show, we'll get the recap as far as the betting is going. Parlay Boys, GC's Picks, etc. Mackenzie Dern's going to join us at around 335 She's taking a fight on short notice against Amanda Lemos. Of course, we saw her back here in New York at MSG in November. Tough fight for her against Jessica Andrade. Takes a fight on short notice against the tough Amanda Lemos. She's replacing Tatiana Suarez. It's a relative home game for her and an opportunity for her to get back on track. If you look at her last five fights, it's lost one, lost one, lost one. So if if the... You know, if the trend continues, she gets a W on uh, Saturday against Lemos. We'll talk to Mackenzie Dern at around 3.35. Tommy Aspinall is going to join us. Na, 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 na. Uh, fantastic stuff from Tommy as of late. Coming into his own, I look forward to talking to him about where he's at, what's going on. Is he fighting later on this year against... A heavyweight not named John Jones or Stipe? Is he fighting Alex Perez? Is he fighting someone? Who knows? But we will all find out when we talk to him at around 3.05 Eastern. Arnold Allen, one of our favorites, will join the program first time since his fight against Movsar Evloev in mid-January in Toronto. Somewhat controversial moment and uh, a tough loss for for Arnold. And uh, now he has to figure out where he goes from here. He's been putting out great content on the socials. We'll check in. With the pride of Ipswich Town, one AAA, Arnold Allen, the almighty one. Yair Rodriguez will join us. El Pantera, uh, a bit of a featherweight block, if you will. Uh, get his thoughts on Saturday's main event between Ilya Taporia and Alex Volkanovsky. A gigantic fight, which I cannot wait for. Golly, am I intrigued by this main event? I'm intrigued by the 299 main event. This one in particular feels like massive stakes because there's so much... There's so much to break down, like, and and especially in the aftermath, you know, will that loss and will that decision uh, to take the Islam fight on 11 days notice come back to haunt Alex? You know, Ilya's supremely confident, uh, the social media bio, everything that he's saying, um, it just feels like he's blowing right past Alex. Does Alex remind everyone that there are levels, that he's still the man? Is it too much too soon for Ilya? I mean, just so much there. I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. And the main card is really good for 298, to be honest. So looking forward to that. And speaking of Alex Volkanovsky, his uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach, one Craig Jones, is going to join us at about 1.30. He is quite the character, and he's already in California, in Southern California. And so I look forward to uh, talking to him in about 22 minutes. Uh, I do want to give a special thank you and shout-out to Spencer Hawes of the Buffalo Bills, who hooked the team up with some goodies. Uh, and that uh, was a really nice package to receive yesterday morning as I was dreading the Super Bowl. So thank you very much to Spencer and the whole team over at the Bills for the love. And I can't wait for this Monday show next year after the New Orleans Super Bowl 59 when we could celebrate the Bills being the champions of the world. Also want to give a shout out to uh, Ronnie Chang, the uh, comedian who uh, who invited my wife and I to come to his show at Radio City on Thursday. And as I tweeted on Thursday night, if you ever have an opportunity to see Ronnie Chang in person, and there was also a great comedian who opened for him named Aaron Chen. Unbelievable. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a tough nut to crack when it comes to comedy shows. I don't know why. Some people, they love him, and, and I do as well, but I, I find that I don't laugh as much as others. I don't know what it is. I was tearing. I was crying. There was, there was snot coming out, all kinds of mucus. I was the mucus king. It was phenomenal. Uh, and Ronnie's a huge uh, MMA fan and uh, rolls over at Marcelo Garcia's, I think like five days a week or something. Would love to have him in studio one of these days. He's a very busy man. His star is, is just rising. He is exploding. He's just an unbelievable talent. And so I really enjoyed that experience. That was uh, a lot of fun. I was actually at the show when the whole WrestleMania press conference uh, went down. And like I said last Monday, you have to wait for the whole story to unfold. I, I I feel like this was always the plan. Is some of it reactionary to CM Punk's injury? Is some of it reactionary to the crowd response to the internet? I don't know. But uh, that was cinema right there. 
and it continues to be cinema. So we are very lucky, my friends. If you are a if you are a person in that Venn diagram of MMA, boxing, and pro wrestling, how could you not be happy right now? All three combat sports are cooking with big things to come. WrestleMania season in full swing, 298 coming up. Yes, a bit of a a bit of a rough patch as far as the Apex shows are concerned, but we've got some big shows coming up and, and boxing is uh, delivering some big fights and big fight announcements, i.e. Haney Garcia. Uh, I noticed on Saturday, and uh, especially Saturday night and Sunday, a lot of chatter on the internet about these Apex shows. And I feel like I've been saying it for quite some time and was, was labeled a hater for saying this. But uh, it's nice to see people finally starting to agree and, and come around that this just isn't Major League MMA. This isn't what we think of when we think of the UFC product. This isn't what the fans deserve, what the fighters deserve. This just isn't it. And uh, it's, it's tough to get through these shows. You know, six and a half, seven hours, no atmosphere, no buzz, no energy. And you're starting to hear more and more fighters say, please don't put me on this card, or I was bummed to be on this card because it was at the apex. It, it should feel as big as possible. And not every event is going to be 300 or T-Mobile or MSG or Staples or Anaheim, etc. But it's, I mean, there was once a time, guys, not that long ago, where every single show was on the road in front of thousands of people. And as I've said time and again, we can complain all we want to the UFC. We can complain all, they're not changing it. The only one who has a real, in my opinion, a real say in these matters in order to affect change would be the broadcasters. And in particular, ESPN. ESPN, obviously their most lucrative media deal. If ESPN says, we don't want this, we're paying you X amount. Think of it this way. When the ESPN deal started in January of 2019, they cut a deal for, it'll go till end of 25, for X amount, around 43 events, saying, we're going to pay you X amount to deliver these deals. And, 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 excuse me, these fights and these events and these broadcasts. And the UFC takes that amount, and then they decide how they're going to break it down. They have their own budget, and, you know, they can do what they want. If the show is going to cost... A dollar, they pocket X. If it's going to cost 10 bucks, they pocket Y. The same deal is still in effect. But now, because of the pandemic and because of the, I don't know, the, the convenience of doing these events literally at their HQ, they're pocketing even more, which, you know what? Fair play. You figured it out. You have the venue. You had the foresight. It's the bell of the combat sports ball. Everyone loves it and, and speaks glowingly of it. But if I'm ESPN, I say, yeah, okay, we're still paying you the same amount. And you you showed in 2019, and you showed in the beginning portion of 2020, you showed that you could put on these events worldwide. You showed it throughout the Fox deal as well. Can we go back to that product? Now, if the ratings don't suffer, if the streaming doesn't suffer, no one really cares. And so it's going to be, I don't see it going away all this year. Next year around this time, they'll start to get into the the renewal or whatever the new deal deal is. Look, they just signed that Netflix deal a year out. WWE, that is, TKO, parent company. If the new deal says, hey, we only want five, we want one, we want zero, then it will change. But get used to it. And it, and it's a bummer because it, it is tough. It is tough. And, and you know, it's so wild. I was hypothesizing about this and not even knowing the other side of the equation. I was wondering, why didn't they do a UFC event at T-Mobile, at MGM, at Mandalay, at the Palms, at one of these venues, Super Bowl weekend, historically, UFC has always done big events on um, Super Bowl weekend. Now, they've stopped for the last five years, but there was a stretch there, you know, Vitor and Anderson and Diaz Condit and um, uh, GSP, BJ Penn, um, UFC 109, and on and on it went, always around Super Bowl weekend. Um, and they stopped. But I thought for sure, first one in Vegas, because th th they would do those events when obviously the game wasn't in Vegas, but there were so many people in town to gamble, whatever. This game is in Vegas. I thought for sure they would put on an event to attract celebrities, influencers, whatever, 
to come see the UFC product. They did an Apex show, which, I mean, sounded and looked like there were 10 people there. And they did that thing. They did do that. Or someone in the UFC did that. And it was Friday for slap. And obviously when I said this last week, like, oh, I can't believe it. I'm not up to speed. I apologize on the slap schedule. I didn't realize they were doing a Friday one in Vegas. And, you know, they'll have Tom Brady there and I show speed there and all these people, all these influencers and all these celebrities who are in town. That's the one that they use to prop up on Super Bowl weekend. Just insane. And I get it. The UFC product is the established thing. It's the thing that, you know, is on fire. It's doing well. It doesn't necessarily need the propping up. But man, like that, that, that to me is the crown jewel of the portfolio right now. I mean, even look like WWE did their presser Thursday in Vegas or whatever you want to call that. It was more of like a presentation. Um, it was, it was brilliant, but it wasn't your traditional presser, but you know, that's what they were calling it. I think it was a live, I don't know what they were getting. You get the point. There was media there, fans were there, 3000 people at T-Mobile. So everyone wants to be there and they used slap as the thing to push on that Friday. Wild sign of the times. And of course, sign of the times also, I start seeing on Sunday, oh, they're going to announce the UFC 300 main event during the Super Bowl. People have worked themselves into a shoot to the point where now they think that the UFC is going to announce this main event, which I can't wait for them to announce it just so we can stop talking about it and just focus on the actual card itself. The speculation is absurd. I mean, every right now, Chel Sonnen is doing a UFC 300 speculative video about the main events. I think he's now moved on to... Uh, to, I, I don't know, is it Mark Coleman against Kazushi Sakuraba? I mean, he's gone through all the different permutations at this point. It's just driving everyone insane. And so on Super Bowl Sunday, people have convinced themselves, despite the fact that Dana White is telling everyone, hey, this has been some kind of nightmare. This has been some kind of journey. This has been, I mean, we could do a movie just on the making of this main event and card. And people thought that they would just announce it during the, I don't know, during the Super Bowl, during the broadcast. They would have a commercial ready. First of all, this isn't this isn't an ABC ESPN Super Bowl. So it's not like they have that relationship with the broadcaster. It was a CBS Super Bowl. So it wasn't like the actual event could pop on a promo. You know, they aren't in bed with the UFC. They don't have that business relationship. I guess the, what kind of what was my takeaway was, I guess people just don't understand how this stuff works. They can't just wedge their way onto the broadcast. Jim Nance and Tony Romo aren't going to be like, and yeah, at UFC 300, April 13th, this is going down. Why would they do that? It's not their property. It's not on their network. It's not on their platform. So that was obviously ruled out. If it was an ABC ESPN Super Bowl, which is coming up in the next few years, I thought, all right, maybe you'll have a promo on there. You'll throw to a package or something. That wasn't happening. Then the commercials, you think they're putting these commercials together like on two days notice? You, you think that these commercials that sell out months in advance for millions of dollars he already told you he's having a hard time. They would have had to have this commercial locked in weeks, if not months ago. Uh, what, what are you guys talking? You, I was like, what? And with all due respect to anyone who works for the UFC, they ain't the ones. Like, I see a lot of them sort of hinting at it, but they ain't the ones that are doing it because they don't want to piss off their employers or boss by, quote, unquote, leaking it. So you can rule that out if you see any of them teasing it which I get. I wouldn't want to do it either. If, 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 if my employer or boss or whatever told me, hey, don't say anything, I wouldn't want to do that either. So yeah, I saw that from afar and I saw some people waiting and speculating and getting all upset. And I was like, wow, you guys have really convinced yourself that they're going to make this happen, that they're going to do this. Everyone's losing their damn minds. Everyone's going crazy. Everyone is just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. And I get it. The, the event is two months away. Tomorrow will be two months away. February 13th, April 13th, that's two months. It's getting pretty darn tight. And for any regular pay-per-view, they usually don't wait this long to announce a main event. Uh, you know, sometimes it's happened two months. There's been the weird one. The, the, the Australia one was a little bit tight as well. This obviously wasn't the plan. And maybe they're shooting for the moon. And, you know, they've done a nice job of populating the card so it doesn't feel so empty, but there's a big glaring hole. And so let me tell you what I know. And again, I preface this by saying 
This is not me saying any of this is done. This is, this is why I cho- I'm choosing to say it here so I can, I can verbalize and conversate with you all as opposed to done deal, in the works, breaking, uh, slated schedule, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people are holding out hope for Conor McGregor. That I, as of, and again, I, I need to preface this because this is all on their, you know, this is all on their time on a whim. They could change everything. But as of right this second, 1.20 p.m. Eastern time on Monday, February 12th, 2024, he's not a part of those plans. I still believe that he'll be a part of June uh, 29th, International Fight Week. And you saw his tweet yesterday saying, you know, looking forward to the return in the summer. And I think that was a wink, wink, nudge, nudge to the the fall comments of Wednesday. So I still think they're holding him out for that one. I, I think it's crazy that they didn't just put him on this card, but alas, we've talked about this ad nauseum. It's time to move on. So if you're holding out hope on that one, don't. I'll tell you that my understanding is that there are four options. Um, three of them are, well, I would say two and a half of them are pretty understandable, expected, whatever. And then there's one that I think people will be like, okay, so let's see. And I don't know what's going to happen. And it's all very fluid. And I think you'll understand why Dana is saying what he is saying regarding the making of this fight. So obviously we know that, you know, Leon and Bilal was something that was discussed, but it seems like they really don't want that fight. They really don't want that fight at 300 for whatever reason. Um, I think that's like their last resort. Um, Obviously Leon said what he said. When he was at that Aston Villa match at the end of the year, but you know that was almost a month and a half ago at this point. They would have announced it, and it's right there. But also, you have to remember for these guys, like I think Bilal will do it for Leon, a title defense, seven or so weeks. It's not ideal, and I know he's always in shape, but that one is is one that is um, that has definitely been discussed. But for whatever reason, they're not necessarily pulling the trigger on it. It'll be interesting to find out why. Um, Izzy DDP is something that has obviously been discussed and has been hinted at by both. Um, and for the longest time I thought, okay, maybe this is a thing. Uh, maybe this is the one. And I I would think is the one that makes the most sense. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being that, but again, also the clock is ticking. Um, DDP a little bit banged up after the Strickland fight. I don't think if 300 was a thing, I don't think that they would have gone the Izzy route, I don't even think he would have considered coming back in April. If it was just 305 or 306 or 307, I I think he would have taken a little bit more time off, and I think his team and coaches would have agreed with that. But it's definitely an option, and 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 it has come out today that there's a Q&A scheduled for Friday, and the tickets are going on sale in the next few days. They have to come up with something in the next few days. And then we get to the... Um, you know, the the sort of left field rabbit in the hat, if you will. I think right now, I think if the UFC had their way, if they can snap their fingers and make the biggest fight in their mind happen and the fight that they've been working on happen and have their say as to what is the main event for UFC 300, I think that they would make Leon Edwards versus Hamza Chemaev. Uh I believe, based on my conversations, that when Dana White is talking about, you know, the hurdles and the issues and the uh, the different things at play in, in terms of making this fight and how troublesome it has been, I believe that's securing Hamzat's ability to fight in the United States. Uh, this has been rumored for quite some time that he has, uh, for whatever reason, some issues coming over to the States. The last time he fought here was in Jacksonville almost two years ago. Um And so I believe that that's been part of the holdup. Uh, If they can't, for whatever reason, secure that matchup, I think they would look at a potential Hamzat versus DDP, but I think that the top choice is Leon versus Hamzat. This could all fizzle out, and uh, I think we'll find out in the next few days. But I believe that is the top choice at the moment. I also believe those other three fights are at play as well. Uh, Leon Bilal, Izzy DDP, and uh, Hamzat. DDP as well. And so let's see what happens. Um, I think that trying to get, I, I really don't know the answer to why it has been so difficult to get Hamzat over to the United States, what the issue is, but I do believe that is part of what Dana White is talking about. Now, he said at the Friday press conference that um, there's two fights left to add, 
and and then I think he said co-main event and one more. I think he just misspoke. They're trying to add a main event. Now, honestly, if it was me, like I, I would put I would put Leon Hamzad and Izzy DDP on there. I don't think they're gonna do that. Um or Hamza DDP Leon Bilal. But I, I do think that part of the holdup here has been the Hamza thing, which I think is a bit of a left field thing because I know he was uh he was banged up after the Usman fight, and I think a lot of people thought that he was done with 170. And so let's see. Let's see what happens. All of this can blow up. It's all changing. And this is why I've tried to refrain from talking too much about it because I know some aggregators out there are going to put out that, you know, I'm, I'm reporting this is a done deal or breaking news or this and that. But I'm trying to tell you all this couldn't be more fluid. This couldn't be – it's why I don't want to even put it in writing because it couldn't be more fluid at this time. And uh, it, 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 there's been so many twists and turns, so many, you know, ups and downs that I don't know what's going to happen by Friday. But I feel like by Friday they're going to want to try to get something done. Now, they have something on the books as far as a press conference is concerned, or I think they're labeling it as a Q&A. But if I'm being honest, like, they could they could cancel that. Who cares about that? At some point, these tickets need to go on sale for the venue, et cetera, and they could delay that as much as possible. I think last I checked was the 16th, um, if, if memory serves me correct. But again, they know these things are going to get scooped up. Like, there's no real rush. At some point, it has to happen. And I would imagine by the pay-per-view on Saturday, they would like for it to happen. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it's a thing. And I would love to hear all the things that they've been through. And maybe they should or should have or have or will put out a documentary as to, you know, the making of all of this. And, and I feel like if it's Leon Hamzat, given all the hoopla, all the hullabaloo, people will be happy, right? Am I right, guys? Will people be happy? Connor, will people be happy if it's Leon Hamzat? Yeah, it kind of feels like a fight out of left field. Uh, plus it's Hamzat. Fighting a uh, welterweight, too. I feel like that's a fight that's big. That's a big-time fight. Be. Yeah, of course. It's a huge fight. Um, yeah, I think people will be happy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Expectations are just so high. Expectations are high. Yeah, expectations the, are high. The key to it is the unexpectedness, and I think introducing Hamzat into it is successful in that regard. So, yeah, I think people will be very excited. What do you think people will like better, Leon Hamzat or Izzy DDP? Leon Hamzat. Me personally, I'd rather see Izzy DDP. Yeah, it's an interesting one. It, because, of, because of the splash, right? It's the unexpected. It's the, it's the thing that you didn't think you were getting. I think everybody thinks we're going to get Izzy DDP. So that's why. And ultimately, eventually, probably will get Izzy DDP. I think this is the one where it's like it feels more of a special attraction. It was like a zigzag. Yeah. Exactly. What, what do you what do you like better? Izzy Izzy DDP DDP Hamzat or Leon Hamzat? Leon Hamzat. Yeah. I like Izzy DDP Leon Hamzat and then uh DDP Hamzat. And then the real and this one isn't being discussed but then there's also the it's sort of like a Rubik's cube. There's also Izzy Hamza, which, Izzy which Hamza. yeah, but that's yeah, not. But then there's no title on the line. Yeah, that's true. No, I'm not saying that one's amazing good. fight, but like tough to but like the yeah you know, round have a robin of them. I would be happy with that. I mean, if I'm Bilal Muhammad, I'm not. happy I was gonna say, that. how do, where does Bilal play into this? I mean, that that's is rough. just what an indictment on how they feel. I mean, he's right there, and and the resume, I think, is title shot worthy. Of course. By the way, of course, there's there's no question who should get the title shot. It should be Bilal. Is it, is it like a? Uh, are you surprised by the indictment? Like I, it seemed, in, unless I'm misreading the tea leaves here, like it seems like they would have done anything in their power not to do it at this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, if if the April pay per view was UFC three o five, I think it's yeah. Let's just do that as the main event. Yeah, but I think what the um, I think what the uh, the problem is is they want this big fight. They want this big fight at the top. Yeah, of the they belt. need the splash. I think Izzy DDP. Um, if, if if they've been breaking their head for the last I don't know couple of weeks to get the Hamzat situation figured out, whatever it is, and I don't want to I don't want to speculate because I don't know what exactly the issue is, and I think that would be reckless on my part, but it's clearly part of the issue here. I think Izzy DDP is totally fine as a three hundred main event, as long as you don't lose that. As long as in the process of trying to potentially do Hamzat versus X. You don't lose 
the option of Izzy DDP, then I well, kind of the get thing. the instinct to try to make it happen. If you end up losing it on the basis of that because you've either waited too long or whatever the case may be, uh, that's where I would say, hey, you've got that, you know, you know, bird, bird in the hand, take it. This is um, a gr- this is a great point because the clock is ticking, and at some point those close. guys are going to be like, all right, I'm not going to. I mean, what is it from from this past Saturday? It's eight weeks away. Yeah. And and as of right now, they're not telling anyone. Like everyone's just being told, like sit back, chill, you know, wait and see. And uh, let's say they decide by Friday, we're talking seven weeks. You know, I think we're gonna get it soon. Oh, I that's think that's the biggest thing. We're we're, we're gonna th- get it. And we're gonna get it. Soon. You have to get it in the next two weeks. I feel like this week would be a good week with the pay per view and all that. Um, but yes, I mean it's it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. Yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, we're going to get it. I mean. Last night, I didn't know what all the hoopla was about until, like, the halftime or maybe the third quarter. I didn't see the original Chiesa tweet that everyone got excited about. Yeah. So I thought maybe I had missed something and that we were, like, supposed to get the announcement. No. And then I was in my kitchen and I saw Dana White show up on my TV during a Bud Light commercial. I was like, wait, what's going on here? Uh, no, yo, you guys think that they're going to announce something on the commercials of the Super Bowl? You guys have lost your I mind. mean, in my head, I was like, of course they're not going to do this. Like, of course <laughs> they're not going to do this. And you think is the one that's going to tip everyone off? I mean, yes, of course. None of it made off sense. Those, those, those weigh-in shows and those freaking desk shows faster than you can say. Listen, PDP. I was out of the loop. I jumped into the loop once all the chaos had already begun. Uh, and yeah, did I think I was really going to get it? We were really going to get it last night? No. But uh, yeah, I mean, when I, when I turned and saw Dana White on my TV, I... I did get a glimmer of hope for a half second. Like, ah, it's just a Bud Light commercial. Damn it. Um, so there you have it. Let's see. Uh, maybe they announced something during our show, and it would be fun to uh, to talk about it all. But that's what we know at the moment. Very, very fluid. All very developing. All very fun. What a saga it has been. It has certainly given us a lot to talk about, but uh, now let us put that on ice. We'll talk more about that later in the show. Let's turn our attention to this weekend UFC 298, what a main event. Oh, my gosh, what a main event. Back at the pond, back in Anaheim, it's Alex Volkanovsky versus Ilya Tepuria for the featherweight title. We love talking to Volk's team. We love talking to Ilya's team. One member of Volk's team, Craig Jones, he was on the program uh, before the last Volk fight, of course, in Abu Dhabi. It's Issam Khachev. He's kind enough to join us right now via the Magic Assume. There he is. Hello, Craig. How are you? What's going on, man? What's the news? Wow. What's the cra- look at this view you got here? I mean, this is some kind of living. Mate, we're doing it tough out here in California. You know, tough summer. Yeah. How long have you been there? Uh, we flew in, shit, like 6 a.m. two days ago. Okay. Long 15 hour journey from Australia. Never gets easier. Yeah, it's a tough one. But first class, it's nice, right? They treat you well over there. Yeah, first class. Luckily, Volkanovski, because obviously I'm the most valuable member of the team, he puts me up in business. He uh, puts the rest of the scrubs back in economy. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's what I figured. Um, you, you guys went to a Kings game, though. I saw that you were right behind the great Will Ferrell. We were there. We were there watching the Kings game. I'd never even seen a hockey game before, to be honest. But yeah, I was probably more excited about seeing Will Ferrell than I was about the hockey game. Well, you didn't like it. Uh, I mean, it's pretty close. Pretty, I don't. I barely could even follow where the puck's going. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm a bit slow or something. But yeah, that's a tough game to follow. I was hoping to see some more fights. Yeah. But Did you see any? Not. Nah, a little bit, but they broke it up. But nothing. Uh, nothing too major. No wussies. damage. Yeah, they're a bit wussy. Um, what about Will Ferrell? Did he know you? Did he recognize you? Is he a fan? Does he follow you? What was his reaction? Yeah, unfortunately not. Uh, it was good to actually watch. I was watching uh, Absolute Master at ignoring fans calling him for photos. <laughs> it was like a black belt level of not even turning his eyes at all to them. And I was like, wow, this man's been in the game a long time. Did did he uh, acknowledge you guys at all? Like, does he know who Volk is maybe? Was there any sort of interaction? Yeah, they had a they had a little interaction. I can't remember what happened. I think he asked Vox if Vox was a hockey fan. I think Vox was like, uh, "No, I'm Australian." I think maybe that might have ended the conversation there. But Will definitely seemed like quite a passionate a passionate hockey fan. I think the guy that sat us down said he had been at the Lakers game that day. So I guess damn big sports guy. Yeah. Um, well, uh, good to see you guys back. Uh, could I ask, what was your takeaway? You know, we spoke to you on the Monday before the Abu Dhabi fight. 
And there's been so much, I guess, debate as to, was it the right move? Was it the wrong move? Will it change him? Will it not change him? You know, a, a champion who's been reigning as long as he has, uh, you know, is, is, is often not going into a title defense coming off a knockout loss, right? This is very unique. And so when you left Abu Dhabi back in October, how did you feel about the decision? Hindsight being 2020, but how did you feel about the decision and whether or not it would affect him long term? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's so hard to say. Hey, like, obviously, we're all just so sad after the circumstances of the fight and stuff. And then, obviously, the post-fire. I think they released some of the footage now. Like, it was sad moments backstage. But then, yeah, I mean, he's obviously just became so much more. I don't know if you guys can. Can you hear that fucking airplane flying by? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's all good. Go back inside. Um, okay. But obviously... He was so motivated by that. Like, he's been training so hard and stuff. So I think it's, yeah, it's just going to do good things for him uh, going ahead into the future, you know? Like, just so motivated. Me, if I take a loss, I'm probably in grappling. I'm probably going to be on a bender for a good three months. Folks, on the other hand, he gets straight back to it. That's a real athlete right there. And uh, did you feel like he was coming back too soon? I don't think so. I mean, I think it's better. I think he was going to be doing January. But now, obviously, I moved the card to February. I think Strickland Drink is... I think they were originally going to do the Strickland Drink is uh, quite cup. But yeah, I think it's a better time frame, better time zone to do it. So, yeah, what is, I think it's been plenty of time. Okay. Uh, your your video froze on us here. So I see just like... A, oh, there you are. You're back now. Okay. I'm back. My bad, my bad. I got this uh, difficult California Wi-Fi, you know? Yeah, no, no, no. I feel you. Um, do you, Any sort of difference in him? Do you feel, you know, sometimes someone suffers a loss like that, they're a little trepidatious, they're lacking confidence, they're questioning themselves. As as a training partner and coach of his, do you feel, do you sense any sort of difference? I mean, honestly, I think this camp's probably like, uh, he's probably put more work in for this camp in terms of, I've, I've already been there for the last week or so, but he's had so many different training partners coming in and out. Like, we even had uh, Jack Della there for a week, so obviously gives some good looks. Uh, I would personally say similar to Ilya. So I think he's actually gone above and beyond this camp. So I think he's just so motivated to sort of right that wrong. And Because uh, obviously a lot of people saying a lot of stuff after that fight. Some people even look past him in this one. So I think, I think it's nothing but motivation for him. I think probably training harder than ever. He already – Shocked me at how hard he trains in the training room, again, compared to myself as a jiu-jitsu athlete. He's barely a professional athlete. So, like, for him to step it up a notch again just surprises me. Surprises me every time. Uh, speaking of looking past, uh, what about Ilya Taporia? His uh, social media bio, he says featherweight champion, 15-0. He's currently 14-0. I mean, this is bold stuff, right? It's one, it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to knock this guy out. I'm going to win this fight. I'm going to do this and that. He's putting it out there. Like, he's putting it in stone, so to speak. How, how do you feel about his confidence going into the fight? No. Well. Obviously, he's a, a German-born El Matador. You know what I mean? So it's like, I think, a bit of an identity crisis, calling those shots too early, saying he's the champ. So, I mean, he's a character. I think it's an interesting thing. Okay, so that, that that felt like gold right there from you, Craig, but your internet got all screwy on us. What are you, are you on Wi-Fi or what, what is going on over there? Have you not paid your uh, your phone? What's happening? Give this a crack again. Okay, what are you on now, Wi-Fi? I turned the Wi-Fi off, is that better? Yeah, maybe that's going to get better. Let's see. Um, oh, so what was I saying? I was saying Ilya, I think he has a bit of an identity crisis. You know, he already thinks he's the champ. He's already putting it down. He's born in Germany, raised in Georgia, calls himself the El Matador. But me, personally, I spent a summer in Puerto Rico. I don't consider myself a Bariqua. So I think, yeah, generally speaking, an interesting guy. Uh, but, it, I mean, does this piss you guys? Do you guys talk about this? This freaking guy, he's saying he's the featherweight champion. He's 15-0. and 0. Do, you, do you speak on this? Does Volk ever speak on it? No, nah, not that I'm aware of. It's kind of more of a laughing matter, you know? It's hard to take a man in a total neck sweater too seriously. <laughs> Right. He uh, come on. Nice dressed guy, right? I mean, he's always dressed to the nines. He's got the double breasted. I mean, a, yeah. I mean, he's a good-looking guy. 
me and Volks look at him and we see that thick head of hair, obviously a bit of jealousy, but at the same time, you have to be a brave man to rock a turtleneck. Your thoughts on his skills? I mean, awesome, yeah. Obviously, as a jiu-jitsu guy, when he beat Ryan Hall, those were, those were sad times for us jiu-jitsu fans. Unfortunately, didn't get the heel hook there. But yeah, obviously, very, very talented guy. I think he looks very talented, but still haven't seen him against some of the, I guess, those big names in the division. Like, I would have liked to have seen him fight Yair or Ortega. Obviously, everyone would have wanted to see him to fight Holloway, but Holloway just seems to shut the division down for everyone else, you know? Yeah. And so speaking of those guys, and they're all guys that Volk beat recently in the last couple of years, where would you put Ilya among those guys, like in terms of the, uh, you know, the test that he presents to Alex? I mean, yes, yeah, interesting thought. It's, it's kind of hard to rank him based on skill set like that. I mean, obviously Holloway has beaten everyone else, so it's kind of like you have to rank him at the top. Uh, a lot of people talk about his boxing and stuff, so I think like Ilya versus Holloway would have been a super interesting fight to really see where Ilya's skill set is at. But again, yeah, so many of those fights would have been interesting uh, fights, but obviously you got the Yamat win and got uh, jumped straight to the title. Who do you think wins that, Holloway or Ilya? I, th I think Holloway does. I think it's like, obviously, Volk clearly top of featherweight, then Holloway, and then sort of a, a bit of a a bit of a jump to that next level of guys. But again, Ilya, obviously, because we haven't seen him fight these guys, you really, you really don't know how good he could be just based on who he's for. Uh, I like you because you always shoot it straight with us. You know, you, you keep it real, as the kids say. So let me ask you, who do you reckon the UFC wants to win this fight? <laughs> Who, who do I reckon? I mean, obviously, business-wise, they probably want to sell a stadium out in Spain or something like that. But yeah, Volk's, Volk's a huge star. I mean, it's it's hard. I think they make it work either way, you know? Okay. But again, I don't know. You tell me. A lot of the time, they do like a bit of a, a, bit of a fresh champ from time to time, you know? Yeah, I, I honestly, because, you know, Volk is in, um, I would say he's like, the best champion for them because he's not a pain in their ass. He doesn't, you know, he steps up on 11 days notice. He's not a guy who's a malcontent. He doesn't, you know, I, I feel like the whole team has a good relationship with the brass. But I, I was wondering if you thought just because of, you know, Ilya being fresh, being from uh, a corner of the world that they haven't tapped into, uh, being a good looking guy, if you guys or if you thought that they were hoping that he would win and, and, and you know, start a new reign, a new era. Oh, I mean... Probably. I mean, the, Ilya's already, what is he filming a documentary about himself already? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, he's fucking right on board with that. I don't know. I, I just, I mean, us Aussies, we kind of laugh at some of the stuff like that, that extreme confidence, extreme, like, uh, like I don't know, it's a bold move, you know, because I look at some of these moves, obviously, from my shitty sport of grappling, but, like, if I'd made a documentary about me becoming ADCC champ, I've now lost ADCC four times, so it'd be quite a sad, long story. You know what I mean? So he's got yeah. some balls on him to throw that documentary out there. Not only that, if, if it doesn't go his way, having to change the the bio again will be tough. No, he should have to film that. He should have <laughs> someone should go live while he changes that bio, put on some sad Spanish music, change the El Matador name too, maybe. You think this fight remains standing, or do you think it goes uh, on the ground? Like, where do you think the majority of the fight will be played out? I mean, it's a good question. Honestly, obviously, I back Volk everywhere. Sure. Uh, but if, like, obviously, you have to see a easiest path to victory, I'd have to imagine the grappling does favor Volkanovski. I think, obviously, the wrestling does too. Me personally, like, when I train with Volk, he feels like a, a wealth away. He's like one of the strongest fucking human beings on earth. So, I think as soon as he gets his hands on Ilya, it's, Ilya's going to be in for a rude, a rude awakening. I think most people say the same thing. Even Islam, like when you see him lock up in the wrestling exchanges, they're shocked at how strong this little bastard is. I saw you were in uh, you were in Kazakhstan for a while, right? Were you doing some rehab over there? What was going on over there? Rehab, yeah. Obviously, uh, I've been enjoying the after parties a bit too much, so I secluded myself in the mountains of Kazakhstan to stay away, stay focused. I got a uh, Karate combat and fight pass invitational coming up. So I've got to get back in shape for that. Yeah. So um, uh, the uh, karate combat, that's uh, against Phil Rowe in Mexico City, right? Against Phil Rowe. So me and Phil Rowe have beef because we've both 
both of us have infringed on the trademark rights of the Chicago Bulls. We did it with our BT merch. Phil Rowe did it with his merchandise. So we're basically going to settle this like men in Mexico and pull guard and whoever wins owns the rights to that trademark infringement really against the Bulls. Okay. And and so the the winner is the one that could get sued or is the is the loser the one that has to incur all the costs that come with the trademark infringement? Well, I think ultimately we're both going to get sued, but at least one of us has some bragging rights in this department. But yeah, I, I mean, I just wanted to do karate combat because they have those fucking sick outfits. Those guys are rocking the, the gi pants and the belt. I was like, hey. And then when they said Mexico City, I was like, sign me up. Maybe we pull out a mariachi band or something. Yeah, but uh, karate combat does grappling. I didn't know this. Yes, they started it. They're calling it the, the, pit, the pit grappling series. Wow. I don't know. I just went to one of the shows and I was like, this fucking shit's wild. This is literally like a like an 80s movie. It's like yeah. kids with mullets doing karate. I was just, it was just wild. It was hilarious at the same time. And I told the guys, uh, I said, I was like, bro, we've got to go wild in Mexico. We've got to do some crazy shit down there. Like, what do you mean by crazy shit? Well, I mean, just obviously indulging in the Mexican culture. You know what I mean? Mexican exports, maybe, but yeah, mostly I think I'm planning some uh, elaborate walkout with. Uh, I won't give away too much, but it, okay. uh, it should be a good time. Okay. I won't unfortunately get to enjoy the after party too much because we have Rafael Lovato on UFC Fight Pass. That'll be a that'll be an interesting, tough match. And that's uh, March second, right? You know, I should know that it's either the second or the third. And to be honest. I was in the mountains of Kazakhstan when they sent the contract, so I didn't even read the rules. I don't know the length of the match or the weight division, but I was <laughs> like, Lovato is someone I've always wanted to take on, so I was like, fuck it, let's see what happens. And so the Kazakhstan, were you really there to rehab, or were you there to... Because I saw some of the footage. <laughs> what were you doing? The, the the stuff on the horses and all this? Like, this is... You were in a real remote location. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I've been going to Kazakhstan for years because they had the ADCC trials out there. So I got some I got some close friends in Kazakhstan, and it's just an adventure every time. One of my friends, Arlan, out there, he owns this hunting lodge that's like 3,500 meters high. It's like a 1,000 square kilometers, and he's got like snow leopards and shit. So we had the opportunity to go out there, and I was like, fuck, let's check it out. I love a bit of an adventure like that, you know? A lot of these guys are training full time. Me, I want to do the bare minimum and uh, enjoy some of these bonuses as much as possible. You even were wearing the traditional Kazakhstani garb. Um, I don't know. I don't want to speak. I don't know what it's called. But uh, where did you get that? Did they gift that to you? I mean, this is a, some of these photos here that we're showing are uh, exquisite. I mean, this looks like a photo shoot. Oh yeah, it was actually. What did we do? We ended up hiring. They do couples photos like that. And I remember we saw it. We were like, fuck, that sounds pretty fun. So we got some uh, Kazakh girls to participate in a full photo shoot with us. Okay. It was minus 20 degrees. I mean, we had to rent the outfits and stuff. We went pretty hard on this. But obviously, we're getting deep into the Kazakh culture. We're actually – I'm working on a bit of a – I don't want to say too much, but we're doing a bit of a, a travel series for martial arts. So, like, Kazakhstan is going to be one of the destinations – so we're gonna film some wild, uh, some wild stuff out there. And how's the food over there? The food, I eat nothing but horse meat every day. Oh. Every morning, I'd look in the mirror and not look like Alistair over him at all. Unfortunately, so I think there was obviously something more to his stack than a bit of horse meat. But we'll keep trying. It tastes pretty good. How does it taste? I've never tried it. Well, like, what would you equate it to? Does it taste like steak? Like, if you didn't know, would you think it was from a cow? I mean, you'd look at it. And you'd know something was up, but it tastes kind of like kangaroo, you know, or venison mm. or something like that. Do you like kangaroo? Would you try it? No. You wouldn't try it? No, it's disgusting. Come on. I mean, come on. Horses, uh, I draw the line at the cow. And even that I feel a little bit weird about. But the horse, I mean, it just feels like a bridge too far. <laughs> no? I mean, it, it's every meal over there, right? Like, uh, I love when I was over there when you were in some of these cultures, like, they were telling me, Horse meat cures everything. I remember one guy told me, he's like, if you eat horse meat, your hair won't fall out. So, fuck, I was all over it every day. You know, it cures everything. So you're eating legit eating that for breakfast too? For breakfast? Yeah, well, there's a meal over there called Bish for Mark. So that's like, we were, I mean, I was, I was sitting that heavy lunch and dinner, you know? Breakfast, 
breakfast was just a coffee, really. But uh, every other meal will get into the horse. But you got to try it. You mm. you got to come to Kazakhstan. And Is there's it going to be a UFC out there one day? You think so? You think they're going to go there? For sure. For sure, it's fucking, it's a wild place, fun place to go. They've got some tough, tough guys. I tried yeah. to train with Shavkat while I was out there, but he was unfortunately, he. I think he was in Austria at the time, but I really wanted to train with him. I love training with all the MMA guys. Like, obviously, I just did some work with Jack Della because he's got Gilbert Burns coming up. And, man, Jack Della impresses the fuck out of me, even in a pure, a pure grappling sense. This guy is something special. Like, even when I watch him train, I like learn stuff from him. He's such like a creative grappler. I think it's going to be him versus Gilbert. It's going to be huge. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be a great fight. Um, will you be cornering him for that? No, I'm. Uh, I won't be cornering him. I just did a little bit of work. I mean, most of the time, let's be honest, these MMA guys they really don't need a jujitsu guy in the corner. You know, like wrestling's going to take priority. I'll, I'll help out, especially pure submission defense and maybe a little bit of a. Uh, round scrambles but like he's got his three-man corner they bring me in when they get the title fight because they get that extra corner man you know? right obviously volks loses the title i'm fucking out of there fast <laughs> you know what i mean well, i'm dead weight i'm just riding the coat down <laughs> selling some instructionals i'm surprised that uh mma promotions haven't come knocking at your door you're 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 very popular you'll sell the fight you're great on social media it feels like someone should give you uh you know not put you in there against a top five guy but just like a cupcake fight, just to get some uh, buzz for their promotion. Oh, like an actual fight. Like a legit fight, yeah, an MMA fight. I'm surprised. Has no one reached out to you about this? Has no one offered you anything? I mean, we had that whole saga with Gabby Garcia. That was the only time I was ever offered a real fight. And really? Was against a woman. So I'm not sure about what level of danger people think I threat if the fights they offer are against women. A one championship, a PFL, none of these people have knocked on your door. Actually, I, I almost signed the contract with one for grappling, and they kept asking me about MMA, but I was like, mate, I mean, if I can make enough money grappling, I think I'll dodge right. the brain. I mean, if you look at my social media, you probably assume I've taken a few hits to the head, so it's probably not a good uh, career right. choice right now. Your interview series, I saw one of them, um, you were doing some interviews in Thailand. I mean, it was very uh, <laughs> it was very interesting content. Uh, you're... <laughs> Your stuff is crazy. I mean, like, you're completely. At, my, <laughs> at the heart of me, I'm a true journalist, you know. So when a lady boy wants to do a podcast, I will go to deep depths to ensure that that truly is a lady boy and I'm not being lied to. Sure, you know? sure, sure. And do you have a crew with you doing this or are you doing it all by yourself? Are you setting up the cameras by yourself and, you know, the lighting and all that? Uh, I mean, obviously, high budget crew. It looks like I've set it up myself half the time, but yeah, I do try to get some help in there. Because I mean, you leave it up to me, I might forget to plug in the microphone, you know. So <laughs> I usually try and hire some people on the go or back in Austin, get some guys. I mean, I did the podcast with Alex Jones. Luckily, he brought me down Infowars, and we used his expensive art studio. But yeah, my production quality is just going up and down depending on what part of the world I'm in. Uh, what, what is like your dream, like who, who's your dream get, your dream interview, dream subject? What is something that you're like, man, I need to, I need to do something on this. Oh, man, who's the, I mean, anyone that's unhinged, you know, like you're probably after the same one. You want an MMA guy to come on here and say some wild shit. That's, that's, that's my dream too. <laughs> I want some crazy person to let go of a rant and I can quickly post it before they tell me not to. Uh, I guess maybe the closest we have to that now is Sean Strickland. Oh, yeah. Man, you know what this guy did to me, actually, right? Like, uh, I was at the UFC event, sitting next to him when he attacked Drikas, right? And what was hilarious, Strickland, obviously, no idea who I am, but it was the Tony Ferguson, Patty Pimblet fight. He's sitting next to me. He goes live on Instagram, and he's just shitting on Tony Ferguson's jiu-jitsu. Oh, wow. And then it turns into a rant about how jiu-jitsu is useless for MMA and all this stuff. And then he pans the camera to me, and to, and then like he's like he's asking me, he's like, look, look how shit jiu-jitsu is. And then he goes over to Vox as well. And I was like, either this guy's a fucking genius, or this is just off the cuff, and he doesn't know I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. But that guy is 
fucking unhinged. Uh, did did you tell him you were a jujitsu guy at any point? Maybe when he stopped <laughs> recording. No, nah, I told him I agreed with him. I said, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I said, hey, you should probably turn around and buy a drink. Uh, where were you in the midst of uh, in the midst of all of that? Did you uh, did you get in to try to break it up, or did you run away? No, I, I sat back. I just my biggest regret was not filming it. You know yeah. what I mean? And selling that footage. But for a while, I just couldn't believe what was happening. And then the other guys were breaking him up. And I was like, don't break him up. Let's see what happens here. You know, like, I literally, I remember I was in this trance watching this happen. And I swear I saw Strickland try to bite him. But I was too scared to say anything in an interview. And then Strickland eventually said on, I think, Theo Vaughn that he did try to bite him. And I was like, I was actually seeing reality there. Your instincts were right, yeah. And then he got, and then he got escorted out, right? Yeah, but he was out of there. Yeah, and he wasn't even there long. He was there two fights, and then he attacked Strickland, and he's gone again. <laughs> so you never know what you're going to get with this guy. I felt bad for his friend that he brought along with him because he's probably brought his friend. He's like, hey, you want front row tickets to the UFC? And then the fight breaks out, and they're out of there. So his, his mate saw two fights. He saw Strickland attack, uh, heckle Tony Ferguson and David Goggins, and then oh. they called it a night. And, and I know you and uh, Gordon Ryan have you know your own kind of rivalry. Uh, I saw you posted of it. You were sort of mocking him about his truck getting stolen. I mean, no, no sympathy, no, <laughs> nothing like that. I mean, uh, Ariel, the guy's online and he's making videos about defending the southern border, and he can't even defend his own driveway. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's too good to be true. It's like, you throw that bait out there, I'm going to take it. And then afterwards. He posts about how he has friends all over the country, and if you cross him, he's going to get you, and he showed that the police got his car back. There was a tracking device in the car. I'm like, the police just did their job, brother. Relax, you know? Like, I don't know. I can't help it. I, it's the dream for me to attack this man. Why? I mean, he he's just – sometimes I think he's – He's setting me up like it's too. Like I can't help myself. I see something funny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment on it. Like something happened recently where the there was a spam email that went out from ASOS, the fashion brand, right? And they sent it out, and they were baiting people. Like I'm talking millions of emails. This spam campaign, and he thought it was a legitimate sponsorship offer, offer from ASOS, and he emailed him back, and he said, "I would never work with you guys. You guys supported BLM." you're fascist, and he screenshot and posted this email. But it was a spam email, and I'm just like, bro, are you, this is too good to be true. Like, you must be doing this on purpose. <laughs> oh, man. And how do you know it was spam? Every comment in the thing was like, bro, I got this email too. Ah, damn, damn, damn. Any, I love that shit though. That's too good. That's, too good yeah, no, true. it's good. It's a, it's a fun little rivalry you guys have. Any Any talks of that this year? Uh, no, no talks this year. Um, what's, what's been happening? He, I think he's retired from everything except ADCC again. I think he's still got some, uh, some medical issues, but his teammate Marigali keeps calling me out. But as far as I know, in the training room these days, Marigali kicks the shit out of him and I beat Marigali at the last ADCC. So as far as I see it, I might as well just retire on top and ride off into the sunset, you know? You're the champ, yeah. Um, th there was a, a, a list that came out from The Independent in the UK where they ranked the top 50 most influential people in MMA and boxing. Gordon Ryan came in at number 50. He made the top 50. That's yeah. pretty good. I mean, yeah. I mean, the dude gets some traction on the internet. You know what I mean? Like, i got to give it to him. Like, he posts something, people are talking, people are confused at what it means, you know? Like... I gotta give him credit. Who would be your dream dream opponent for you in a grappling match? If you can have one dream match this year. I mean, oh I mean Lovato's been like a dream of mine just because I feel like you really want to face grapplers that were big when you were coming up. Mm -hmm. So it's like Lovato, obviously tail end of his career. So for me, that's a good one because when I was coming up, Lovato's a legend. But I mean, half the shit I want to do is just talk shit on the internet, really. And I look at two guys, Gordon and Marigali, and win or lose the match, I'll win the pre-fight banter, and that's what's most important to me. And those two guys are very fun 
to make fun of. So it's like, in terms of me and my goals, that to me sounds pretty fucking exciting. All right. And by the way, how often are you actually in Australia? I, I mean, think- very, very rarely. I've been on the road this year alone. I've been, I was in Bali, Phuket, um, Almaty, back to Bali. And then I was in, yeah, I was in Kazakhstan before Australia. Man, all over the place, hey. Too many, uh, too much time on planes, eh? Yeah. And, it's going to kill me. It, it, where is actual home for you? Is it Austin or is it Australia? Austin, Texas is home. But okay. to be honest, I haven't even been in Austin <laughs> as of this year. So wow. it's like I just keep being pulled in different directions. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't take too much to entice me to come somewhere. Like feel like, hey, come to Kazakhstan. I'll be like, fuck it, why not? Do you ever get tired of living out of a suitcase, being on a plane, this and that? For sure. I, I tell you what I get tired is being in a new country at 3 a.m. and there's nowhere I can get a coffee or anything. That's when I'm really at my lowest, you know, when I'm like, oh, I can't get Uber Eats. That's the real struggle. But, yeah, I, I, I enjoy it for now. You're you know? looking, you're I looking like for, a bit of it. Why are you looking for coffee at 3 a.m.? Well, I mean, if I'm up, I'm up. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. if we, you've probably had it before. You travel to yeah. cover a fight or something. You, you find yourself in weird places when you're jet lagged. That's right. That's a good point. Um, final prediction on Saturday. What are you? Uh, what are you feeling? I'm thinking uh, flying triangle, maybe first round. <laughs> I really push him every single fight. I was like, Vox, I know you've got your legacy on the line, but think about my instructional sales. <laughs> That's our top priority here. You know. Imagine a fly, fly, what, what is more improbable: a flying triangle or a gogo plata. Honestly, if you look at Volk's legs, I'd be quite concerned if he were to put Ilya in a go-go play because I'm not sure he'd be able to get him out of there. They'd have to get the jaws of life on him. What is his go? What is his best move? His best submission? Best grab? I mean, I mean, he honestly does have a pretty good leg lock. He loves an army in guillotine. Mm. But I mean, in terms of highest percentage, but I mean, for most MMA guys, going to be going to be a rear naked choke. I mean, the tough thing with MMA is most of the time when they submit a guy, the guy has rocks or he's just so broken, physically exhausted, he could take, they could take it with anything. It's pretty, it's pretty rare for an MMA guy to catch a clean early submission. Usually the other guy's a bit broken down. But yeah, flatten the guy out from back, throwing the rear naked. I think that's definitely top percentage move for Vox and for, again, it's the smartest game right. plan for grappling. MMA. Um, one last one. Did you see end of the year at the Fury grappling event? Aljamain was very upset about his opponent doing the butt scoot thing too much and was critical. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you did you agree with him on that, or is that just a part of the game? Is that is that just something you have to deal with? I tell you what, I totally agree with him. Like, I mean, we, like we look very gay in what we do, you know. But at the same time. If I look at another man across, especially as an Australian who didn't grow up with any wrestling, if I look at another man and I go, that guy can wrestle, well, God damn it, I'm going to sit down before he takes me down. You know what I mean? That's, it's just is what it is, but it is an unappealing aspect of grappling. I can't, I can't deny that. I love wrestling if I'm a better wrestler, but other than that, God damn it, I'm sitting down fast. Fair enough. Um, always a pleasure, Craig. Uh, good luck to you. The, uh, the upcoming matches that you have coming up, of course. But uh, Saturday, first things first, good luck to you and the team in uh, the return of Alex Volkanovsky. Looking forward to it very much. Appreciate you giving us some time. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Speak to you soon. Yes, sir. Cheers. Yeah. There he is. Um, there he is. Oh, I'm such an idiot. So did I screw? I yeah, I screw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who me? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's getting tough. It's getting tough. I'm not gonna lie. It's getting tough. Um, what? Oh, I screwed up in a big way, didn't I? With the timing, huh? Uh. Yeah. 
So okay, so this is this this is just putting it out there. Yeah. So you know when I book people on the show, I try to I obviously give them the time. First of all, thank you to Craig Jones. Great to have him on as always. So I try to book the time. Okay, so let's figure this out because for some reason I'm I'm not able to do the math. I try to book the time based on where they are. Yair is in Mexico City. I wanted to book him for two. I thought Mexico City was an hour ahead. It turns out they're an hour behind. So two, I thought was three. I told them three, but three is actually four, right? Is that right? Correct. Four o'clock Eastern. Four o'clock. Okay, so we can keep that. Yeah. Can you tell? You, you kept it with with uh, his guy. No, so we did it. Like we came to a solution. I think uh, they're letting them know now. Just tell them it was my bad. I, we I screwed up. Three, three their time, four our time, right? Yeah, I, I screwed up. Let me let me just uh, you know I, I I keep trying to do the math and I'm doing so much here and it's just like womp womp womp. Um, wait, you said he's busy. What does that mean? You mean now or at at uh, what do we got? Talk to me. What? We're not we're not going to see if he'll stay on at the time he was supposed to. He's busy in general? No, no, not now. Keep it to the original. Four o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Three, three Mexico time. Uh, one second here. Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of math, and if I'm being honest, math was not my uh, my my strong suit. You know what I mean, guys? So it's a lot of math. Um, thank you to Craig Jones. Everything's okay. Everyone's gonna turn out. Everyone's gonna be here. It's okay. It's just my 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 math is off. Uh, Arnold Allen coming up. Tom Aspinall coming up. Mackenzie Dern coming up, and uh, Yaya Rodriguez coming up. And so, thank you very much to Craig Jones. Very excited about two ninety eight. Very excited about. Uh, Mm. Yeah. Everyone good? Everyone good back there? Great, man. Good. Everyone okay? A uh, quick word from our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Get in on the UFC 298 action with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 back in a bonus bet. UFC 298 this weekend in Anaheim. Solid card. Solid main card, really. I uh, I like it a lot. I'm very excited to see the return of Robert Whitaker. I have some thoughts on the return of Henry Cejudo against Marab Dolishvili. And also, of course, the big one, Alex Volkanovsky versus Ilya Tepori. I have no idea. I, I don't often... Who is the favorite going into that main event? Sorry to leave you hanging, but um, he's not here right now. Where do you go? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Does anyone know? Let me check it out myself. Um, thank you for that, Frank. It's good. Is anyone back there? Yep. Clearly you are. You'll never leave me hanging. What do we got? What do we got? Where is it? Where is yeah, it? I'm back. Oh, okay. Uh, I was asking you who the main event was. You left me at the altar. Uh, who the oh, favorite uh, was? Uh, it's, it's essentially a coin flip. I mean, it's about as close as it can get. It's, yeah, minus 118, minus 102. Yeah. On Best Fight Odds, which is where I go, they have it as Alex Teporia for some yeah. reason. Is that a mistake or what? Or is he that his ultimate? Best Fight Odds anymore. What is fight the odd, one? FightOdds.io. Gotta go there. Anyway, coin flip. Can't wait. Robert Whitaker, minus 225. Paulo Costa, plus 185. Henry Cejudo, plus 164. Marab Dualishvili, minus 198. Get in on all the action over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now. Use the code DMMA Hour. New customers can get a no sweat bet up to $1,000 of your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code DMMAR. The crown is yours. Gambling Cronk on 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. One no sweat bet per new customer issued 
as one bonus bet based on amount of initial losing bet. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash promos for deposit wagering eligibility restrictions, terms, and responsible. Um, yesterday, there was a video that came out where on the countdown show, Henry Cejudo fires. Well, did he fire him? I don't know if he fired him. He said that he wasn't going to have him uh, help him out or corner him for the fight against uh, Marab Abdullahishvili. He said this to Captain Eric Albaracin. Did you guys see this? This video of Henry Cejudo going up to Captain yeah, uncomfortable. Eric. Yeah, comfortable. I don't know. I don't know why I did it on air. So the first thing I thought it was, was that it was a work. Yeah, didn't look real. It didn't look real, right? It looked like an absolute work. Um, Captain Eric says to him, "Ah, oh, you know, it's all about you being champ. If this is best for you and you being the greatest of all time and all that." Uh, I'm cool. And then Henry's like, this is why he's the man, because he, you know, uh, is okay with it. And so I reached out to Captain, and I asked him if it was real, if it was a shoot. And his response was, as real as it gets. Legit. Now, he's actually going to be in Anaheim to coach Paolo Costa. Which I still feel like him saying it was real. I don't know. You think he's working me? I don't know. It just, did, it just yes. didn't feel like it was real. Why would they put that on camera if it was actually real? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why, and why would his reaction be so, like, calm? I feel like the first thing he would say would be, like, you're doing this on camera? Yeah. Like, what the hell? We've been, for as long as I've known Henry, Captain Eric has been with yeah. him. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Weird all around. So anyway, I asked Captain Eric to come on the show. He's actually in the air right now. But on Wednesday, hopefully we could get him on to clarify all of this. Um, would seem interesting. And I do increasingly feel like if this doesn't go Henry's way, that this is the last time we see Henry. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, I'm starting to think that too. If he's, Marab beats him... But I, if he wins, he's, he's probably going to get a title shot, yeah? Yeah. He's currently an underdog, plus 164, minus 198, Marab. Does he get a title shot? I if he beats like Marab? Yes. Number two yeah. contender, he's number three. Over Corey. Big name. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Former man. double champ. I think, I think they would be more inclined to do Corey... If Sugar wins, Corey Sugar rather than Sugar Henry, what do you Why? think? Why? I don't know. Why would they want Corey over more fan friendly matchup? Nah, I feel like Cejudo's bringing main event UFC pay per view main event to the table that Corey cannot. Former double champion just like lost a title fight in May, one win, yeah. and then he beats Marab in a very yeah. very close fight. Uh, Corey's yeah, coming I, off I can't few. see a world where they'd want Corey in there over. It is kind of wild, right? It's either a loss and he's maybe done or a win and he's right back in the title picture in what would probably be a favorable matchup for him on paper, right? Given the skill set. If, it if it's Cheeto or Sean. It makes sense for Cejudo's career. He came back and got an immediate title shot. And now they're, if they, did it, if they didn't give him a, a fight that I think would put him back into title contention, I think he could have walked away after that. Like if they said... You're going to have to fight Umar. Does he stay around? I don't think so. Probably not. Now he needed something a little sexy. I mean, this yeah. is a tough fight. It's a very tough fight, but I think this is the fight you... Look, give me fights that are going to keep me in title contention. If that's not available, I'll leave. And to be honest, he should. Like, I think this is exactly what he needs for his career. I wonder if Henry regrets leaving when he did. He was champ. He was getting pay-per-view points. Probably. He was in his prime. He walked away. I don't think he'd admit that to you, but yeah. No, didn't probably. quite get what he wanted. I think he thought that they were going to come crawling back with some big money fights. Didn't quite work out. Gets the title fight, the, loses the, it. The fact that he came back at all tells me that he regrets it. Right. Yeah, to a degree. I mean, I mean, life changed for him, right? He became a dad. Things change. Sure, but could have just stayed champion and, and defended that belt. Are you guys... I, I haven't even mentioned Ian Gary versus uh, oh, man. Jeff Neal. 298's got some... 298 is amazing. amazing. Those amazing. top four fights in particular, and you could throw on Roman Kapilov, fine, but like, and Anthony Hernandez, but like those top Labor four... placement. Yeah. When it was Alaskar, it was, uh, was a little bit more exciting. Those top four fights, that's that's elite stuff. And I love them because they all have great... I mean, is Paulo Costa going to show up? Yes, I think he's going to show up. I think up. he is, yes. But I just, hate this. I hate this. I hate it too. I hate Paulo it too. Costa going to show up narrative. It's such nonsense. I hate it too. Is it nonsense? I mean, yeah, he, because some of them weren't even like him planning to ever show up. Like they, they're putting out these uh, these advertisements for Costa versus Alaskarov. Like that was ever going to be a thing. 
Sure. And then, like, whoops, yeah, he pulled out. No, he didn't pull out. Like, let's just be real about this. Like, and, you know, you get sta- uh, staff infection? No, what did he have? Yeah, staff. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's not like the guy's just, like, dropping out of fights. There's, there's explanations. Um, I'm going to defend my barber to the death. Um, so shout out to. I mean, um, both these, both these, this man and co man, I like all four of these fighters like a lot. Don't want to see any of them lose. He, he, he does lean into it. Oh, 100%. Which yeah. Which, which I think makes it funnier and I think pushes the narrative more. Right. He, like, leans into yeah. He's it. tweeting, like, am I going to show up and stuff like that? It's funny. I mean, and then we did have the Marvin Vittori fight week, like, where they, like, had to on the fly agree on 205 or however much yeah. what the weight was. I mean, that made for some great moments, though. That the, was the Zoom call. The Zoom call was one of the funniest yeah. things that's ever happened. Yeah, uh, Whitaker looks dialed in. He looks fired up. Um, I said last week that Ian Gary, you know, it's been a pretty drama-free, stress-free road to this fight. And then Rampage had to go ahead and ruin it all. Mm. Like, there was nothing going on. I hate to see it. There was nothing going on with Ian Gary. It, he did the one interview. People accused him of reading a script, which I still don't believe. Nothing else. Stayed out of the spotlight. Rampage comes on, takes a shot. <laughs> Come to find out he was booked and agreed to go on Rampage. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's actually supposed to happen today. I don't know what they agreed on. Oh, but, I hope I hope it happens. But then, uh, you know, then I see this, uh, this Instagram story from him, and uh, he's not happy with Rampage. Here's the important question. He said he's did not going Rampage, on. He said there's no way he's going on. Did Rampage reach out to you? Did Rampage, and, and, and about what? Just say, like, hey. You know, I said this thing. Now all of a sudden, I'm in this hot water. Ian Gary's mad at me. Did yeah. He, did he say anything to you? There might have been a. You see now, every time say I talk about to what, you, like I like I like there couldn't have been a, a way to have it. And then you're like, well, yeah, he kind of did. So what what happened? There might have been a. Every time I talk to you, I get in trouble. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I, I, I will say he, he wasn't stressing too much about it. Yeah. You saw him at the Super Bowl last night? Oh, by the way. Yeah, he was there with the big hat. Yeah, it looked good. He had a very gracious response. You know, like he was like, look, I messed up. I said something silly. Like, you know, much respect. Like he didn't, he wasn't like doubling down on the idea of like. No. Anti-Ian Gary. It was a very measured response from Rampage. Uh, There there actually wasn't, I mean, I thought that he was going to go because Ian had some choice words. I thought he was going to go scorched earth. But if if I'm Ian... My advice would be either A, and and I said this to his team. I was like, Rampage said a lot of things on the show last week. I don't think whatever he said about Ian got any kind of traction, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. I I feel like by bringing it up, you only make it into a thing. Just let it die. Now, I can understand it's a sensitive subject. You're defending your family's honor, this and that. I would just show up on the show and... Hash it out. Hash it out. If you're going to lean into it with the commercial and the spot, Rampage isn't going to do it. He's not going to punch him or something. Lean into it. Not going on tells the world that this really has bothered you and you're affected by it. and you're, You know what I mean? That's probably the worst. I mean, I think the Instagram story did enough to say that he's bothered by it. You know, I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any confusion about that. Yeah. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing with Ian, but uh, I'm excited to see him back. I hope that it's a relatively stress-free, drama-free week for him. And uh, we can finally see him back in action against Jeff Neal, the fight that we were supposed to get back in July. Now, uh, we do have a few minutes before we get to our next guest, Arnold Allen. Why don't you tell us how the weekend went for the Parlay Boys, Mr. PC. What does that mean? Bad? <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and put it up there. I mean, we start the night with a no contest for uh, Juliana's pick, and then... The boys go go over three. Ah. Big goose egg. I mean, a tough start. Tough start to 2024 for the uh, for the parlay pals, parlay boys, whatever you want to call us. Uh, over over four so far. We got we got to bounce back. Got got to get it right on uh, on 298. Uh, tough sledding for us. Um, and then on to my picks. I mean, a, a roller coaster of a night. I mean, I I got one. I missed one. I got one. I missed one. You know, hitting plus monies. Um, and then it all came down to the main event. Pfeiffer, I was on the under. I was on Pfeiffer. Worst case scenario, Hermanson wins by decision. Sure enough, Hermanson wins by decision. It was about halfway through the third round. I was like, Hermanson's gonna win this by decision. It's yeah. gonna cost. It's gonna cost me everything. So uh, 
yeah, I mean, just similar to last year, a bit of a rough start out of the gates, but uh, we we righted the ship last year. I think we'll do the same this year. I'm not too concerned about it. Very close to to winning weeks, but I mean, man, go back to these singles. What, what am I doing laying minus 185 on Devin Clark? <laughs> What am I doing? <laughs> well, what am I doing laying minus 220 on, on an under? If I went to a decision. Uh, under one and a half. I mean, you know, things that we can we can correct. Don't don't play chalk on Stoliarenko. Don't play chalk on Devin Clark. We, we learn from these things. They, they say you either win or you learn. That's what we're doing. We're learning. We're downloading the information here at the start of 2024. Uh, and we dipped below 100 units for the first time in, in a while. Wow. Down to yeah. 98, yeah. When, when was the last time? Ooh, since Since we hit it. Since we hit it, we hadn't dipped down under it. So uh, no, I know, but when was that? When did you hit it? Man, I think like October. Yeah, October, November. Um, I do have a couple big hitters. Tell us. That I can, that I can get into. Yeah. All right, so at least someone's doing well. I actually didn't get that many. I didn't get that many entries. Oh, uh, <laughs> and like they're really not that crazy either. Um, but like they are really good calls. Uh, so I will shout out just two, two guys here. Jordan Wong. Three three three. He called exactly what I got so wrong. Bryzek Poteria. Plus four seventy five to go the distance. Nailed it. He threw five hundred on that. Oh. One twenty four hundred. So congratulations to him. And then one other one. Again, got what I got so wrong. He got this one right. Combat disciple. Uh Jack Hermanson by decision. Plus six hundred. Threw a hundred on that. One six hundred. So not a ton of entries this week. I mean, wow! When you have these Apex cards, you, you get a lot of less bets put down, so a lot of less potential for big hitters. Uh, it's also lesser known fighters, you know, all, all of the above. I think 298. We bounce back. I bounce back, and we and we get a lot of big hitters from that. Is there something to be said that maybe for the Apex cards, it should be there should be like a three bet minimum or something? Three bet maximum. Oh, that's what I meant. Sorry. I think that's a good call. I think that's a good call, honestly. I mean, we were talking. Like, are, is it time for us to implement rules? Like, I saw, I saw our friend PT say, "I'm no longer staying up." To I watch mean, Apex yeah. Cards. I mean, it's getting to the point now where we're, we're slogging through these Apex cards, and I'm like, "This is something. <laughs> this is something." Yeah, and and it's not like there were a lot of, I don't know, there you know, there were some nice finishes here and there. There were some knockouts. There were some, you know, good stoppages. I, I, I know, I know, there were some decisions. I know, I know, but it's like you put that same card. And I know the main event wasn't exactly, you know, but it was it was dominant. It was a nice one for Jack. You put that in. It was a, a back and forth fight. It was a nice comeback. Yes. It was a vet lesson. It was entertaining. But it's just, I hate the harp on the atmosphere. I hate, like, this is why we get into these things, you know? Imagine the NBA was still doing their games at the uh, the bubble in, no, be crazy. in Disney. But you also do have to admit not only the atmosphere, but the cards are of lesser quality. Oh, it's, a thousand. it's undoubtedly, like, there is no argument. They would not be putting this card on in front of a 20,000-seat arena, 15,000-seat arena, wherever it may be. Like, the cards take a hit. The atmosphere takes a hit. I do think that the performances don't get supercharged, but that's probably the best point, to be fair. It's probably the best point because when you are trying to sell tickets and fill up an arena, there's a certain level of, you know, like, look at that Austin card, right, at the end of the year. Like, Misha Tate on the prelims, this and that, you know what I mean? That Misha Tate fight could be a main event of a uh, of an Apex card. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't put it past them. And so you're 100% right. There's no sort of like, there's no checks and balances. There's, there's nothing that says, oh, we need X amount of good fights or X amount of names because we're going to venue X in City Y. Here, you can literally put anything. And even if they don't sell a ticket, they don't care. If they no. sell one of those packages, great. Yeah. It's all we gravy. all love stakes. Stakes is what gets us into this game. I mean, a fight needs stakes for me to really, really, you know, feel like in, invested in it. And most of these Apex cards don't have many fights with, with stakes attached to them. It's not just the ticket sales and, and all that stuff. It's also the viewership. People tune in for this. I, I don't know a single person that isn't like a, a diehard MMA fan that's watching an Apex card. Yeah, but they're also not watching Fight Night Austin either. They're, all, they're the, the same fans that are watching those are tuning in for both. The card quality continues to decrease. The product continues to get watered down. The middle class of the UFC continues to get eliminated in favor of cheaper labor. Dana White Contender Series winners and sometimes losers graduating to UFC Apex cards and filled with fights that have no stakes and don't matter. Um, 
and people watch it the same as they would watch UFC Austin. So there's no incentive for ESPN to say, hey, we need to improve the quality of these cards because they're getting the viewership regardless. Nobody nobody who is griping about the card quality or or any of the Apex stuff is tuning out, and so therefore there is no incentive for the UFC to change this. And it's unfortunate. Yeah. It's a bummer. It is really a bummer. The, I, I don't blame... The Apex is being... The, the, the physical building of the Apex is being blamed for a much larger problem, which is... Card quality. Card quality. Yeah, I mean, it's just everything that comes. Well, it's sort of like what came first, the chicken or the the, egg, right? Sure, the building. Yeah, the card quality came first. It's Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying it's it's the card quality, but they're not booking these cards. They don't have the card built and say, you know what? This isn't arena worthy. It's Apex. It's because they have this listed as an Apex show that they don't feel like they have to put anything of real significance on the card. You know what I mean? And so that's why it's like it kind of goes hand in hand. Um... Again, I think the Apex and the PI, they have been two of the, the smartest things the UFC has ever done, but there's a time and place for them. Contender Series, tough, perfect. These fight nights, not perfect. And uh, and honestly, we're probably in the minority. We're pro- How many people who don't get paid to watch MMA and talk about MMA are watching all four, or at least a portion of all 43 cards? You oh, know what I mean? Lot. A lot of the you fans. Think so? Oh, yeah. A lot of oh. MMA fans mm. that are the ones that we're talking about, like watching UFC Austin and feeling like, oh, it's so much better of a show because it's an arena. They're watching these as well. They're tuning in for the same thing. They're not skipping it. Low key banger. Every Apex card yeah. is a low key banger. Uh, they're, they're tuning yeah, but in I sometimes I feel like we're junk. we're in like an echo chamber on Twitter with that. I think there are a lot of fans that that tune out for these cards, and then they're they're tuning in for Austin. Yes, there's there's, there's a little there's, bit more. There's buzz. a massive tickets gap tickets. Yes, this. don't don't think their their viewing habits are changing that significantly. Is isn't it like seeing the slap thing on Friday and seeing this on Saturday? The juxtaposition, like Dana does the pros, presser on Friday, doesn't do anything on Saturday. Oh man, it felt like this this card was just like swept under the rug. The like only, it was just like a nothing thing. The only devil's ar- advocate argument I'd make is that Slap Fight needs it, right? Like, yeah. it is the newer product. That would be the one you'd want to bring people in for. And to the point that I'm trying to make, people accept the slog of these UFC Apex cards and is tu- are tuning in anyway, right? You don't need to put the bells and whistles on it because there is just that portion of people that are going to say, oh, these fights are great. They're going to pretend, you know, that... that there's, it's always the cards you don't expect that surprise yeah. you. You don't know until no, it's over. That's that, incorrect. That there's a nobility in suffering through some of these worst <laughs> cards. Like, oh, you're such a hero. You're such a hardcore MMA fan because you suffered through UFC. It's Apex like 86. it's like watching your NFL team when they're uh, when they're three and fifteen. Oh, a thousand percent. <laughs> or your uh, NBA team when they're uh, thirteen and forty-four. Yeah. Uh, not a real fan. You weren't really suffering. Ah, uh, these bullshit rules. These Twitter bullshit rules. Like on Saturday, our guy Brandon Johnson gets the game winner, ninety-six minute. You see that? Oh, of Unbelievable. And then he does the uh, he does the Jeff Hardy celebration, which was incredible. I, I don't remember. It's the thing with the hands. And then he posts it on Instagram. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. My son's birthday is coming up on Friday. I got him a Brendan Johnson Tottenham jersey. And I posted it just out of like, wow, this is great. He's he's doing well. This is exciting. He's our guy. He's our favorite player. That's not how it works. You don't get to pick uh, another team to do, like. You have to stick with the one team. You can't go and follow your. Pl- I guess the voice should have been like, "Oh, you can't go and follow your player." You haven't heard the voice. The, uh, well, I love that. I love it. Uh, what, what do you mean? This is Says towards who? a kid. Towards yeah. a child. Well, like, that. Yeah. I had all that. sorts of jerseys when I was a kid. I got all sorts of jerseys, and I'm. Yes, me dirty. too. <laughs> but they're like, no. He went to another team. You can't go buy a jersey. He's like, what? You you can't. Root for the, there's all these bullshit rules about what yes, you can the rules and can of do. fandom determined uh, by these people who are miserable. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Shut <laughs> the fuck up. The, yeah, I think we're all in agreement. The Apex cards are they, oh. they, they stink. They're not good. They're, They're not tough. Good. That's about the only way to put it. When's <laughs> it is tough. When is the next one after two, 298? Is there one the very next week? Oh, oh sorry, oh, Mexico, stop. Mexico. I'm sorry, Mexico. Oh, Mexico's and then great. The week after. Oh. oh so out of the next four weeks, we only have one. So we've got Jorginho Anaheim, Mexico, Jorginho, which seems like it was just thrown together. Oh, that was supposed to be Who's Saudi. Who's fighting again? Uh, uh, Gassiev. Right. Yeah. Main event. Yes. Time. Wait, that was supposed to be Saudi, though. So, well, why why did they move that? 
Uh, nobody knows. No one knows. And there's no way of finding out. <laughs> yes. They never made an offer. That's right. They never submitted the card, right? Um, O'Malley, Vera is the following week, and then there's two. Tuivasa that typer. Good. O'Malley, Man. Vera, that one's pretty solid. Imagine Bam Bam Tuivasa was supposed to be on this card and like walks out with the crowd and the fun walkout music and everything. And he's going to be doing that at the Apex. Rose. Are you guys all in for uh, Atlantic City? All in. As far as we know, yeah, this we're on. We're no main on. event, though. Unless yeah, we're you, going for the vibes. Who cares? Yeah, we'll get think, one eventually. You think... <laughs> do you think they... Uh, do you, <laughs> you don't seem too worried. Do you think they bump up uh, Blanchfield Furo? If they do, they do. I hope not, but maybe. I mean, local. You're getting Chris Wyman on there. Yeah, I love the jersey. But this is aspect. my point, right? Like the card, the card quality is what is what we're after here. It's not the Blanchfield, Blanchfield, uh, Fiero at fun. Atlantic City. Like great, but like we're talking about the the quality of the card. Sure. It's it's not just the the fact that it exists in the Apex or Atlantic City or Austin or wherever. It's it's the roster. It's the it's what is a UFC main event in 2024. I mean, essentially any fight. Yeah, or what is the UFC prelims as an even oh scarier gosh. thought? Oh, gosh, I mean, the people that got knocked out of the tough house in round one. Yeah. is Jessica, When Dana says that every fight on 300 is uh, main event worthy for a fight night yeah, or a pay-per-view, is for it's just like, I'm like, I know what you mean, but, you know, some of these, I guess have Apex have Dumont too on UFC 300. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess yeah. Apex. I guess but Apex. What, what that means has changed. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like 10 yeah. years ago, 100, 200. Yeah. Be like, yeah. yeah, you know what? That's a solid little factoid. And also, I feel bad for Cody and Figgy because they definitely shouldn't be the opener, but I feel like they put them the opener so that they can yeah. say they're the opener. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. opening the night with yeah. Figgy versus Cody Garbrandt. <laughs> and if I'm them, I'm and like, then we're going wait to Marina Rodriguez There's versus way Scott less, you know, like, that's 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 a that's a that's a prelim headliner. That's an amazing oh, fight. Sure. But, but I feel like they're getting fight. put there for the distinction. But the fact that we're going to get it at all, I'm just counting blessings at yeah. this point. You know what I mean? Like, it is it is truly a good card. Uh, all right, let's move along to our next guest. Uh, we saw him in action just a few weeks ago. It is always a pleasure to catch up with the pride of Ipswich Town, the one and only Arnold Allen. He's kind enough to join us back home <laughs> in England. Hello, yeah. Arnold. How are you? Yeah, what's going on, mate? All good. Oh, Yourself? All, all good. We, we're getting you from the car here. Are you driving? I hope you're not driving. Yeah, no, I'm just driving right now. No, oh. uh, <laughs> just been to the gym. Pumping some iron and uh, uh, love it. now parked out starting at McDonald's. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> you, you're in the parking lot of a McDonald's? <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> that is amazing. Are, are you a McDonald's guy? I mean, I we we have some questions about the meals and whatnot, but I never see you really talking McDonald's. Nah, uh, I prefer Burger King. Really? And, why, uh, why, is that? why is that? Ah, oh, it tastes better. All right, fair enough. <laughs> you ever tried the halloumi yeah. fries at McDonald's? I don't know if they have them here. I don't think they have them here. Do they have them? Uh, okay. Was there someone in the car with you, or yeah. did you just ask your imaginary? <laughs> yes, yeah, that's my imaginary friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, well, good to see you, Arnold. Thank you for joining us. Um, obviously, we have. And by the way, I said Ipswich Town. Is Ipswich Town the name of the club and not the town itself, or is it okay to say Ipswich? No, no. Yeah, no, that's the town. Yeah, oh, okay. that's the Ipswich. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, right, all right. I just I, I didn't know if I was just like calling it Manchester United and exposing the fact that I really know nothing about football. So I just wanted to <laughs> to make sure about that. Uh, a few weeks removed from a. A frustrating night on multiple levels for you. How do you feel about yeah. Toronto now that you've had a few weeks to digest? I hate Toronto. I yeah. ain't ever going back. Yeah. I agree. Montreal's the best thing. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. Did you really not like it there, or is it just more about like what happened? And by the way, what happened to the lights? You seem very dark right now. I don't know. My car's just shut down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want, is that better with the lights? Uh, the lights. Oh yeah, that's much better. Oh wow, look at that! Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> my that, assistant. <laughs> that feels like a phone in your face. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is the we're in the studio. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, no, it, it was. Yeah, obviously frustrating, but the city's fine. I, I like Toronto. I've been there a load of times, but um, yeah, it's yeah, it sucks, but here's what it is. How, how did you feel about your? Obviously, you didn't get the nod, but your performance overall, what you did out there. How do you feel about what you did? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm happy with a lot of the techniques. Like Faraz came up with the game plan, all the things we drilled through the camp worked. 
uh, all the things my teammates put me through and all the all the positions we practice in training, everything worked. I was never stuck on the bottom. I was never held down. I was never controlled. So that was that was the strategy, you know, all those things, the rolls, the Granby rolls to get back to my feet. Uh, we had some plan B attacks from my back that we never had to go to. And uh, yeah, so everything, everything worked great, except uh, just didn't get the decision, didn't push the pace enough. Maybe, I don't know. But yeah. Did you think you did enough to win the fight? There are some people who scored it for you. Did you think you had done enough? Yeah, yeah. Like immediately after, I felt, I felt like, yeah, I, I knew it was close, but I felt like I did enough from one and three. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's that's fighting, right? It's a ruthless sport. Sure. Did you have you watched it? Yeah, a couple of times. A couple of times. And and when you watch it, do you, do you feel like you did enough? Do you score it for yourself? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, was he was he tougher than you thought, or just about the the right type of competition no, no, as but, you were thinking? Yeah, he's everything expected. You know, he's a tough, undefeated lad. Good gym, like trains hard, big prospect. You know, it was it was everything you expected. And obviously that that moment in the third round. Can I ask you about? And and you know, we could have a whole discussion just on how crazy MMA officiating is, and and the rules in different locations and countries and and states and jurisdictions, but. Were you told like this? Man. Yeah, no, this is great. It's very, <laughs> it's it's very dramatic. <laughs> were, were you uh, were you told that in Ontario the rules are different than in the United States for that particular um, you know opponent down? No, not that. Uh, you know, like before the fight, it's all a bit of a, a haze. It's like you know everything. You got the adrenaline, the apprehension, everything, all that. But in, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I asked something about that, and it was like, uh, no, no, everything's just normal. But maybe, maybe that's just my memory of it, and I'm in the zone, just sort of locked in. So yeah. But in my mind, it was all as normal. So yeah. So what, what did what do you make of Mark's decision now after watching it to to halt the action when he did? Didn't take a point away, but definitely stopped your momentum. Yeah, you know, it, it's a. Being a ref must be like a thankless job because you make the right call, no one says good job. You make the wrong call, no one says, everyone says bad job, right? So it's, uh, I, I get it. Maybe there's there's a blurred line with that rule. Uh, it's not unanimous everywhere. It's not the same thing everywhere. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, it is what it is. Maybe from his angle and then the rules are what they are in that state. But I don't know, I've seen slow motions of it and, I was trying to pull him off the canvas every time to make it as legal as possible. And um, I did think it was legal to knee, even with the fingertips on the canvas. But I was like, right, I'm going to pull him up and knee hard as I lift him up. I seen the slow motion, his hands off the mat every time. But in that in that moment, it's tough to to see what's going on and to make that call. Yeah. But, right. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's so tough, especially because as we find out in Ontario. It's a different rule than in most of the United States, which is insane. Mm. Now, I'm sure you've seen Andy Foster come out and say that he wants to dramatically change this rule by having another part of the body on the ground. It can't just be the hand game anymore. How do you feel yeah, about like this? A, uh, yeah, everyone said that we like, I'm, uh, I'm the martyr for it, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, whatever. It just, it just needs to be a solid thing everywhere, right? It's, it's so frustrating. Uh, like you, It shouldn't be like you go... You wouldn't have it in football like you, you go to play in uh, Brazil and they're playing different rules. You wouldn't right. go play in Ipswich. They play in di- the game's the same wherever they play. Yes, so, yeah. And it's it's uh, mm. I think impossible to ask you guys to remember where you are in the heat of the moment. Oh, is it is yeah. this legal here? Is this illegal here? I mean, that's just there's so yeah, much going on. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, you know, but to be fair, saying that like I was uh, in my head, I was believing right. Well. His, even if his fingers are on the canvas, I can knee him or kick him or whatever. That was my, my thought. And uh, so, yeah, I did have the way of thinking that. And then when he, when Mark stepped in, I was thinking, literally in my head, I was thinking, oh, like, I must have done something wrong. I'm getting disqualified. If, if those are illegal, I'm getting disqualified. Right. And then uh, and then when he didn't take the point off, my first thought was, oh, I, I think maybe he made a mistake. <laughs> that was the, in the in the fight, that was literally my thought. I was like, or uh, actually, maybe he made a mistake here because if I didn't even get a point off, but like, sure. something went wrong. Right. Yeah. What do you think happens if the fight doesn't get stopped in that moment? Uh, yeah, it's all good saying it, but I did, I did feel like I was on the way to a finish. And uh, 
it, you know, it makes me look like a bit of a sore loser saying so. So I don't, I don't want to be like, oh, I would have finished. But there's a thing like any, any fighter, anyone that knows and in a sport will know when you're in a fight and you've hit someone with a shot or like you feel like a submission come on, you can, you can feel like there's a feeling that, oh, this is it. Like he's hurt. I'm, I'm seizing in on this. I'm closing in. It was that kind of feeling, but you know, fair play to him. He didn't play it up or didn't act it up. Uh, the doctor came and had a look and he was, he didn't complain. He got straight back into it. So all respect to him on that. Does it, does that make it harder to digest? Like if you just lost a decision, like, like the, the hot max fight, like it's just, a bad day at the office. Yeah. But because of this, does this make it more annoying for you? Yeah, you know, it, it definitely sucks. It's a big kick in the balls, but, um, you know, it's, it's part of the game. It's it's a, a ruthless sport. You could do everything right and still not get the result. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a top competitor. I'm sure he'd do well. So it's, it was never going to be an easy task when we took it. So, yeah. A little back and forth on Twitter and whatnot with with yourself. Another, how do you feel about him in the aftermath? I thought, he should, to be honest, I think maybe it's a misunderstanding. He saw, uh, he maybe saw a headline and then like didn't watch actually what I said because, you know, that's that's not me. I'm not talking shit and saying things. So I feel like maybe he's a bit confused. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, I saw your video yeah. on your YouTube channel. You didn't really, you didn't come off like having sour grapes or whining or anything like that where yeah. you recapped it all so uh that could happen or uh, a case of broken telephone or something like that did you go to the hospital after the fight yeah they forced me they forced me and uh why uh because my eye closed up a bit so apparently uh i've told this story loads now but apparently in the past i have had a broken orbital here and uh i never knew that i did that and um that's why they wanted to check it to make sure it wasn't a broken orbital. And they said it wasn't a broken orbital, but it was an old one. It wow. was just a black eye. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I was like, no, nah, it's fine. It's just a bruise. I feel like if it was a break, it would really hurt. But um, yeah, it was It was a fine. It was fine. But um, yeah, apparently there was an old thing there somewhere. And you didn't know that? <laughs> nah, nah, I never knew that. That's crazy. But, yeah. That's next level <laughs> toughness. <laughs> I mean, Unless I got someone else's scan or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, ha- and actually, the funny thing, at the same time, I was uh, getting wheelchaired around the hospital for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> they forced me to do they're like, oh, it's insurance. So I'm like, I literally have a, a black eye. I'm, I'm fine. And uh, my car is our policy. My dad was at the venue hanging out with Drake. And uh, I saw that. The funniest thing, he was with uh, Faraz and uh, Eamon and uh, Mandel, I think. And uh, I'm like, oh, who's this guy? Like, they went up to his house and they're like, oh, that's Drake. Like, nice to meet you or something. I don't know how true that's his recollection of the story, but yeah. Wow. He just goes, oh, he was a guy with a big gold chain. And it's like, nice to meet you, mate. Like, yeah, never met you. Never heard of you, but nice to meet you. Did, yeah. he, did he snap so, a picture? No, no, that's the funniest thing. They were talking about getting a picture and uh, apparently he didn't. He was like, nah, you're right. I don't really do pictures. So. <laughs> that's what he says. I don't know. Are you a Drake fan? Uh, yeah. uh, not not a fan, but I definitely no, I'm not a fan. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to Drake. Nothing wrong with that. Why not your not your cup yeah. of tea? No, no. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah. Um, did you see afterwards? I, I thought he was talking about a different fight. Dana White was quite critical of the of the fight, and I was surprised. I, I thought it was uh, I thought it was one of the better fights on the card. Certainly not the worst one on the main card. I was surprised yeah. by the comments. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I did see. I didn't think any film because I felt like he got the wrong fight. And uh, okay. you know, I took it. I took it. If he did mean that fight, it wasn't a dig at me. But you know, I you know, I always come out and uh, throw my arms in the air and try and take the guy out and give it my all. So I'm not trying to maybe maybe against coaches' advices of uh, you know Dan Hooker mentality, just go in there and get stuck in like he does. So yeah. How far do you think Mozart can go? Do you think he could be a champion in this weight class? Uh, that's a hard one. I don't know. I'm not too sure. No, I, I don't think... I think he does well. Obviously, he got one over me. I just feel... It's some tough... I like Someone like Volkanovski, maybe like Tupor. Those two guys fight for the title. I, I don't see him beating those guys, to be honest. The star-wise and the way they fight compared to his, I think they match up bad for him. 
but you know he, he's very good and he's getting better every fight i'm sure he's going to get better after this fight as well how how would you describe your uh i don't know for lack of a better word like your confidence level right now after the last two fights how are you feeling about things and yourself and the the the, the point yeah that no you're I'm, I'm i'm uh i'm pissed off but like you know in, in a good way like um confidence is there like i went the loss of max i can take it it sucks but uh, i still believe i'm one of the best in the world um couple of adjustments bit of luck my way i think i could have won that fight the last one like you know i lost it but again a little bit more pressure that's a guy a lot of people are trying to avoid and uh he's a very on paper he's probably the worst style for me out there like you know if you were a betting man looking at those things you would see his style versus my style and like it suits him to a t so i understand why he would call to fight me but like you know most people out there saying i won most people think i should have got a stoppage that's you know he has more followers than me on the internet and that's what people are saying to me so yeah but obviously they're my followers that's what people are saying so means nothing i know i can go back in there with the elite with the top guys and i, I can beat those guys and uh yeah if anything it pisses me off in a good way i you know what is it was it who has it said it he's pissed off for greatness ray lewis is it ray lewis wow the football player no. The American football player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, quoting guy, Ray Lewis? Uh, I, I don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't know you were a fan. Are you an NFL fan? No, I'm just a fan of his. Okay, really? <laughs> of Ray Lewis? Yeah. Why uh, him? Yeah, I don't know. I just like watching his speeches. They used to make me laugh. Yeah. Like, uh, it would make me laugh, but I like what he says. You no, know, it is just funny. Uh, yeah, he's an intense guy, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's a story. Is about... that the complete opposite? Yes. A uh, complete opposite of you and your demeanor. Yeah, exactly. That's why I like watching it. It's kind of like funny. You know? Did you stay up to watch the Super Bowl last night? No. No. <laughs> no. No way. You couldn't be bothered. No way. The Taylor Swift Bowl? No. <laughs> Look at no, you. No, I didn't. Is it because you don't like yeah. Taylor Swift or because you can't be bothered to stay up that late? Uh, both. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't dislike Taylor Swift. I just uh, I don't care for it. <laughs> right. Fair enough. Speaking mm. of which... Uh, uh, I was a little bit worried because I was obviously I follow you very closely on uh, on Twitter or X as the cool kids say. Did you did you lose the club card and get it back or what happened there? Because <laughs> I was worried about uh, it. Yeah, I had to. It was a whole rigmarole because uh, I changed my phone number and then on the app they want you to send a code to your old number uh, to adjust it. And then if you don't have your club card, you need to put like your four co- four numbers in to get it. And I'm like, well, I have neither of those. So I have to get a new one. Oh. <laughs> but So why why did you ch- why did you change your phone number? Because uh, I was out of the country for a while for the last camp. My uh, my oh. number expired. Uh, then didn't top it up. Okay, but you yeah. got the club card back. Yeah, yeah. Back in the game. It is annoying when you change your number because then you realize how much is associated with your phone number with all the codes, the two-factor authentication and all this stuff. What a pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, I don't know any of my pins now. (laughs) Ah, it's a mess. But then, so so I just want to get it straight. Back with the club card, not happy with Marks and Spencer, okay Mm -hmm. with the weight rows. The the weight rows was solid, but but not, is that, did I get... Come on, man. You're into football now. you got to say Waitrose. Stop oh. Waitrose. <laughs> <laughs> What's the football di- fans are going to rip into you. Ah, uh, no. They rip into me enough. Why? Waitrose? What is that? That's a supermarket. What does that mean, Waitrose? It's like a fancy-ass... Uh, it's, uh, it's like Whole Foods, I guess. But it, not, no, it's not, quite, it's not quite Whole Foods. It's below Whole Foods. It, is it yeah. Wait Space Rose or is it one word? Oh, it's one word. Waitrose. Ah, oh, gosh. So the is the current. <laughs> what is the ranking right now? Um, probably probably Waitrose at the top. Wow. <laughs> Waitrose. Oh, <laughs> over yeah. over uh, Tesco or any of those? Yeah, I had a chocolate milk for there the other day, and it said it was like Tom Clark's chocolate milk, I think, and they play music to the cows when they're being milked. That's <laughs> so pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Wagyu but like different sure sure and that's at Weight Rose yeah yeah wow that's some serious shit <laughs> have you ever had whole milk like a raw whole milk um probably I don't know Cause probably had it straight from the source we we had um uh Oh, God. We had uh, Tim Welch on last week. Tim Welch, the head coach for Sean O'Malley, and he has his own coffee shop, yeah. and he, he serves raw milk straight from the cow's teat. 
<laughs> What's going on over there? <laughs> <laughs> Unpasteurized. He says anyone who drinks yeah. the other kind of milk is a beta. And I'm an almond yeah. milk guy, not even a cow's milk guy. <laughs> well, it's, not, it's pros to both, I guess. But I, I was raised on the dairy, but I don't want that. <laughs> it's a little too much, right? I, I, yeah, like the cow ain't going to tell you it's got a bad stomach or some That's true. E. coli or something. That's like that. a good point. <laughs> and uh, just a couple of others. I saw the great uh, video blog that you had uh, where you were at the Camden Market. You were trying all the crazy oh, yeah. food there. What is the can? This looks fantastic. Mm. Is this like a pop-up thing that happens in the summer? No, no, no. It's there. It's there all year. All year. It's uh, it's just like a little market in London. They got food everywhere, and it's it's no, yeah, no, it's all, all year. So if you're ever in London, it will definitely be there. My it's, gosh, it's how much best. did you eat? Uh, a lot. A lot. You're just <laughs> lot. binging like yeah. crazy. I saw you in Amsterdam too. I mean, you're just you just go. How much weight do you gain after your fights? Oh. Uh, a lot. A I was lot. like 190. Um, yeah. But I still got a six pack, so it's a winner. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I, just, <laughs> I love I love your your content. It's great stuff. It's a little bit different. Thank you. The, you're working. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel like it's, uh, you know, it's it's paying off? Do you feel like you're you're getting back what um, you put in? Yeah. Like the good thing is, so when I do it, plug it. Yeah. I sell shirts when I make a video, but I'm, I'm definitely not getting like money off the YouTube. But every time I post something on there, like I sell t shirts. So that's that's great. But um, yeah, like if if I don't start winning fights, the YouTube ain't gonna cut it. Nah. <laughs> You'll be yeah. fine. You'll so, be fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when do you want to return? Uh, maybe summer. So I've got a couple of old injuries I need to fix out. It was a it was a long camp. Um, so yeah, that that would be nice. Summer would be nice. There's some talk but, of yeah. a of a, an England card in the summer. Would you like to be on that? Why? Uh, uh, someone said something to me about July, but I, I don't yeah, know. that's what I heard. There was yeah, some... July. Yeah, July would be cool. Should be a good time. I got um, yeah, I got to see a doctor this week uh, about a couple of things, but nothing. Hopefully, nothing crazy. It shouldn't be nothing crazy. So yeah. Hmm. And and could I ask you before I let you go, uh, Vulcan Taporia this weekend? Obviously, your weight class. Who do you uh, yeah. who do you think comes out on top? Uh, the closer it gets, I, I really like Vulcan. So I I, I kind of. Want him to win because I don't want him to lose. And then there's all the thoughts about the last fight with, um, you know, jumping back into camp too short and all that. But uh, I, I, closer it gets to the fight, the more I feel like Taporia is going to get it. What just, a confidence. Just like, you know, this, the confidence is definitely uh, definitely something. You know, he, he definitely believes he's going to go out there and be champ. He changed his bio. It says UFC featherweight champ already. Yeah. 15 and 0. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's. On one hand, it's like in my head, if I did that, I'd be like, "Oh, this is a bad omen." Yes. Yeah, maybe, maybe he's that confident. Yeah, I mean, I respect <laughs> it. I would never be able to do it because I would yeah. feel like I'm jinxing myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of the McGregor thing. That when McGregor come up, he did the same stuff, and uh, it, it all worked out. And uh, yeah, yeah. All right, so you're 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 leaning Volk, and it sounds like you'd like for Volk to win. Yeah, Volk's is like cool guy, man. He's yeah. like good good champ and uh he does all the does all the right things yeah yeah i would love to see that as well uh more, more so just like i just want to i i, I don't want to see i don't want to see a lesser version of him you know what i mean if, that, if to, yeah that's the problem i have no dog in the race mm. and taporia is amazing and i think he's going to be a superstar mm. but i just don't want to i don't want it to go back to your point oh wow october changed his life changed his career you yeah. know what i mean yeah like yeah if it's if he loses, but like, that's going to be the big question, right? So, but if he wins, no one's going to question that. So. Right. Yeah. Then it could be over. Mm. Um, all right. And and last thing, uh, any opponent in mind for you? Anyone you're looking at? Nah, I was asking for um, Ortega after the Holloway fight, but you know, that would be cool. Maybe the, if I guess I'm I'm in the losers, but I'm in the losers bracket now. Nice. So uh, if uh, like Yaya or Ortega loser, I feel like that'd be cool. So, that'd be amazing. Mm, we just have the ultimate loser fight. Hey, listen. <laughs> we, we got beat up by Max Holloway. We lost the last one. Let's have a go. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, still, it's still a big name, still a sexy name, as they yeah. say, still someone that uh, people would be excited about. So uh, yeah. I would like to see that as well. Uh, always a pleasure, Arnold. Thank you very much. You're going to run in for some halloumi fries or are you going to go home? What are you thinking? <laughs> no, no, I'll go home. You're done. <laughs> You're done. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate you very much. Um, sorry about, you know, how it all went down and uh, some of the controversy. Right. 
But uh, I'm going to make a push that they rename it the Arnold Allen rule. So maybe that could be, yeah. you know, something. You can That'd get. be nice. Every time. The only thing is, it'd be real shit if they name it that. And then I uh, I get kneed in the head with my hand down. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm yes. like, oh, man. The fucking Arnold Allen rule. <laughs> and I don't want to bring yeah. up, uh, it's getting a little dicey there at the top of the table in the championship. Uh, you know, I'm, it's. I don't, don't. They fell off. It's a. Uh, squeaky bum time. back on it. Yeah, I don't mm, want to bring. I'm not bringing yeah. it up. You know, we're we're in a tough spot too, so I'm not bringing it up. Uh, good luck to you guys. Thank Appreciate you, Arnold. It. All the best, and uh, we'll talk Thanks, to you soon. Mate. Yeah, see you later. All right, there he is, the great Arnold Allen, uh, always handling things with class. And yes, it's getting a little tight there at the top of the championship. Uh, Leicester City was 75, Southampton 64, Leeds 63. Uh, and so I believe those would be the three teams that got relegated. Right? We need some fresh blood. There is a playoff though. So, oh, there is. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just the top three got promoted. No, uh, my recollection is the top two get promoted, and then the last four, meaning it's top six, top two go automatic, mm, uh, three through six, final, then do a, a semi semi, and then final at Wembley. This is, you know, our beloved Nottingham Forest two years ago. They, uh, they made it happen. In fact, Morgan Gibbs White was the one who missed the. The penalty kick, he was on Wolves and uh, and and Nottingham Forest advanced to Wembley. You learn something new every day. Yeah. About this beautiful game. Yeah, I mean, struggling for Forest, Struggle. struggling for Ipswich. Forest is Struggles really. for Wrexham. <clears throat> Forest and is season two, me. it's great. Forest is killing me right now. Oh, they're killing me. Killing me. They're so- I, I feel like Luton's going to catch us. First of all, Luton has turned into the freaking uh, 99 Manchester United. I was going to say, this, they're, they're, like, they're, they're, scoring. they're 08 to 2012 Spain at this point. I mean, every time I put a Luton game on, I'm putting it in the back of the net. 3-0, three, but uh, they did lose. Bad loss this weekend, so that was good to uh, Sheffield. But Forrest, Forrest is good. I don't understand what's going on. You never know what you're It's do. always heartbreak. and the one it's, it's all, it's, They're right? always losing nasty ways. And the one frustrating thing is, at least last year they were... They were shit away, but at least at home it was either you knew it was an automatic draw or a win. You knew. Like even Man City comes to town, actually uh, a year ago. You knew it's either a draw or a win. Now we're losing to shit Newcastle. All right. <laughs> what? Newcastle's not shit. They suck. They suck. Look at them. Look at their form last 10 games. We Plus, they were, they, were, they were missing two of their top guys weren't playing. Yeah. Yeah. We always keep it close. Always keep it close. With Arsenal, most. we only lose by one goal. And then they go out there and beat West Ham 6 0. Yeah, I like that way you said that. Yeah. West Ham. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I thought it was also the nil. Uh, or that. Or that. Sounded, yeah. sounded proper there. Uh, I would like Wait to. Waitrose, man. Come on. Dude. Did I screw that up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waitrose. We all know. Yeah. <laughs> Did you go to Waitrose? Uh, no. No, but I'm going to have to now. Next time I'm in uh, England, it was just Tesco's, but I guess that's. that's there's second, I, I, there's a whole class hierarchy. At this point. I, I was shocked. I mean, there was real gasps back here in the in the control room uh, when he said Wait, Waitrose is his number one now. I think that's the bourgeois one. I mean, it looks bourgeois. I'm looking at it. Steak and caramelized onion chutney sandwich. Wow. I mean, you got a Tom Parker creamery uh, milk, chocolate brownie. It, it looks tremendous. Uh, and he does say, he says, Tom Parker's cows listen to music while it's being milk. Milked, and apparently the beef in the sandwiches has an award for animal welfare. I mean, this is crazy. It's also like, is it, isn't it like $5 or five pounds? Five whole British pounds, yeah. How is this possible? I don't know. A lot of chocolate. Chocolate brownie, chocolate milk. Also, the milk with the steak sandwich. <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> yeah. Come Would on. not be my first choice. It's not very kosher. Uh, you know why? You can't mix life and death, according to the Jewish religion. The life Makes would sense. be the milk, the death would be the the meat. Oh, I was more concerned about mixing chocolatey dairy with uh, steak and onion chutney. I mean, the whole mix just is giving me a stomach ache just thinking about it. Hmm. Hmm. Waitrose, though, I'm down. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to get out there at some point. Ipswich game and uh, a pregame at the Waitrose. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm rooting for Ipswich. I'd like to see some uh, new blood and what a story because they just got they just got promoted. Uh, this year, so it's rare to do the uh, the double jump, if you will. Um, in a matter of moments, we're going to be joined by Tom Aspinall, the great Tom Aspinall, who, of course, 
uh, won the interim title here in New York uh, back in November. He beat Sergei Pavlovich, and since then it has been quite the uh, the saga for him as he's trying to get a fight with uh, John Jones, with Stipe Miocic. Um, and here's John Jones popping up uh, last week doing an interview with Submission Radio. I think he's down in uh, Australia. He's down under doing some promotional stuff, and he did this rugby thing where he he tackled someone and then did this interview where he said that he was approached about 300, which is surprising just because I thought he would only be able to come back in July. Um, so why they would even reach out to him, I don't know. Um, but honestly, and we're going to talk to Tom about this, I, I think Tom needs to to just move on. I, I don't think that he should make his story hinge on whatever John Jones is doing or doesn't do. Because let's be honest, who knows when, if John Jones ever fights again. Tom Aspinall has more wins in the UFC heavyweight division than John Jones does. Tom Aspinall has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wins in the UFC heavyweight division. His lone loss was the TKO freak which really could have been, I don't even know why that's considered a loss. To me, it should be a no contest, but whatever. Nothing happened. I don't even know if a single punch was thrown. But the point is, it's not like John Jones, and I'm not, I'm not trying, th these are the facts. These are 1,000% the facts. It's not like John Jones won the lineal belt. If John Jones beat Francis Ngannou, you could say, all right, rightful owner, fair and square, you did it, you beat the guy. A win over Sergei Pavlovich, in my opinion, is akin to a win over Cyril Gant. And I don't think this is much of a hot take. And so I, I, I think, just like Izzy considered himself the undisputed champion when he won the interim belt against Kelvin Gaslam, just like Conor McGregor considered himself the undisputed champion when he beat Chad Mendes going into the Aldo fight. If I'm Tom Aspinall, if I was managing Tom Aspinall, I would say, like, peacock around there. Treat yourself like the champ. Talk about yourself like you're the champ. You've done more to have a case and an argument and a claim to the quote-unquote heavyweight title than John Jones. I'm not even talking about the last three years, the activity. Let's just talk about wins at heavyweight. And let's talk about last win versus last win. Is Sergey is a win over Sergey Pavlovich lesser than a win over Cyril Gaon? I don't think so. Sergey Pavlovich at the time of that, that fight was 18-1. and one. Sorogan, very solid as well. I think it's akin. Am I am I making sense when I say this, guys? Rick, what do you think? Like, I don't agree that they're equal, but I'd say it's close. Like, pretty darn close. Like you, Sorogan's a former, you know, belt holder. Like, I would say that's not equivalent, um, but it's close enough. And and I would not say that in a fight between Sorogan or Sergey Pavlovich, I'm going. No, not the same league. Like, same caliber of opponent, in my opinion. Um, Do you understand my point, though? I understand your point fully, and this is what I've always said. I'm on the same team. I, I, I love this argument because, to me, this says, now we don't have to worry about John should have been stripped, this, that, the other. Tom's the champion, has his own belt, defend your belt, and now we move on. There doesn't need to be any tying to John Jones needed. For his own sake as well, right? Because most people, and, and perhaps we'll get some clarity on this when he joins us in a few minutes, most people historically who are interim champions get treated as real champions, meaning you get the perks. So ultimately, who cares? Does Tom Aspinall really need John Jones to secure his legacy? It would be great. But Speaking don't be, my language now. I'm loving, yes. I'm loving to hear this yes. because we were so hung up on he, John Jones owes him this and interim belt is the is the number one kid. Oh, thank God. I don't God. know if I ever thank said God any God of that. Come, thank Have God I you've said come this? around because I love this. I don't know if I ever said he owed him or if Tom's I ever called. Tom's champ. Go defend, go defend your belt. You've got a belt. Take, take care of your family. Who cares? You're going to sit around and wait for John this. Jones? All, I'm all in. Has anyone confirmed if that video of John is actually John, the one at the comedy club? <laughs> it did not look like him. Oh, the oh the comedy zone. I'm talking about even seeing him on camera. It barely looked like John Jones at this point. Yes, um, I would agree. But I, I'm talking more about the video where it yeah, said the, that he was the heckler. It sounded exactly like him. But has anyone confirmed yeah. that it's actually him? I haven't seen any real reporting on it. I've only seen the social media clip. But I, I I'm sounds just under like the him, right? That it is him. Yes. He also said yeah. Albuquerque. Yeah. He said sounds, he's from Rochester. Exactly like yes. him. Yeah. 
It's not. It's not. If it's not him, it's a great impersonator. Can I say something about that clip? Number one, not the best look for John, but also number two, like I felt like the comedian had a few layups there and did nothing. Do you think the comedian knew it was him? He no, so I saw uh, oh. I saw in an article that he said he did not realize it was him until after the fact. Okay, so the comedian has said that it was John Jones. Again, well, the comedian posted it on his YouTube channel and said I was heckled by UFC champion John Jones. But in watching the clip, to me, either he's on really not good because you you got to be quick. I mean, as someone who's been to a comedy show very recently, <laughs> you got to be quick with the interaction with the uh, the crowd. And I felt like that guy wasn't quick. Here's here's the thing though. If I was in that comedian's shoes, and I did know it was John Jones, I'll tell you what I'm not doing. I'm not telling better jokes, and I'm not antagonizing John Jones, because that might end very poorly. You for think me. John Jones is going to beat him up? He's you at think his John show. John Jones is going to show up at a comedy show and heckle him? I mean, there's the all bets are off. I'm he, not, but John uh, is at his show. It should be all bets off. He he should be able to take whatever he says. No, he's heckling I don't, him. I don't think it works that way. It doesn't work I don't that think way? there's like a there's like a thing. Oh, John. Oh, John Jones. You're supposed to just accept uh, whatever comes your way that he says. No, no physical violence here. We we don't allow. Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, I'd go so far as to say, like, even if you call security, if I'm security, you know what? They want nothing John Jones to do with is it? gonna John Jones is gonna heckle today. Uh, we're not we're not trying to escort him out of here. Um, I don't want those problems. You guys heckling at a comedy club? No. Why? Who does that? I don't know. It's not fair. I mean, it's 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 not. I feel bad for the guy. If only because he seemed rattled by it. I mean, it's amazing when they have great comebacks and like he they get the audience laughing. But yeah, yeah, the crowd work. I almost got uncomfortable watching that. The crowd work has become a very popular comedy vehicle these days, right? Like Matt Reif has become very popular for that. Not that he like. Believe me, he's not the one that I would I would say is doing it best. But there's certainly an element of like those types of videos are very popular now. You know, destroys heckler or even just crowd work on people who are who are appreciative of it. Uh, but it, it kind of is ruining comedy shows, in my opinion. It's not it's not what we're here for. This isn't some sort of like participation yes. event, right? Yes. You go there. It's like imagine going to a Broadway show and being like, wait a second, I have questions about this character development. Like, no, you're there, you pay the money, you sit down, you watch it, you go home. But like, again, th- I'm not confronting John Jones about it. Yeah. God bless if that's uh, if that's your tactic. Amen. Anyway, the point is not to get off track. Like, if I'm if I'm Aspen on, I see this and I see the thing in Australia, I'm like, what what am I doing here? If this thing happens, it happens. Let me just move on with my life. 100%. You know? Tom Aspinall wins the next five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fights. He's a legend. He's the greatest hope, of all time. I hope everybody who was whining about it back then comes along with you on this ride. I I support this. Tom needs I feel like Tom, John in my mind Tom Aspinall is the heavyweight champion and, and and John is there as as a legend as arguably the greatest of all time but but if, if we're doing this thing where he's going to wait for Stipe in the UFC that feels like a, a a lifetime achievement award that that's what that feels like and Tom could do his thing interim non interim it's a piece of gold he walks in there he can lose it and no longer be considered the champ it it acts it smells it looks it's the exact same thing as a as a as a championship full agree and I would just say, would you agree with this? If it, of the two of them, if someone wants to stake their claim to being the best heavyweight in the UFC, I think Aspinall has a much better case. I, I agree with that. If you're gonna, if you're somebody who's a contender that wants to challenge for being the best heavyweight in the UFC or possibly the world, that's the name you're saying, in my opinion. Now. We know how this game goes, right? If you're asking for the biggest fight, it's always going to be it's going to be John's name. But if you're somebody who says I, meritocracy, I want to be the best heavyweight on the planet. Yeah, you're call, you're calling for him. You're calling for Tom, not John, at the moment. I thought his uh, his advice, John's advice in that interview with the submission radio guys, was actually pretty sensible. He's like, "Hey man, don't let me stop you. Go yes. out there, be a legend, make money." Support your family. Like, he, he, what he's saying is good. Unfortunately, you know, he holds the keys to a big fight. But, uh, yeah, we move on. We move on, and we strut around like the peacock that we are. And so, speaking of which, let us uh, go to our next guest, who is standing by. Yes, he is the best heavyweight in the UFC. He's the people's champion. He's the champion of the UFC. He's the pride of Manchester, and I think a little bit outside Wigan, I do believe specifically, he is your friend and mine, Tommy Aspinall. Ah, there he is. Hello, Tom. How are you? 
How am I? Yes. Let me tell you what I'm doing. Oh, okay. I am doing absolutely fantastic. Never better. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Wow. Thanks for that, Tom. Uh, why fantastic? I'm doing great, but I'm, I'm more interested in you. Why, why fantastic? I don't know. Everything's blessed, man. Everything's good. I just finished a good session. Feeling pretty pumped. I've just done a bit of uh, S&C training. I'm feeling all good. Two good sessions in the bank. Healthy. Everything's good, man. Can't complain. The endorphins are running wild, right? Your brain is kind of, you're like floating right now. You're in good spirits. I'm in very good spirits, yes. Thank you. By the way, is it in fact Wigan that you're joining us from? Did I get that right? Actually, I'm in Wigan right now. I'm, I'm actually in Wigan right now. Love but uh, I'm from a place called Atherton, which is slightly outside. Okay, fair. I, try, I always try to get it specific. Um, so we haven't talked since uh, November, since right after you were here in New York and, and won the title. Can you tell us how the last few months have been like in your in your life? Do you feel like there's a noticeable difference now that you're a champion? Uh, yeah, I think so, maybe a little bit. But, you know, to be honest, Ariel, is uh, my secret to success is I just live a pretty mundane, boring lifestyle. Like, I do the same things every day. I'm in the gym twice a day. I'm taking the kids to school. I'm spending time alone. I don't do much. I don't do much, mate, to be honest. I'm focused on the goal. And the goal for me is to be the best heavyweight that has ever walked the face of the earth. And that's what I'm working on. That's what I've been working on since I was seven years old, since me and my dad decided this thing. And I'm still working on it now, nearly 31 years old. And uh, I'll still be working on it for the next however many years I'm involved in this sport. No, no, no escape, no hobbies, no, no, nothing that, you know, you come home, you put your feet up, nothing like that. No, no, this is it. This is it, mate. I'm all in. I'm absolutely all in. Like since the knee injury, especially since I had a cut, since I had a year off, I decided on, I'm either going to be all in or all out. And since I came back from that, you can see from my performances, mate, I'm just all in. I'm obsessed with this oh. sport and uh, I love it, man. I absolutely love it. Getting the taste of the belt. Uh, feels like it it maybe only like uh energized you more right now okay now you got that now you want to see how far you can go right it's no longer about the i guess the chase to gold so to speak it's about planting your flag as the greatest of all time exactly exactly i am uh pretty energized right now i'm feeling amazing um and yeah I, that the, the the goal for me has always just been to you know get the belt now i've got the belt and the next goal is best heavyweight ever. And I honestly, like hand on heart, seriously, truly feel like I'm going to do that. So this is all music to my ears, Tom, because, you know, a few weeks ago on Twitter, it seemed like you were kind of feeling sorry for yourself. You were trying to get this fight with John Jones. And you're like, yeah. And what I just said before you came on was, you're the best heavyweight in the world. You have seven wins in the heavyweight division. He has one. Beating Sergei Pavlovich is the same as Cyril Gunn. You're the man. That belt is as real as his belt. Stop chasing him. He should be chasing you, for goodness sakes. And I feel like, I don't know if you were, uh, this feels like this is the mindset. Am I right about this? You couldn't be, you couldn't be more right, you know. Um, yeah, I, I was definitely feeling sorry for myself. You know, I had my little cry about it. I did a lot of complaining about it. Anyone who knows me personally knows that complaining is my forte. I like to complain. So uh, I was a little bit of a Karen, as we say here in the UK. I had a little cry about it publicly. But you know what? As I said, as I've just said to you, when I first started this sport, me and my dad, we had this dream that I'm going to be the heavyweight champion, that I'm going to go down as the best heavyweight in history. And to be honest with you, I ain't going to let nothing or nobody hold me back. No John Jones, no Steve Miocic, no Dana White, no UFC politics. Like, if they don't want to be involved with it, I respect their decision. I respect the move that they're making. I respect John Jones and everything that he's done. I respect the UFC's decision. But they're not holding me back, man. I'm going to be the best heavyweight ever. No matter which way it goes, whether it's the next fight people start thinking it, the next year people start thinking it, the next 10 years people start thinking it. Like, I don't care. I've got a lot to prove. And I'm here to prove it. I ain't here to shy away from no one or nothing. Like, I ain't letting anybody or anything hold me back. I'm going full in, balls to the wall, all in. I'll fight anybody. And yeah, I, I'm the guy. I freaking love this. When did you come to this uh, conclusion? When did you have this epiphany, this change of attitude? 
Well, you know, I did a little bit of online um, crying. <laughs> and a, a lot of people were on my side, of course. Um, I, I've openly said, obviously, I don't think the thing that's going on with John Jones is right. Um, I don't think that the UFC's decision is right. But that's just my opinion, man. That's my opinion. I state my opinion. I respect their opinion. I respect their decision. I respect everything that John Jones and the UFC have done and are doing. And a lot of people told me online, hey, Tom, you need to stop crying. And I thought, you know what? I fucking need to stop crying about it. They're right. I do need to stop crying. I need to move forward with it and move on with my career and prove that I'm the best. And that's exactly what I intend on doing. This may sound weird. I don't think you need... John Jones would be great. But you don't need John Jones anymore. You know why? You have a belt. And correct me if I'm wrong, as an interim champion... You still get the same perks as being heavyweight champion, period, undisputed, correct? Am I right about that? Yeah. So who who cares? Yeah, sure, it's a few more pay-per-views here and there, but you can't, like, let's be honest. He's not the most reliable. He's had one fight in four years. Four years, one fight. Now he's on the sidelines. Who knows when he's going to come back? You got to do your thing. You can't wait around exactly. for him. Um, the, the people who know, who know the score, know the score. Do you know what I mean? The the real people who know about MMA and, and all this politics stuff, like they know. And I don't mind proving I don't mind proving people wrong. Like that's fun for me, mate. Like I love fighting. I absolutely love it. I don't think people get that. I'm not one of the guys who's going to pick and choose my opponents and and dance around this way and that way. Like since I started in martial arts when I was seven years old, started competing when I was like eight nine years old. I've never turned down an opponent or a challenge in my life. Like, I live for this stuff. I absolutely love it. Like, stick me in there. I'm at home. Like, that's my thing. That's the buzz that I get. This is what I live for. So, I, I ain't shying away from no one or nothing. Like, I'm going all in on this thing and exciting times ahead. Uh, you, uh, you, you put John and Stipe in the same boat where, like, you're just not concerned about either of them at this point. I know you, you mentioned something about potentially Stipe later on this year that they inquired about him, but... Uh, I guess he wasn't interested as well, based on what you wrote. So, are you just putting both of those guys as this isn't going to happen? This isn't. There's no point in in worrying about any of this or thinking about it. I don't need any of this. I don't need either of them. Mate, if if they offer me the fight with either of them, I'm taking it instantaneously. Sure, sure. Instant, like let's not get let's not get it twisted here, Ariel. I'm taking the fight. Um, but none of them two are going to fight me, mate. Let's get let's be honest. Let's be honest. None, none of them two are going to fight me, and that's okay. Like I'm at peace with it. If that's not what they want to do, if they if they really feel like they've earned the right to not fight the the interim champion, if they really feel like that, and their ego can rest on that, fair play to them. Like if they're happy with loads of people saying that you need to fight Tom and they don't fight me, like fair play to them. My ego couldn't take that personally i couldn't take that like my ego's too big like if there's a guy out there like th this is what I, this is the way i think of it area right if you're the if you're the, the champion of the world yeah that could also be known as the king right this is this is my opinion and in my opinion from my experience through history and all the rest of it what the king does when someone tries to take his throne, is they defend the throne. That, that, that's that's my opinion on it. They don't nitpick and be like, "Oh, this I'm not going to defend against these guys. I'm going to defend against the like." If someone challenges you, mate, and you're the king, you're defending and putting them back in the place and being like, "I'm the guy around here. This is my throne. No one else is sitting on it." And I think I'm the number one, me. And if anyone challenges my throne, they're going to get put in the place. That I'm going to do everything in my power, at least, to put them in the place because my ego can't take someone else saying that they're the king when I'm the king. Does, it, does this make sense? Or yes, of course, of course. So, so if John John or Stipe's ego can can take that, like, fair play, like, congratulations, guys, you've done enough. Make your money and move on. Perhaps a silly question, but uh, why do you think they don't want to fight you? I'm too dangerous, man. I'm too risky. I'm too risky. Simple. I'm too risky for these guys. Um, who knows? One day, maybe when I'm when the shoe's on the other foot and I'm on the back end of my career, I get put in a situation like that. I'll do the same thing. I'm not blaming anybody. Like I want to say, 
how much respect I have for both guys. Like these guys are frigging heroes of mine. That is part of the reason that I would love to get the opportunity to fight them. But if it's not happening, it's not happening. And uh, the crying's over. No, no, I like this. I like this. I like this attitude. Now, I feel like as one of the um, rising stars and faces of the UFC now, certainly uh, gaining a ton of popularity and and over in in England and the UK, you're getting a ton of love. I I thought you would have been a shoe in for 300. Was there any serious talk of showcasing you on that card? So I I told the UFC that if they want me to be ready, I'm going to be ready for the card. Um. They offered me Stipe. I was like, of course, of course. And uh, like one hour later, they came back and was like, nope, Stipe just wants to fight Jones. Mm. Then there was talks about Alex Pereira moving up to heavyweight. As I said, mate, I ain't the kind of guy who's going to start turning down fights. I've never turned down a fight in my life. Um, And I'm not going to start now. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm not intending on starting now. So... um, when I started hearing rumours about that, me and Alex, maybe we did a little bit of online flirting back and forward, but uh, we have a couple of mutual friends and um, it came to light that Alex isn't going to move up to heavyweight yet. So again, I respect Alex, respect his decision. He's a champion in his own right. Fair play. I ain't going to push for that anymore. Uh, what about against one of the other heavyweights? Mate, as I said, as I, as I said, I am... Uh, I see myself as the number one. The number one is the king. And if somebody challenges the king's throne, it will be defended. Okay. I will defend my throne. I will defend my throne. Um, Ideally, right now, I have one loss in the UFC. That's where I'm at right now. I got, I don't know how many wins, but uh, I got one loss where I took an injury in the fight against Curtis Blades. If... I could get that fight back in my next fight. I know Curtis has got a big fight coming up with um, Almeida. Yeah. If he, if he comes through that, if he comes through that fight, I would love to avenge that loss. Like that would be something I would be extreme. Hey, I'm interested in every fight. I'm not just saying I'm interested. Yeah, yeah. I am the easiest person ever to entice into a fight. Honestly, like ask any promoter I've ever worked with, anybody ever. Like you don't have to ask me twice for a fight, mate. I'm in, and that's it. You just need the call. You just need them to call you up and say it's on this date. And so do you think that we're going to see you at – obviously 300, I'm guessing, is off the table now, right? Who knows, man? I just took a fight on two weeks' notice. That's so true. That's a good point. I'm, I'm, good point. I'm, I'm, good to, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Okay. Uh, there is some talk about a return to England, but I don't know if that's a pay-per-view. Have they told you about that? Nope. Okay. No, I have no news. Uh, only rumors, only rumors at this point. I'm hearing that they're going to do a UFC Manchester, but uh, at this point, just rumors, nothing official. But nothing l- official let's just yet. say it is in the summer. Is that too long for you? I mean, that would be a, a pretty big layoff. Ah, six months layoff isn't too bad. I mean, uh, more whatever. Like eight. Whatever. If it's less, I mean, if it's July, that would be eight months. But I guess tomato, tomato. But mate, you want to see you want to see me training right now? I am hitting new levels in the gym. Like I'm getting better all the time. I believe that I'm not I'm not even close to my prime yet. Honestly, I've got so got so long to go. I'm getting bigger. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting faster. I'm getting more technical. I'm training with some of the best heavyweights in the world right now. Like I'm feeling amazing in the gym. So give me more time, mate, and I'll be better. You know what I mean? I'm just getting better and better. So it's very uh, very exciting times. And most of all. Most of all, something that I've missed off in this thing is I'm enjoying this stuff, man. I, I love this. I absolutely love preparing for a fight, fighting, the winning, the glory, the everything. I love everything about this stuff. Like, I absolutely love this sport. You'll not find a guy walking around planet Earth who loves MMA more than me. So uh, it's all fun. It's all fun and games for me, mate. I can't wait. I'm very excited for the future. Yeah, I see you with uh, Rico and Eddie Hall out there. I mean, what a trio that is. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rico's good. Rico's a crazy man, mate. Rico's crazy. He's got <laughs> like, uh, he's having like three fights in one night. The guy is insane. And Eddie Hall's just been, Eddie Hall's been training with us because right now we've got a lot of heavyweights. Like, we've got a team of just heavyweights in the gym. Like, we've got like, the other day we had like 15 heavyweights sparring. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um from like all over the world and Eddie Hall has been getting involved because he potentially had an MMA fight coming up and then I think wow. he got rescheduled or something. Um, 
So, yeah, Eddie Hull's been doing a bit of training with us as well. It's cool. Eddie, Eddie's a friend of mine, so it's all, it's all good. You roll with him? Eddie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's gigantic. His arms he's a big, are... He's a big man. He's, he's like, uh, I, don't know, I don't know about in pounds, but he's like 170 kilos, so... He's he's a big he's a big boy. I think it's it's way more than three hundred pounds. It must be like three fifty ish, something like that. Uh, every time I try to no. Google something, uh, three seventy four. He's a big boy. Holy he's a big boy. smokes! Three seventy four. Yeah. I saw you. I saw you doing the bench press with the one thirties there. Yeah, well, Eddie Eddie set me up on that. To be honest, look at you. Eddie set me up. So Eddie. Um, we we did the. I'm not used to doing these kind of weights, you know. Th- these are not my the, this kind of weight style. It's not my scene. Can you can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. So I did. We were doing like six reps. How 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 heavy you can go for six reps? So I did my six, and then Eddie's like, "Oh, you could have made that a lot easier, mate." I was like, "What? What the fuck? Why did you tell yeah. me? Why did you tell me that you could have made it easier? Like, I didn't even know the proper technique." So it was. I've seen a lot of comments. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I mean, Eddie's on the weights. Eddie is like, obviously, he's a, he was the world's strongest man. Eddie yeah. is like ridiculously strong, mate. Like another level. I couldn't even believe, like training with him in the gym, in the weights gym. It was incredible the weights that he puts up there. Uh, I did see. So I, I love everything you're saying, and and I, you know, we, we've talked about this. I've talked about it. There was the one thing on Talk Sport where you were talking about MMA versus boxing. That's the that's the one that I disagreed with you on, and and a lot of people who usually have your back disagree with you. On. Do you understand why people disagree? Basically, your sentiment was these cards are not interesting. The business model is better in MMA, yada yada yada. And a lot of people are like, man, if Tom Aspinall was who he was in boxing, you wouldn't have the frustrations that you were having at the time. Do you understand that? Does that make sense? Yeah. And you know what, mate. Sometimes you just say the wrong thing, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just say the wrong thing. Simple as that. Yeah. I mean, in everyday life, people are saying the wrong thing all the time. And there's two, there's two people listening. When when I say the wrong thing, there's 200,000 people listening. Yes. So, uh, yeah, it might have been a bit. I mean, I stand by the fact that I don't like watching mismatches. Fair. Let me just say, I don't, I don't like watching mismatches. I think it's dangerous. I don't like it. It's not, it's not exciting for me to watch. Um, but as far as the way that the boxers are getting treated, I, I mean, I wasn't speaking as a boxer, though. I was speaking as a fan yes. who watches boxing. Now, if I was speaking as a prize fighter, as a boxer, they've definitely got it fucking pretty good. Yes. Definitely. Especially in the heavyweight division right now. They're getting paid. Oh, they're balling out. They're yes. balling out. Like, fair play, man. Like, Eddie Hearn, these Saudi guys, like, <laughs> fair play. Fair play, man. Like, get all the money that you can. Get all the glory that you can. And then go do something else. I, I love it. I absolutely love that. Like, when fighters are getting paid, big money. Like, that's amazing. Francis Ngannou, look what he's doing, man. Look what he's doing. Like... What a guy. What a guy. Is there any part of you when you see those paydays and you're like, man, because you, you were going down the boxing path for a minute, say like, ah, I wish I stuck with this? No, I trust the path that I'm on. I trust the path that I'm on. And even though it might have been a bit rocky now, it might be a bit, you know, things aren't going in a straight, in a straight line, things, you know, just nah. going all over the place. I trust it's going to work out good. And uh, I'm excited about it, man. It's very exciting times for me, for my division, for for every for MMA. Like I love this sport, and it is what I am. Gosh, I am. I love it. I love the enthusiasm. You're like you're radiating off the screen. The smile, good. the energy. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great, man. Like everything's really, really good. Why did you post that picture of the flights to Las Vegas for three hundred? What was that all about? You got everyone crazy. Oh, a bit of online flirting, that's all. <laughs> bit of on- but I, I think I might, I might actually go and watch. To be fair, oh, uh, if I'm not right. hanging on there, I, I'm going to go and watch. But yeah, I thought Alex would be interested. But you know, you know what? But he's, a, he's in a different division than me. I understand completely. Like, good luck to him moving forward. You can't pick on the smaller guy. I ain't picking on those smaller guys. Yeah, yeah. No, I ain't picking on anybody. No. I ain't picking on anybody. That's all. I ain't picking on anybody. I mean, a lot of people they like to get offended when I'm like. 
I want to fight John Jones. Why are you offended, bro? Why are you offended? Because I'm trying to fight the best guy. People who are saying the, the best. Oh, Tom doesn't deserve to step in there with John Jones. Well, fucking show me I don't deserve it then. Show me, John. Show me, mate. If, if I'm not on your level, please show me. Did you see his interview last week where he was kind of giving you some advice? Like, don't let me hold you back. Go out there, do your thing, live your life, make money for your family. Did you see this? Yeah, and I agree. I, I absolutely agree. I've shown nothing, nothing but respect for John Jones. I respect him more than a lot of people, put it that way, more than a lot of people. I respect everything that John Jones has done in this sport. Like, it's incredible. And I appreciate the advice. I won't let you hold me back. As I said, it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing. Like, this is my journey. This is my path. There's ups and downs to it. This is heavyweight MMA. Anything can happen anytime. You know, I could I could get knocked out in my next 10 fights. Who knows? This is why the sport's so fun. This is amazing. Like, let's do it. Let's have fun for everybody. All the fans, all the fighters involved. Everybody, like, what a sport. What a time to be involved with it. I'm so lucky and blessed to be involved with it. Like, this is good stuff. And, and what I said before you came on was taking a page out of Connor and Izzy, two of the biggest stars in UFC history, when they won the interim belt, they were just like, nah, this is the real one. I'm the man. And, you know, anyone who wants to say otherwise, you can you can F off. I feel like you have just as much of a case as they did because of the fact that you have seven wins in the UFC's heavyweight division. And he has one. We're not talking lifetime achievement. We're not talking about what you did in 2013, 14, 15. He's one of the greatest ever. There's no denying that. But right now, who's the baddest man on the planet? in the UFC, which is usually the heavyweight champion, that's you. I don't care. Like, how, Pavlovich gone is the same win. It's the same win, right? In terms of, like, level of opposition, it's the same win, in my opinion. What has he done at heavyweight that you haven't done? Hey, listen. The king defends the throne. Simple as that. That's what kings do. The kings defend the throne. And... Exactly. Mate, you said everything. You said everything. I ain't saying nothing. Yeah. I ain't saying nothing. Can I be your mouthpiece? You Can I be your like pro you wrestling manager? I'm here with my guy, the number one heavyweight in the world, Tommy Aspinall. And if anyone says otherwise, you can shove it, daddy-o. Something like that. I just did that on the spot, so I wasn't really ready. It, was, it weren't bad. Yeah. It weren't bad, mate. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, by the way, AJ or, or uh, Francis? Oh, do you know what? If you would have asked me that question like two years ago, I would have been like, what a shit question. Like, that is the worst <laughs> question anyone's ever asked me. That is a pointless question. Because I'll be honest with you, I thought Francis Ngannou had no chance in boxing, especially against Tyson Fury. Because I know Tyson personally. I've right. trained a right. lot with Tyson. I know the level that Tyson's on. And he debatably debatably won the fight. It could have gone either way. Like, I don't know boxing scoring. I don't know it at all. I don't know how they score boxing over 12 rounds or 10 rounds, whatever it was. I don't know how that works. But the fight was pretty damn close. And Francis Ngannou can seriously box. And he can seriously fight. Like, I thought he was just just a specimen. I, that's what I thought he was. I thought he was just knocking people out just because he's big and wild and, and he's going to have no chance against a proper boxer like... Um, uh, Tyson Fury, but mate, he has a genuine chance against AJ. Now, AJ in his last fight against Otto Wallin looked tremendous. Mm -hmm. He looked great. And I know he's been working with a new coach, Ben Davison. Yeah. I don't know Ben. I don't know Ben personally, so this is no um I'm not bigging him up because he's my friend or anything. I've never met Ben. I don't know him, but he looked great, man. And fair play to, to AJ, Ben, and the team because he looks a lot better than he, he did do in his previous fight. So, mate, honestly, 50-50 fight could go either way. Love it. Yeah, I agree with you. I have no idea what to expect. You're nervous about Volk, though. I am. I am. Why? I think Ilya's, because uh... I, th I think Ilya Tupori is, like, seriously, seriously good, man. And I'm not saying, obviously, Volk is seriously good. And... Speaking strictly as a fan, again, don't know either guy personally, really, um, but I'm a massive Volk fan. I like who he is. I like what he represents. I like the fact that he fights anybody. He's tough as hell. He's skilled everywhere. Like, I'm just a big, big fan of Alexander Volkanovsky, but I think this is a tough fight for him, mate. But 
I think uh, Volk can definitely win, but I'm just a little bit nervous. Would you say the same if Volk wasn't coming off a knockout loss? Is, is the previous result affecting how you are feeling going into this? I mean, it wasn't ideal circumstances for him, was it? Like, mm. I, as someone who's took the fight on short notice, I know it's, it's tough. It's tough. It's like there's a lot of doubt there that wouldn't be there if you would have had a full training camp. And that's just speaking from my perspective. And I don't have to cut weight and do all the rest of it like everyone else does. Um, but to answer your question, it was a pretty brutal knockout. And we're now standing like, what is it, three months later or something like that? Like, surely that's got to play on your mind. And not just play on your mind, on your mental aspect. Surely that's got to affect your brain a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. But... Um, I'm just a little bit nervous, man, that's all. I, and I, I wish Volk all the best. If it was up to you, Tom, what month do you return? Next week, I'd return. Wow. <laughs> You're that ready to go? The back's okay? Everything's all right? Yeah, everything's good, man. Everything's good. Everything's healthy. We're all good. Um, whenever. We're like, summer's fine. 300's fine. Whatever, man. Whatever. Look like, at this. You, you're you're so uh, laissez-faire. You're like, uh, you know, que sera, sera. You know that term? Yeah, of course I do. But, you know, I, I noticed that, especially moving in the upper circles, so to speak, in yeah. terms of fighters, these guys don't like fighting that much, you know, a lot of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to fight like once a year. Like, right. I, I, lo I love this shit. I love it. I live for this, um, and yeah, I'll, I'll fight whenever, mate. I don't need to be convinced until I'm going to fight with somebody. No way. You think there's a lot of people squatting on their spot? They get to the top. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying oh, that. I, I know that. things. I know things move a lot slower when you're a champion. You know, you got you got to take the business side into it. You know, I, I know that I've got a lot of kind of engagements going on outside of the gym now that I didn't really have as much before. Sponsor meetings, interviews. All, all this shit that comes with uh, being a, a top level, top level athlete, um, and I know that it's not just as easy as you're just ready all year round. But I stay dedicated to my craft. I stay dedicated to getting better. And as I keep saying, it might sound a little weird, but I feel like I'm the king, and I got to be ready to defend my throne at any time. And by the way, can I just say before I let you go, the social media is on point. Who's doing your social media? The the videos, the music. Me, that's me. All, yeah, I'm doing right. it. You're editing the stuff. I hope not. No, 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 no. Sorry. Oh, you're talking about the YouTube channel. The YouTube, the Instagram, everything is really nice. You're putting together. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I've got uh, yeah, I've got, got a couple of guys on it. Yeah, but um, it's going well. The, we're like keeping the like whole it. circle of, of guys and yeah, keep keeping the circle tight and everyone in there's great man everything in the gym outside the gym is just going so so good man i'm so happy with everything and because of the success that you and your dad had do you feel like there or have had and and are having are a lot of people reaching out to you to come and want to train with you now new people popping up and is that a difficult thing to navigate because you don't want too many people right at the gym yeah well my dad my, that's my dad's job uh, my dad my dad okay. does all that kind of stuff um, that's nothing to do with me. I just show up for training. Um, yeah, we've got we've got some great guys coming through. We we've got so many. Like I think our team's really rare. It's like we only have heavyweights, really heavies, and a couple of light heavies. Um, and the guys are like really high level too. We're not talking about like your local doorman or whatever, your local bouncer and local tough guy. Like these are really skilled guys. We've got a couple of PFL guys in there, a couple of brave guys. Uh, KSW guys, Bellator guys, UFC guys, like these are guys at the top level. So um, it's a, it's just amazing. But as far as that kind of stuff, like that's not really, I, I just focus on my sure, own training. Sure, sure. That's my dad. Yes. And uh, next week, I do believe uh, your boy Phil DeFries uh, in a grappling match with Josh Barnett. Yes. For KSW. Correct. So that that's is correct. Uh, very exciting stuff. Mick Parkin in the UFC as well. All's good. Over at Team Aspinall, love to hear it, Tom. Uh, great spirits that you're in. It's great to see. And it's nice to see you puff your chest out and say, yeah, I'm the man. You come to me. You need to defend your title against John Jones. He should be asking to fight you, not vice versa. You understand me? That's the way this should go. You're the money fight, Tom. That's what you need to believe and say and put out there. I don't know if I'm the money fight, no, but you I'm, are, you I'm are. a fucking tough. I'll tell you something, and th these guys know it. I'm a tough fight for anybody. 
Tough I'm, fight. I'm danger. You're I'm a, a nightmare. Da- I'm a danger fight for anybody. You're a nightmare. Not a tough absolute fight. Absolute nightmare. I'm an absolute nightmare. So money, hype, all that other shit aside, like I'm the guy. I'm the guy who's taking everybody out. And there's, let me tell you, mate, for a champion... There's not a long queue of people sticking their hand up to get in a cage with me for 25 minutes. Mm. You're the star boy. I'm the star boy. That's right. <laughs> Great stuff, Tom. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank enjoy. you, brother. Well done. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Thank you. There he is. The great Tom Aspinall. I mean, how good is that? Star boy Tom. Mm. What is going on here? Let me move that cell phone. Yeah. Um... Starboy Tom, what a legend. Uh, great stuff, great spirits that he's in, right? Great spirits, he's feeling good about life, feeling good about everything. For some reason, my um, I've, I've, I've caught in mouth. You know that, Frank? You ever get that, the cotton mouth? I'm unfamiliar with that. What are you, what are you describing? It's like... It's it's like the you know, you know you know when you have cotton mouth. You never like how do you describe it? Like, like if you, I put cotton in my mouth. It's just like, like there's, there's, there's not a lot of moisture. About? There's not a lot of moisture. Oh, like dry mouth. Dry mouth. Yeah, oh, you, I got you, it, you yeah. never heard of the term cotton mouth? Uh, no, never. I'm just so excited to talk to Tom, and he's all fired up. He's getting me all hot inside. Do you need some water? Uh, yeah, I just I just took a swig. There we go. Um, I'm gonna take another swig. But that was good stuff. What spirits? He got me all excited. He got me all fired up. That Curtis Blades fight. When is that Curtis Blades fight? Hard to keep track of all of this. Maybe GC knows. When is that Curtis Blades fight? 299, I believe. Oh, yeah, March 9th. Curtis Jilton. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, no I was just going to say, does he need me to text? But it sounds like uh, he's... Uh, he's oh, you hear that? You hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it all. Um, yeah, I like that story. I mean, him versus Almeida would be some kind of fight, right? Oh, man. Sheesh. That would be insanity. But, I mean, honestly, I don't. I, I would like to see him fight Surreal Gan. I ain't mad at that. Almeida, Blades, gone. Why not? Any of them. Any of them. I want to see Tom Aspinall fight. I just want to see him fight. He's the man. And when John's ready to come back, he gets the Stipe fight out of the way, and then let's get a, a unification or, or a title defense for Tom on the books. I love it. I love everything about what he just said, and uh, I'm, great to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to see that he's in those great spirits. I'm very happy to see that. All right, let's move along. Let's uh, turn our attention back to UFC 298. Uh, one of the intriguing fights on this card involves our next guest. She is returning to action, taking a fight on relatively short notice against the always tough, the always game Amanda Lemos. She's Mackenzie Dern. She is kind enough to join us right now. There she is. Hello, Mackenzie. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Mm-hmm. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us. And can I just say, Mackenzie, uh, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, I saw a photo of you on your Instagram. You have never looked bigger you're so you're like the 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 shoulders the traps this is a different look for you right you you look completely different than the last time we saw you am i accurate uh yeah i mean for sure i'm i tried i mean like you said it was four weeks so i mean technique wise i didn't have like so much time to like try and you know come up and get this way better mckenzie than before you know so the first thing I said I got to do is like, you know, it was like Christmas, New Year, let's go. Let's see. We got four weeks. Just try and get, you know, I, I don't want to like die out there because of cardio. You know what I mean? So I've been really trying to get, you know, stronger and just working my physique. But I definitely posted pictures like right after training too. <laughs> oh, okay. And that's always the best time. But like compared to the McKenzie who we saw many years ago who came into the world of MMA from BJJ, like the the difference is dramatic, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, totally. For sure. Definitely. I'm... I'm heavier, which is, you know, I, you know, I would, I would fight there and be like maybe 120, 121. Now I'm, you know, walking around like 130 and I'm fighting at 130, you know, and I'm, you know, I fight at 115. So that was kind of a goal of mine was to be able to get my weight bigger and being leaner at 130, you know. So that was really a goal I've been working on for the past, like, you know, year, two years. And um, I was able to really kind of like just focus on that on this fight. So, as you said, uh, take this fight on short notice, like one month or so. You replaced Tatiana Suarez. Um, considering the last fight and you want to have your best foot forward, how did you feel when you were presented with this opportunity? Did you feel comfortable taking it on short notice? Because you want to get the win, you want to look good, but uh, you obviously want a full or at least close to a full training camp to do that, right? 
Yeah, I mean, I'd always wanted to be like, you know, I wanted to be the type of athlete that UFC could call and be like, hey, you know, we got a short nose fight and I was already training, you know, consistent, you know, and that that wasn't the case on this moment, you know, because I had just fought in Madison Square Garden, Square Garden, you know, TK Doe. So, um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't the best circumstances that I wanted for me. And at the same time, I'm like, man, but this is such a great opportunity. I mean, how how often do you get the opportunity in like, a month, two months to get a call and be able to fight, you know, someone that's ahead of you in the ranking number. I think she's three or four. She just fought for the belt. Um, she, you know, here in California. So no traveling, nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of like, I was a little bit like, Oh man, you know, I know Amanda, she hit hard. She has knockout power and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, it's at the same time. It's such a great opportunity for me to kind of correct the mistakes that I made in my last fight. It's not like, you know, a grappler, you know, it's right. kind of a little bit the same style. I think Jessica is a little bit pushing forward more, but, um, and Amanda's kind of counterattack and stuff like that. But from what I saw with her fight with Jungwei Lee, I watched that live in Boston. So it was good. And I saw that there are some mistakes on the ground and there are openings on the ground. So, um, I was like, okay, that, that, that's a good fight for me. And it's kind of like lose, lose situation. I mean, win, win situation for me, you know? So, um, if I win, Hey, I'm right there. You know, I just fought, uh, Amanda Lemus who fought for the belt. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't even really want to think about losing actually. <laughs> good, good. That's the right approach. But could I ask you, though, um, when you talk about the last fight and the mistakes that you made in the last fight, could you tell us what you feel like were the mistakes that you made in that fight? Yeah, I mean, I tried to do a strategy where, I mean, I knew that uh, Jessica, she she is experienced. She's coming off three losses. I knew that if she was anything like me, she would, you know, want to, you know, correct her mistakes. So I knew that there was a big chance that she was going to come out a little bit different than normal. Um, and when I say different, I mean like a little bit calmer. I think a lot of people, when they see Jessica, they know that she tends to come forward. You know, she starts out, but she, she's a forward fighter, you know, and the whole time of the fight, you know, her corner's like, calm, calm, this is the fight we want. Yeah, calm, you know, like kind of, you know, she got taken down, submitted by Tatiana, um, knocked out by um, Jan, and Aaron, Aaron Blomfield had submitted her too, you know, so I was like, man, we we're hoping she would come forward and I could get into a takedown kind of easily. We were, my goal is to kind of time that takedown. Um, but yeah, I mean, she stayed calm and I was kind of trying to do that whole style, you know, like hit out, hit out, get her to come forward and take her in and then take her down on the, on when she came in, but she was calm. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I got hit, I got not, I got clipped and just kind of try to cover. I try to lay down, you know, and see if she'd come in ground and pound and see if maybe she'd come into my world a little bit. But I was like, nope, stand back up. And I was like, oh gosh, uh-huh. you know, and um, definitely, I mean, I try to, I'm trying to evolve, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pressure fighter, you know, I'm forward. I need to go forward, you know, and I need to keep them on their back feet. And that's, I mean, it's not really a, it's not a secret, you know? <laughs> so it's like, that. I need to kind of just stay with that um, game. And, and I mean, I feel good with my striking and stuff like that, but um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I need to be waiting too much, you know, and see what they give me. I need to kind of just stay with my style. That's like pushing my game. You know, I don't really care how I look, you know, what the, winning or losing people are going to talk about me either way. You know what I mean? They're going to say it looks bad. They're going to say whatever, you know? So, uh, I just need to go out there and win and put the pressure in. And, you know, I mean, I can take hits, but it's way better to take hits going forward than it is to take hits coming back, you know, on the right. outside. So learning experience, getting in there and, I wish it wasn't at Madison Square Garden, you know, but <laughs> it'll be good. I'm fighting at Anaheim Honda Center. I went there for Disney on Ice and uh-huh. the Anaheim Stockton game. So I was in there twice. Like, man, I can't believe I'm going to be fighting here in a couple of weeks. So it was really cool. How did you feel in the immediate aftermath of MSG? Like, how, how did you handle the loss? Man, it was hard. I mean, it was hard. I think the biggest is just because it's like, I had such a great performance with Angela Hill, you know, and my cramp was so crazy, you know, and then um, to go to Madison Square Garden and then to have like kind of that type of performance. I was like, it was, I was down on myself and then, I mean, I'm getting better with the fans and everything like that. And just how, you know, the critics and, oh, you know, she like, I mean, even like the commentating, you know, like, oh, she looked like a high schooler, like just brawling out there, you know, and it's like the type of stuff that they say, you're like, oh gosh, man, mm-hmm. you know, I look that bad, you know, but um, that was, I think, just the kind of, I mean, as soon as I got home, I watched the fight and I'm like crying, watch this. I'm like, man, this is so embarrassing. Like, man, how am I going through this in front of like millions of people, you know? And it's just like, you know, that's what we're here for. You know, that's what I do. I'm a fighter, you know, and that's my job, you know, and it's the the goods and the bad and we can have ups and downs and just kind of keep going and get back in there. And 
Um, so it was definitely hard for me to feel like, man, how did I go from so good to so like such not as good as, as a, you know, a performance? But um, yeah, I mean, things are getting way, way clean around me, you know, my life. You know, um, all my coaches, everything's getting way better. So um, the people that are part of my team and four weeks was actually really good because you don't have enough time to, you know, overthink things. You know, you don't have enough time to be like, man, this is sorry. It's just like, you know, Tiki, my manager, he said like, hey, four weeks, let's go. Uh, my wrestling coach, Paul, Her Her Paul Herrera, he's like, OK, we're going to do this, this, and this. And I'm not even like, OK, just trust the process, you know, and I'm kind of an overthinker. You know, I, I try to be like perfectionist at everything and. So four weeks is kind of like really good to kind of go through a camp like this where I don't need to think about too many things. I'm going out there literally like to kick butt and do my best and try and win, like kind of kill or be killed right now. <laughs> and, and so how would you describe your confidence? It's Monday, fight week. How do you feel about yourself and your game going into this fight? Oh, man. I mean, I did. I literally did every single thing I could do in four weeks. You know, like I, I'm so confident that. I'm confident that I'm going to do the best I can do, you know, and I'm confident that I have everything I can to win, you know, if like I need to go crazy out there, I will, you know, <laughs> and, you know, it's just that that's kind of what it's, what it's all, you know, I feel like Amanda, she was already kind of planned to fight for this fight, you know, she was going to fight Tatiana Suarez, so I know that she's probably, you know, training her takedown defense, um, but man, if you, anyone, if they're coming out to you to try and like, you know, Kill you basically it's gonna be hard you know so i know that probably she has a lot more pressure than i do going out this and it's actually kind of like refreshing to be on that i think we're the last fight on the prelims so it's kind of like you know for me it's good to kind of kind of get back and kind of take off this pressure on me and be like oh, i need to do this you know this and that and all these things you know i feel like really confident that i'm gonna go out there and be able to you know represent kind of california right now <laughs> yes uh and and that like you could just drive there right it's pretty darn close to where you live yeah so that yeah, has yeah. to be, uh, is your daughter going to go? Ah, uh, no, no. She's at her dad's weekend. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah. and, and I, I, but I told her I'm going to be like fighting at Disneyland, you know, I'm like, uh, Oh yeah, I'm also fighting, you know, Mickey's backyard yeah. and everything like that. She thinks it's like so cool. <laughs> uh, I, I asked you this cause you just referenced it and obviously, uh, you've talked about this in the past, but it, it does seem just yeah, your social media and whatnot. You seem to be like the personal life is in a good spot. And do you feel like that is helping the way you're thinking of your career and like just that you don't have to worry about other stuff that you've been through a lot in so many words, right? Yeah. Do you feel yeah. like it's, it's less choppy waters for you and that is putting you in a better spot in the gym? Totally. A hundred percent. Like we, whew, pages turn. I'm so happy about that. I'm like, yes, finally, you know, now I can just, you know, like Mackenzie, you know, like my, my, my image, you know, how us fighters, like, of course, you know, we're with the UFC and everything like that. But eventually, you know, we, we have our life after fighting, you know what I mean? So it's like, now I can really just kind of, I think even just like media and stuff like that, it's like, like I said, like, man, I posted a picture like right after training, you know, so I'm kind of like pumped, you know, I just worked out. But it's like now I have people that are like kind of filming me, you know, taking, following me around, taking pictures, so I'm getting um, content that I can post and people can be more, you know, kind of like back how I was in the beginning of my my career and having people more involved in my life again. And, you know, you don't want people involved in the in the in that the the bad stuff, you know, right. you want them involved on the real process. So um I'm really happy to be kind of on this page turn. And now I think people are seeing seeing that too. And they're kind of like, okay, McKenzie's back, you know, and it, it's really cool to kind of feel like um I can just focus on training and winning or losing, whatever comes, you know, it's like, yeah, I each time I lose, each time I accept the process more and just kind of like, yeah, we need to get better. But that's part of the process. You know, they have people who like, you know, wins and losses. Maybe they never get the belt, but it's like they're such amazing fighters. And um, I mean, obviously, the goal is to get the belt. That's why I think fighting Amanda Lemus, I think that it puts me at a really good position, especially coming off a loss, you know, and I can still kind of stay in there. But you start to see like even on the strawweight divisions, there's like so many rematches and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, I'll have my turn again, you know, and I'll be able to fight whoever Marina Rodriguez or, you know, even Jessica again or young Shaunan or we'll see, you know, but um, Amanda Lemus is definitely a big challenge for me. It's a big um, step, but I'm excited for it. Your, your last six fights, it was, you know, one loss, one loss, one loss. So if, if the trend continues, this would be a win. Uh, that's good news. Yeah. But w why do you think, you can't seem to get on a streak like that. Why is it? And I know that I know this is very frustrating for you. Obviously you probably want to win all six of those in a row, but uh, wh why do you think that has happened where it's like, you're really highs, lows, highs, lows, highs, lows. 
Um, I think just because I've been going through so much, you know, and it's it's hard, you know. I think being a mom and just going through so much um, stress in life, you know, the personal life, it's like, you know, you need to like pay your bills and do everything like that. And I mean, I know all the fighters, we all have problems and we all go through different stuff. But um, you just, I mean, with coaches and switching team and, you know, Sometimes I think we're going to fight through it because the internet connection was so good. It was so perfect. I was even noting that. Why does it feel like every time I note it mentally, something happens? Uh, we'll reconnect with her. That that might be the old school phone. Gets too hot, although I don't think it's that hot over there, and she was indoors. Maybe we could have died. Could have died. So sudden. Yeah. Yeah, because it was pretty crystal clear, was it not? I mean, it was looking great. Yeah, it was looking great. And I mean, she, yeah, it's it's still like frozen exactly where. Oh, is it? She was at, yeah. Let's see here. Let's see what we got. No, nothing. Um, phone could be dead, yes. What's the uh, what's the line in that one, GC? Uh, Amanda Lemo is your favorite. Oh, but it's close. Plus 110, minus 130. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, not by much. Not by much. Amanda, Amanda took a, you know, that was a tough one in her last, in her yeah, last both, fight. Both women coming off off of tough, tough, tough last performances. Time Obviously, Mackenzie's was in November. Amanda's was in August. Um, so it's been a while. And she's taking this fight on short notice. But I feel like Mackenzie always has, like I said, good, down, good, down, good, down. Um, I feel like this is a very winnable fight for her. Very winnable fight. I think it's going to be a fun one. She's back. Oh, she, is she? Okay. And then a win here, you're right back in the mix, as she said. Oh, you're back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I forget. Uh, oh, you were talking about the ups and downs. And so there's a lot going on. Oh, yeah. Every fighter goes through this, and it's just kind of life getting in the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think just experience of being in there, you know, it's like uh, I think every fighter is different. Um, with how they take things, I'm definitely more like emotional, I guess, you know, I, you know, I feel everything. So for me, it's like, um, I don't know, like I can't, it, for me, I can't like to have, a, have something going on in my house and get to the gym and then completely forget about right. what's going on at home. You know, for me, I bring it in with me to where I am, you know? So even in the fights, you know, it's like with Jessica, um, I felt like I was even doing good and then just kind of like staying with the strategy and stuff like that. And then once I land like a couple shots and I feel her kind of like, you know, I lay in there and then also I'm like, okay, let me do five, four, six, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, and keep punching when maybe I should just took a takedown then, you know, and it's just that emotion when you get excited or the goods and the bads, you know? So, um, I think it's just experience and being with, you know, fighting against the top fighters. You know, my last few fights have been against top fighters. Um, I mean, even Angela Hill, she's been in there since like what the, the ultimate fighting house, the tough, the ultimate right. fighter house. So she's basically fought almost every single girl in the division, basically, you know, and it's like there's experience behind that, you know, knowing how to win or steal around, knowing how to, you know, um, you know, uh, get get the get the opponent to bite bite off of things you know fainting and all that stuff you know so it's just stuff that i'm, I'm it's a learning process for me and, and i'm i'm doing that in, in like you know when it's worth you know titles and worth you know victories and wins and all that stuff it's not just in the gym you know right um by the way do you think yan can beat zhang wei li um i don't think so <laughs> I don't think so. I think Jenna has um, is a little bit more well rounded. Okay, um, and so that means she'll retain. Yeah. They're fighting at UFC 300 the following month. There's talk of the UFC going back to Brazil. Is that something you'd like to be? Is that a card you'd like to be on, or would that be too close to this one? It would be three months later. No, for sure, for sure. I would love to be on that card. <laughs> Uh, Definitely. My it. last one I was there, I didn't make weight. I missed weight. You oh know? my so gosh! I like to, you know, recover. Yeah. Yes. I like to recover that, and I mean, I kind of had like a knockdown, and then I submitted. So you know, I think I have a good um, experience there. Just I would like to, I would like to kind of take that off my my recover that and yeah. come in strong and like you know professional. <laughs> Is that that used to be? It's crazy. That used to be like such a thing whenever you would fight. Now we don't talk about it anymore. Is that ever obviously? Cutting weight is tough, but is it ever really a concern for you? And 
Do you think it will be the same type of situation this time, despite the short notice? No, no, no. It's way good now. Now it's like, you know, it's just down to like that, you know, when you're, oh man, should I have like this French fry right now or not? <laughs> maybe at the week, <laughs> I'll cry like maybe five more minutes, you know, or something like that. It's just a little bit extra suffering, but it's nothing like, you know, that regular stuff, you know, anyone, if you stay in a sauna for a while, you're kind of like, oh, this sucks. Right. But nothing like, gonna miss my thing, Chloe. Man, that one <laughs> French fry affects it that badly? Then we're in trouble over here. One French I mean, fry, golly! I mean, Five I, minutes of one French fry, sheesh. I mean, it's about like ten. You know? Oh my <laughs> gosh, yes. But uh, imagine if I mean, yes, I know, I know, I know the pain. Actually, I don't know the pain. I don't have to go through that. But uh, I understand okay. what you were talking about. Okay, so we're we're looking forward to a big performance on Saturday. It's a home game for you. You don't have to get on a plane. You don't have to go far. Um, you're going to be comfortable. This is big. I feel I feel like the trend is going to continue, and then it's going to be a winning streak after this. Not just, you know, yes. this will yes, be the beginning of a run here. Go back home to Brazil in For May. Sure. Good vibes. Everything back in order in the personal. You're, you're, this, I feel like this is going to be big, right? You feel like a big year for you, yes. 2024? Yes. Totally, totally. This time? Totally. Like, I'm like, Whoo. This time next year, where are you? Oh, this time next year, if I'm not with the belt, I'm like almost title, title going for the belt for sure. You feel that? Definitely. You feel like you could be a champion yeah. this year? Yeah, end of the year. Uh huh. Wow. Okay. I love it. Yeah. All right. Well, the journey begins yeah. on Saturday. Uh, always a pleasure, yeah. Mackenzie. Thank you very much for the time. Good luck to you and looking forward to your return on Saturday. Thank you, Ariel. Always good talking to you. Yes, same here. There she is, the great Mackenzie Dern, returning to action on Saturday at UFC 298. Um, and uh, you know, if you look at the, if you look at the strawweight division, she's seven, Lemos three, Andrade four. She's fighting at UFC 300 against Marina Rodriguez, who is six. Like she's right there. She's right in the uh, the the race. Yan fighting Zhang. She's won. Then, of course, there's the big question, Tatiana Suarez. Did you guys see the Tatiana Suarez uh, documentary? No, I haven't been able to watch it yet. Do you get Max? I do. Do you get them all? Uh, no. I actually don't have Netflix right now. That's crazy to me. How is that possible? Because, uh, you know, you can only choose so many. What do you have? You have you know, Max? Gotta, you, have, you have Paramount gotta, Plus? Yeah, I got to have Paramount Plus for uh, Champions, Champions League. League. Peacock gotta, for Premier gotta League. Got to have Peacock for Premier League. Got to have ESPN Plus for uh So that's for four UFC. now. You have Hulu? Uh, I got Hulu. Hulu's the one that could probably go, no? I really enjoy the stuff on Hulu. I watch Welcome to Wrexham. Ah, oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, right. Know, I love Modern Family. I kind of want to get Netflix so I can watch Seinfeld, though. Never done, like, a full run-through of Seinfeld. Never done it? No, never What percentage it. of Seinfeld do you think you've seen? Like, more than 50%? No, no, no. Wow. Probably not even more than 20%. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, please do me a favor. I'll see it randomly on <clears throat> Comedy Central, TBS, stuff like that. No, nah, you got to do so, me a favor. Get into it. It's fantastic. I mean, I enjoy the episodes when I see them. I just watched the one where the he gets the cabinet installed. Yeah, my, my favorite everything. show of all time. Wow. Number one. Um, I mean, should I watch the whole thing and then go to the restaurant here in New York? It's, I thought it was Wonder Years. Wonder Years is my, my favorite drama, and uh, Seinfeld is my favorite comedy. Anyway, my guys. favorite movie was Wizard of Oz. Uh, no, Billy <laughs> Madison. Here. Um, but yes, the restaurant, I, I've never gone to the restaurant, but I heard it's just the outside, the inside looks nothing like it. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a set. Yeah, it's fair, right, but still. Right. Well, they could have recreated Cool picture, it. you know. It is a cool picture, especially it says restaurant at the top there. Anyway, let's move along now. Uh, not this weekend. Next weekend, the UFC is finally back in Mexico City, and pretty solid card. About time that they go back. Main event, Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Royval. And I think you can make a very strong case that the co-main should really be the main, but who really cares? It doesn't matter. It's a massive fight. It's Yair Rodriguez against Brian Ortega. El Pantera, kind enough to join us right now. There he is. Hello, Yair. How are you? Good, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great to talk to you. You're not driving right now, right? I'm, I'm just worried uh, when people are driving and talking. Okay, you okay. go. Okay, this guy's driving. Hey. <laughs> Hey, hey, but who? I don't know who that is, but he can't text and drive. We've got a future champ on our hands here. Get that phone out of your hand. What's going on over here? Yeah, we're like right here, like in the red light right now. So we're okay. okay. Just tell him to keep his eyes on the road. All right. I don't want any problems. <laughs> I'm How are you, Yair? Everything good? 
everything good, brother. Everything good. Wait some point. Uh, everything is on point. I'm I feel happy that this fight is all to happen. This is a huge fight. It's great for you to get back to uh, to Mexico to fight in Mexico. I, I I'm not trying to be a stickler, but why aren't you the main event? I feel like you should be the main event. Do you agree with me? I don't like. I don't really care about that. You know. Um, I like the the fact that I'm fighting in Mexico City. Uh, it just kind of surprised me that uh, they they didn't give me the the main event and still give me five rounds. That's the only thing that I wasn't like. That I was like. I didn't. I didn't know what to think. But who cares? Whatever. Sure. I'm okay with whatever. Do you like that it's five rounds? I like that it's five rounds. You know, uh, it's Mexico City. Fighting here, even one round is super tough. But who cares? You know, I'm always prepare myself in high elevation. So in this, in this occasion, it won't be any any difference for me. And and did you like this idea when they talked to you about fighting Ortega again? Were you happy with this uh, with this idea that they proposed? I mean, I didn't really, I didn't really have much options, you know, so I was like, they offered Brian Ortega, and I said, yes, I'm okay with, with that. Okay, obviously, we remember what happened in uh, Long Island with you, with you two, so it kind of ended on a bit of a sour note, so here we can have maybe a, a decisive winner. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, many people didn't like, didn't like the, the result of the last fight, but uh, like, who cares, you know, we're fighting again, and uh, I guess... I guess now there, there will be no doubt. Right. Um, and so uh, could I ask, uh, the last time we saw you obviously was in July. Was it your decision to to take a little bit of time off here before returning, or would you have preferred to come back sooner? No, it's okay for me like to take, to take time off, you know, uh, and uh, just enjoy myself, uh, enjoy my family, friends, and just let my body heal. You know, I like, I like to do that, and uh, here we are once again so yeah i'm not i'm not in a rush you know for, for any means and uh, i think i've been doing the right steps in my career and uh, now we're facing brian ortega soon so i think we're we're in a good spot obviously uh, we haven't talked since you know uh since you you last fought before your last fight and so how do you feel about what happened in july what what lessons did you learn from that experience against alex Uh, probably just listen to my corner a little more. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't really listening to my corner and, um, uh, I did everything. I did everything. Okay. You know, before the fight, during the fight, I, I started doing some adjustments and uh, I like to start picking it up, uh, slowly. And I think I was doing a pretty good job until, you know, I got, I got that like, uh, good, good punch. And, uh, I think. Uh, he hit me with like with the head once in the, in the third round, and I didn't I didn't really took like much time to come back and fight. You know, my corner was like, okay, take some time. Just like you're not in a rush, and I didn't listen. I just went back, and after that, like I got like the the right hand, and I was like almost out. You know, I couldn't like really defend myself that well. But I mean, it is what it is. It is the name of the sport, and. Uh, I mean, whatever. <laughs> and you say you hit, you mean like a headbutt? Yeah. Oh, wow. That was like a that was pretty good one. And uh, I just trying to come back like uh, faster. I, I didn't want the fight to like, uh, like cool down, you know? And I felt like, okay, I can do this. And then I, I got like the punch right after that. And I was like, okay, I, I felt it. Yeah. And I felt it was a really good punch too. And, uh, you know, I, after that punch, I was like almost out, so I couldn't really do much. How how was the aftermath for you? Because uh, this was a, a dream of yours to be champion, to be undisputed champion. How did you deal with the the result in the aftermath, the immediate aftermath? Um, I was sad. I didn't really wanna wanna watch go back and watch the fight. I was like, okay, who cares? Like, I already lost the fight, so I'm not gonna, you know, whatever, whatever the case is. And uh, I went back and watched the fight. I was like, okay, it wasn't that bad, you know. And uh, I think I can, I can get him in the next one. You know, I'm still on the, I'm still on like the contention. You know, I'm still on the, in the front of the division. And I think I want to have another opportunity to fight for a title again. Uh, were you surprised that he took the fight against Islam, the short notice fight? No, I wasn't surprised about that. 
you know, I was surprised about him uh, taking another fight after a KO, you know, so so soon, I mean, against Tuporia. So I just think he did like a little bit of a mistake that I should, I, I will have waited a little more longer. Okay. So d- does that mean you think he's going to lose on Saturday? No, I think, I don't think he's going to, he's going to lose. I think he's going to win. But I just think if in like all the possibilities, you know, the only reason that I, that I think Tuporia can win is because he, he won't be like a hundred percent, not, not him like uh, mentally. Mm. But maybe physically, like inside of his head, like who knows what happens, you know, whenever after you get like a, a KO. Sure. You never know. You can be like more sensitive or, or all that, you know, and uh, to put a hit's card. So. And confidence too. Maybe you're doubting yourself. You're maybe not as aggressive, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, there, there are several factors that it can affect. Uh, that's the only thing that I, uh, that I'm thinking that I can affect Volkanovski. But like, uh, He's really smart. He's really good. He's talented. I think he or is is better. It's a uh, way better fighter than uh, than Tuporia, and I think he. I think he will win. If all things are equal, do you see any type of uh, scenario where Tuporia is better than Alex, where he has an edge against Alex? If if there's no other factors, no. No. Can Can I ask what what is uh, what are your thoughts on Tuporia? I saw you left a comment on his. Uh, on his Instagram, there was something, or like regarding the fight when he got the fight. Uh, and so uh, I'm just curious, like how you feel about him, because uh, it seemed from the comment, maybe you're not a huge fan. I just don't fucking like the guy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. That's so fucking, like, he talks so much shit. And uh, I think it was like a, an easy way for him to go and fight for like the title, you know? Like, now I'm not only gonna say me, but like different fighters, like we have to go and fight like true warriors, true fucking lions. And this guy, you know, I I think it was like an easy an easier way for him to go to go and fight for the title. And uh, that's it, you know. Uh, I think the UFC is kind of making it easy for him. He's like a his mark. He he does a pretty good job on like marketing himself. But I think is one of the the huge, the biggest thing in this sport, like. If you know how to market yourself, you'll get the better deals, you'll get the better fights. It's not a secret. Everybody knows that. And I think he's, he's great on doing that. You know, I don't blame him for that. I just don't fucking like the guy. Why do you think, uh, you know, like Arnold Allen, yourself, Brian Ortega, you guys have had to go through some tough people. Even Arnold couldn't get a title shot. Why do you think that he's not, you know, he didn't fight you, he didn't fight uh, Arnold, he didn't fight Brian. Uh, he's coming off a win over Josh Emmett, which is an impressive win, but... You know, why, why do you think he didn't have to go through any of you? Why do you think the UFC is putting him in this spot? Because of the marketing, you know, it's just because he's marketable. Um, he talks shit, you know, and uh, that's it. It's basically that, you know, and uh, it's sad, but like people like him gets the better fights because of his mouth, not because of his fights. And I don't fucking like that. And regardless of the result of this fight, I'll, I'll fucking like to fuck him up, to be honest. Wow, okay. Uh, I Did you hear what he said about <laughs> you and Brian and, and uh, some of the other guys on my show last week? He said that none of you are going to get a title shot when he becomes champion, that you've all had your chance, and he's going to fight Conor McGregor next after he wins in Madrid in a stadium. Uh, fucking delusional. <laughs> he's, living, he, he's, not, he's not even fucking living in the same world as, as us. You know he's like, you know the fucking planet. I, I'm pretty sure Volkanovski is gonna is gonna do the uh, like the first the first job, and in fucking him up, and then he's gonna he's gonna have to fucking eat all his words, and then everybody's la- is gonna fucking be laughing at him. I I can assure you that. Did you see he uh, changed his bio on his social media to featherweight champion, and uh, he put his record 15 and 0. He's 14 and 0 now, so he gave himself the win. Have you seen all of that? Yeah, I kind of I kind of saw that, but like, I mean, what are we talking about? Like, like marketing, right now? Look, yeah, we're talking about. Sure, sure. Yes. H- have you ever met him? No. Okay. And no, I saw. I think I saw him in my last fight uh, in Vegas, but he was like just sitting there. Right, right, right. Uh, and and have you felt this way about him in a while, or is it just like the build up to this fight that you feel like he's? I never give a fuck about the guy until he started fucking talking shit about me. What do you say about you that that you heard I that you didn't like? I think, 
I didn't really put uh, so much attention on him, you know. But is it, this is the name of the sport, you know. You you are, you talk about somebody that's uh, better known than you in the sport, and then you start becoming more known, right? You know, that's what he's doing. Like, let's be honest about about this right now, because this is not a secret, you know. So he will talk shit about whomever he like. He's mentioning Canelo. He's mentioning McGregor. Why do why do you think he's doing that? Because he's marketing. Mm -hmm. He will never get to face somebody like McGregor. He will never get to face somebody like like Canelo. You know, of course not. Uh, compared to like obviously yourself, but Ortega, Arnold, like the t uh, Josh, um, I know he had that. You don't you don't rate him in that in that category in the top five? No. Oh, and you'll see, you'll see, like um, you'll see that. I won't, I won't have to do nothing. <laughs> I don't. I don't have to say nothing. Like he, like he's. I don't. I don't know how to say. It. Like his career will be over after this fight against Volkanovski. Wow. He's been talking so much shit in so many things and people is gonna fucking be laughing at him after this are you are you rooting for Alex because I could see a scenario you beat Brian he wins and it's you versus him for the belt I mean I'm I'm like neutral you know I'm neutral I don't like whomever wins wins whatever but I don't I don't really see Tuporia winning okay that's uh, my honest opinion uh, win or like let's say all goes well for you next week he he loses. Would you still like to fight? Is that your dream scenario? You get to fight him next, even though he'd be coming off a loss. Uh, no, if I if I win my fight against Brian Ortega, which I'm planning on doing, and Alexander Volkanovski wins, I would I would like to face Volkanovski. Okay, of course, right? Because why would I face him? Like he has nothing to offer. But in any way, I would like to face him at some point. I would like to fuck him up. Especially like the, the, if uh, something goes like uh, UFC plans and go to Spain, fuck man, I'll fucking love to fucking fight in Spain. Why? Because it's his house. I would love to fucking beat him in his fucking house. <laughs> I love this from you. Yeah, you're, uh, what, have you felt this way in a while about anyone? I, I don't usually hear you speak like this about other fighters. No, because I respect everybody, but this guy. He's pissed you off. The fucking bitch. Has he said something that really irked you, that really annoyed you? I don't need to. I don't fucking like the guy. You just don't like him? <laughs> I think. Wow. How do you think Alex wins? I think Alex will get him in the second round. Probably TKO. TKO. Wow. And uh, obviously you're in Mexico now, so you won't be there, and, and you're preparing for, for your fight. When you think about your fight with Brian, how do you foresee it playing out? Yeah, I think, I don't know if Brian has been preparing himself in, like, uh, high elevation, but I think he's going to try and come quick on me by, like, trying to take my back, take me down. He's going to try to do something desperate like that. I, and I think that's going to lead uh, me to win the fight because of him getting desperate. You know, he's going to feel, like, the elevation. He's going to feel the pressure of the public. He's going to feel my pressure because I'm 100% not getting tired in that fight. And I think I'm going to get him in the second round. Have you been? Do you, do you live full time in Mexico now? Meaning, like, are you fully acclimated to the elevation, or did you come before this fight? Uh, no, I've been in uh, in here, a little higher in Mexico City, like one thousand feet, like higher than Mexico City, in this little town, so I can get like a better rest, better preparation, accommodation. And I've been here for almost two months now. Oh wow! Okay, okay I'll say like I almost almost like seven weeks. And what's the buzz like? Because it's been so long that the UFC, uh, you know, hasn't been to Mexico City. What is the uh, the buzz like in town? People is going crazy here for tickets. But everybody wants to go. Everybody's like asking, "How oh, how can I still get tickets?" And I think they could sell out in like an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know? so it's uh, it's something crazy that uh, I don't know. I don't know how many tickets the the UFC is selling. I don't know if uh, they're gonna open like the the full arena. I think the, the arena has a uh, capacity of twenty two to twenty four thousand people. I don't know if they're doing it, like all of it. Wow. You know? I but, want... uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I just was gonna say I wanna see you fight on that uh Noche UFC card. I feel like you need to be on that. It was a shame, you know, the timing didn't work out because you had fought in July, but they're doing it at the sphere this year. I feel like if maybe you get one here and then one I don't know if in the summer. What do you think? Is this something that you care about or you don't really care about? It? It, like, you know, it, it's, it's something that I really care about. Like, of course, I would like to fight in there. It's just that I'm, uh, you know, you never know in this sport. You know, even even if you 
don't get like um, a lose in a fight, you can maybe get hurt because you're like literally punching nobody else. You know, and if I'm healthy, of course, I would like to fight. When you watched it, did you feel like, oh, I'd love to have been a part of this or did you not really care? Mm, yeah, I would, love, I would love to be a part of that. Like uh, like big events like that, you know, they only come once for first time and uh, I would love to be part of it. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I don't want to take up more of your time, Yair. It's great to talk to you. I'm very happy that you're coming back, that you're getting the big fight back home in uh, in Mexico City. It's going to be quite the scene. I would say it's it's the people's main event. You know what that means? Like, it's the main event for La Raza. You understand what I'm talking about, La Raza, when I say that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. I think, I mean, I think uh, Brandon Moreno deserves it. Like, um, I have fight in, in cars where, like, I'm a, I was the main event. And Brandon is like, uh, like the co main or something like that. I just think he deserves it. You know, he he's been doing a great job. He's always working really hard. He's somebody that I really respect so much. I love him, and I, I I'm rooting for everybody on the card. You know, and uh, I'm really happy that it's happening in Mexico. And for all the people, you know, this will be a great event. I love it. I love it. Well, good luck to you. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I wish you all the best on February twenty fourth. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. All right. We'll there he is. You. Yes. The great Yair Rodriguez. Always a pleasure uh, to talk to him, El Pantera. And that's a nice little card. And uh, that's a fun little day if you're an MMA fan, uh, because earlier in the day, you're getting the PFL versus Bellator card. Uh, that will be earlier in the day in Riyadh. And then uh, following that, you are also getting, actually, I should say, you not only are you getting that, so you're, you're getting PFL versus Bellator, you're getting UFC Mexico City, and you're also getting the KSW Epic card with the, uh, do you know about this? Thomas Adamek, the legendary Polish boxer, 53-6, and six, going up against Mamed Khalidov in a pro boxing bout, four three-minute rounds, Phil DeFries against Josh Barnett. What else is going on here? Um, it's, it's a star-studded event. I think that they... Phil DeFries, Josh Barnett, grappling. Grappling, yes. Six MMA fights, one boxing bout, one grappling, one Muay Thai, all on the same card. Shout out to KSW, baby. KSW. They're calling it KSW Epic. And um, Darko Stosig versus Mateusz Scheffel in two 10-minute rounds? You yeah, pride rules. Pride rules. Professional modified MMA. Yeah. I mean, that's great. There's also that's a tournament. Um, and then the Mexico City card, which I can't wait, let me just see what's going on over there. You know, it's hard to remember. I know obviously we know about the two top fights. Um, uh, Brandon Moreno against Brandon Royville. Supposed to be Brandon Moreno against Amir Albazi. He got hurt, so we're getting Royville. And uh we're also getting the rematch with uh yeah, you're and Brian from that card in Long Island, which I do believe was your first UFC event, yes? First and only. First and only, wow. Yeah, that's why I'm excited for AC. Um, Raul Rosas on there, Manuel Torres, Daniel Zellhuber. Is every fight Mexico versus the world? E it's all, I think it's all but two. Yeah, there's one here where it's Eric Silva against... Muhammad Naimov, and what's the other one? Uh, Claudio Poyas yeah. versus uh, Fer Zayam. Uh, Poyas from Peru, huh? Yeah. Um, that is the uh, the current jerker. The rest, though, is uh, Mexico versus the world in one way, shape, or form. There's no... Oh, actually, well, Rosas is American, technically. Yeah, but I feel like he just reps yeah, yeah. Mexico so heavy that... It's still Mexico. I, I, I say the last 10 fights of the night are Mexico against the world. Can we talk about Yair Rodriguez? He doesn't like uh, Ilya, it seems. It's an understatement. It's, I was going to say it seems. <laughs> I, I think he had choice words that uh, made it, how is it, he's made it so pretty like, clear how he feels about Ilya. Wow, he's so soft-spoken. and uh, Not today. Called him the B-word. Yeah, I think several times. I think I heard him, I think I heard him more than once. This is the thing. I don't think Elliot Tapuri cares about any of this. When you put yourself out there like that, you're so confident. You're so, dare I say, cocky. Not in a bad way. You have to be as a fighter. Look what it did for Connor. Best example. You don't care about all this. You just want people talking. So this is all good for business. If he wins, they have a star on their hands. Oh, for sure. 
If he pulls this off and was that cocky and called his shot the way in which he has, they have a superstar on their hands. Gives Volk his first featherweight defeat, all of the above, gets the belt. Gets the stays belt. undefeated, everything. You have the immediate rematch, which would be big, I would imagine, depending on how this fight goes. You have an Ortega fight, you have a Yair fight. The Yair fight would be gigantic now, I feel like. Especially um, in Spain. You have Max. Yeah, he goes out there. Movsar. You've got, I mean, yeah. you've got a, that, that's why this talk of him versus Sean O'Malley, like you've got a legit five, six options, right? Oh yeah. The featherweight division completely opens back up if, if Ilya wins this fight on, on Saturday. He's just so damn marketable. Yeah. I mean, good looking dude from Spain trying to, trying to bring a card to Spain, undefeated, unbelievably talented. Young, very young still. Yeah. I mean, the the, the main event on Saturday is, is going to be scenes. I, I can't wait. Have you made your pick I, yet? I don't know if I'm going to. I don't uh, know if I can. You're doing one I of mean, those like over one and a half or something? Do you have any sort of prop on this? I am very curious about the fight goes to a decision at like plus 150 right now. But you have nothing actually set in stone? No. But that fight goes to a decision. I mean... These are two high-level guys. I know Volk coming off the knockout, but like before that, his durability was insane. Uh, Ilya, I mean, obviously has never been finished before. I ate that crazy head kick from from Dry Herbert, but I don't know. I could just I could see this just being a five-round war. You know what's crazy? Yeah, plus one fifty-two. You know what's crazy? I feel like most of the featherweights are rooting for Volk because they all kind of actually like him, even though you know he's beaten a lot of them. He's just respectful. He's a good, you know, face of the division representative. But actually, Volk losing is probably better for most of these guys. For sure. You know what I mean? I mean, especially like a guy like Max Holloway. Or Yair. Yeah, and I think if it's Ilya about wins, if, if Ilya Everyone wins... but Movsar, maybe? Yeah, yeah, just because he's the one guy who hasn't fought him. Arnold, too, but Movsar beat Arnold. If, if, if Ilya wins and Yair wins... And they don't do the immediate rematch for Volk, who would certainly deserve it, but maybe he wants to take time off. Who knows what happens? I could see Yair being Ilya's first title defense. In Spain. In the summer. I don't know what the arena situation is like in Spain. Um, well, we don't got to worry about arenas. We're doing it at Real Madrid Stadium. Listen, I don't know. Uh, at Ilya's this point, play. Croke Park. He said it's home. Who said it's home? He's like, I want to I F him up at his home. No, I know, but I don't know. What I meant was, like, I don't know if it's Madrid. I don't know if it's Barcelona. Oh, you mean, like, his actual home? Frank's just being stupid. What is this, open mic night? Frank. Yeah, I mean, this is the newest heckler. It was actually Frank that that was the John Jones heckler. We're talking serious business here, and you're talking about... The John Jones invitation. ...taking his his comments literally. No, but I'm just saying, I don't know which city in Spain has the biggest arena because I honestly don't feel like the UFC likes to do stadium shows. I mean, they have a Legion Stadium. They're going to do it, right? They have a Legion Stadium right there in Vegas and they don't use that. I mean, because they feel like the, the, the experience isn't, isn't great. And also there's so much money to be made in an arena. Uh, let's see. Let's see a lot of, a lot of soccer, you know, football stadiums here in Spain. Let's see. Arena, arena, you know, I looked up uh, biggest arena. It just came up with uh, a bunch of stadiums. Arena, yeah. Where does like Barcelona basketball play? Well, FC, yeah. There, the, I mean, FCB and uh, and Real Madrid are big time Euro League teams, but I just don't know if it's one where the UFC would host a big event. I, I think. All right, here we would. go. Got it. Uh, Seventeen thousand oh. in Barcelona. Ah, okay. Paulo Sant Jordi. There it is. Oh yeah, there's one in Madrid too that holds seventeen thousand. So All right. I mean, so they're it's, good. Yeah, I mean you got a fifteen thousand. Yeah. Oh, Madrid has a fourteen k too. I mean, oh, and it's. I mean, this is. Yeah, these things plenty, aren't shoeing. I mean, look when we had Yuri as champ, we're like, oh, of course, oh, of course, go to Czech Republic. Then go to Czech Republic. Leon champ, oh, of course, in Birmingham, no Birmingham. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. That's why it would be so incredible if he won and they actually did a show in Spain. That would be tremendous against a Mexican fighter. <laughs> Sign me up. It'll be something. There. That's why I can't wait for this. I mean, we talked about stakes earlier. 298. There's so much there. This main event. Might as well be a butcher shop. It's got so much stakes. Wow. What a line. Yeah. I've not heard this line before. Just made it up right here. Wow. Printed on a t-shirt.
That reminds me of my uh, my line, so much ice you can skate on it. Yeah, yeah, too, just like, those are hard bar- bars, as the kids would say. Yeah, did you like the halftime show? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, I thought being it was from great. Atlanta, being from Atlanta, he he repped Atlanta hard. And Little John uh, up in there. I was gonna say a lot of songs that like when when he first started playing them, you're like, ah, yes, yes, like unlock it. It was like a mega mix. Alicia Keys, big fan of Alicia Keys. CeeLo um, loved the piano. CeeLo. <laughs> wait, wait. It was Jermaine. No, I was gonna say it was Jermaine Dupri. But everyone said he looked like uh, CeeLo. They said it was uh, Ozempic CeeLo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was great. I thought the Super Bowl overall was. I mean, I always enjoy the Super Bowl. Eh, it's a good time. It's a it's a big spectacle. You got a list movie stars in the commercials. You got a massive mega star performing the halftime show, uh, and you typically get a great game. And last night, overtime, Mahomes legacy set. It's a good time all around, man. I was just so mad there wasn't a UFC 300 announcement. That was what was, I was sitting there. Edge of I almost seat. got it. I thought we were going to get it with the ball. Yes, like, I'm totally not gonna imagine. Lie. You know, you know what's interesting though. I guess I say like, oh, you know, they couldn't do this on short notice. It does seem like they filmed something for Gronk's kick because Carl Weathers was in it. Which I don't know how I f- felt about that. You know what I'm talking about? No, the Gronk, the Gronk's thing. So that was last year that they did it, and now this year was like Carl Weathers was supposed to get him back. You know, on the horse of of kicking the footballs. That that thing is not live though. The Gronk they, kick wasn't live? No, it was not live last year either. They say that it's live. It's not live. Are you sure about Is this common knowledge? I mean, it's... Because everyone like, was talking about it like it was live. And I even saw on Kay Adams' Instagram, she was like, it was so much fun to be a part of this live. I feel like she's... she's. You think they're all working us? Oh, no. Yeah, doing a work. What? I don't think... It, it is not shot as live. It has a bit of a filmy look, but you could just... That's just your setting. It just doesn't. It just doesn't look like it's live. Are you sure about this? And like, he just happens to like have like the these... These great kicks both years that just like barely miss wide right and then wide left. I mean, last year's there was just no way it was live. Does everyone? I I, I thought it was common knowledge that it was live. That was just the, it just looked too produced. Rick, to you agree live. with this hot take? I thought it was live, but I also was like half watching it. Like this I did not, not think it was live. I didn't think it was live last year either. This wow. wasn't my like most locked in moment, but it's. It obviously could be faked, right? Like, there's definitely. We got not. Gronk sitting in front of 100 million people, and he goes 0 for two. Yeah, like he, he he's can not clearly... an actual kicker. <laughs> get to it. Right, he doesn't. I mean, I get the whole commercial. You know, he doesn't kick; he catches. But like, you you wouldn't just practice. I mean, it was like a 20 yard field goal. Maybe. But what does that part have to do with the live or not live? Yeah, like make or miss whether it's taped or live. Like because I think it was just taped. And they did this whole promotional thing around it where you could go on the FanDuel app and bet it, and then you get a bonus bet if you win. And I feel like, but like, just... why couldn't he shank the kick live? Is what I'm saying. Like, why does why does oh no shanking it have to do with live? Because I think he would have made one of them if it was live. I think he would have made one of them. Aren't they taking bets why? for this? They could just shank it. Are they taking bets for this? If they're taking bets, doesn't it have to be yeah. live? No, it's not real money. Uh... They give you like bonus bets or something. But no, I'm so, saying I, if it was just completely unscripted, completely like live, here we go to Gronk, I think he would have made one of them. I mean, he, he like in both of them, it seemed like he got this incredible contact on it, but he just pushed it left and pushed it right each year. I think he would have made one. I mean, this guy's a super athlete. He has, I mean, at this point, he has nothing but time on his hands doing, I mean, I saw him at the stock exchange just a couple weeks ago. Like he's just killing time. I feel like you go and practice some field goals, you make it in front of him. Okay, so I just Googled, was the Gronk kick live? And by the way, I'm so thrown off by this because usually the the cynic is Rick. Oh no, I really. I, by the way, it very I'm, well could be. I'm not like I'm not saying it. It was 100 percent live. I'm saying I was half watching and couldn't have cared less. So no, no, what no. Does, what does Google tell us? Um, unlike last, this is from WCNC. This is um, the first article. Okay. They got. Unlike last year, the kick happened in front of a live audience in Las Vegas. The former tight end okay. said during an exclusive interview with Tegna Digital that he was seeing more progress than this year. Now. In front of a live audience in Las Vegas. Does that romp? This is from the New York Post. Whiffed on another 25-yard field goal ahead of the Super Bowl with with betters who correctly predicted the outcome of the kick, earning a split of 10 million in bonus bets. Would get a second shot uh, nearby. This year's kick went right away. This year's Super Bowl kick, while advertised as live, actually took place just before the game started in a desert yeah. area. I mean, but that just seems like minutes, no? Maybe they recorded it in the... Are you saying it happened days ago? I just don't think it was it live really? when they went there. I think they w- did it the day of, maybe. 
I mean, and then later, like by halftime, they already had like this this greatly produced commercial for it with John Cena watching the yeah watching yeah, yeah. The kick, and then you know. So I'll tell phone. you why He's I brought like, this I up. It yeah, sounded I'm, like they did two separate, they shot two separate, um, like scenarios, him winning, him losing, because Carl Weathers is in there saying, "Tough luck, right?" <laughs> Wait, so they. So and they he, recorded more than one is is what you're saying? It's no. actually, there it is. This tied the bow on it. I forgot no. about, yes, Carl's, Carl the, Weathers yes. is like tough luck. Yes. No, so so my 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 thing is they, they recorded two scenarios. They recorded one where it's like, hey, you nailed it, and one where you didn't nail it, and then they would switch it based on what happened because mm-hmm. obviously oh, you need to have— recorded two scenarios with Carl Weathers. Yes, 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 because okay. he did the kick, Got and then it. they came back later and said like, you know, tough luck, this and that. But my th- the only reason I bring this up was I, I I don't know am I wrong but I felt like it was like in poor taste. The Carl Weathers part of it. Yeah, no, he they, passed they, away. I know, but they had already done this this entire campaign I know, but like, while he was alive. You gotta, I thought it was nice at the very end. To it did have the, the years. You know, thanks for everything, Carl. Yeah, I think it was live to tape, meaning it was off by maybe a few minutes, and then they just recorded these two scenarios afterwards. No, they would have had already recorded them. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Recorded them before and then plugged in and the then right just plugged scenario. everything. Yeah, yeah. Why is it significant if it happened exactly live earlier in the day or live to tape? Well, now what? reading that, now, now after you just read that, I, I know for a fact. Like, they were not tossing <laughs> to K. Adams. The, that was already all, and they just ran it like a normal commercial. <laughs> no, but... But why is any of that significant? <laughs> because they did this, this whole ad campaign. They're like, watch Gronk live during the Super Bowl kick this field goal. I don't think I missed all this. All I saw was the the actual thing. Oh, I was half watching. Oh, it did. You you haven't seen this whole ad campaign leading up to this? No, it's huge. Carl Weathers comes and gets Gronk out of the desert. He doesn't kick. He catches. They did this whole training montage. This is this is the year that he's going to get redemption and everything. It was great. Anyway, missed. Um, it was a good time. All in all, it was a good time. Ilya, Volk. That's a good oh, yeah, time. Yeah, back to MMA. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, no promos yeah. for two ninety eight or three hundred on the uh, the broadcast. Uh, by the way, what about uh, yeah? You're over there, Rick. You didn't get a chance to weigh in. Quite spicy. I'm uh, I'm all in. Yair versus Ilya in Spain. But cancel the Volk fight. Just do it. Yair versus <laughs> Ilya in Spain. By the way, g- give me Yair versus Ilya, regardless of what happens in both of their next fights. One guy wins. One guy loses. Win, lose, one guy loses. Whatever. Yeah. Get the heat. Mex- Put it in Spain. Mexico or Spain. Yeah. Live show from Barcelona or Madrid. Oh, that'd be great. Live to tape. Uh, yeah, live to tape, true. The one thing we haven't talked about yet, which happened since we last spoke, was, uh, and I touched on it a little bit, Haney Garcia. How great is this? Yeah. Love it. I mean, how can you not be excited for it? Hate the fake Super Bowl run in, love everything else. Uh, what are you talking about? The little tete a tete thing on Friday night? Yeah, the little, like, you thought it was very fake? Very scripted, poorly acted. Bill Haney's, uh, what do you call him? You said he's like, he's, uh, what do you say, he's pimping him out or something? Yeah. You hated that? The fake pull away. Ryan Garcia starts shadow boxing like something was gonna happen. Just looked <laughs> looked terrific. I thought it lo- I not, thought it was not, legit. I thought it was legit. Well, no. you also fell for the for the con <laughs> kick thing. <laughs> I right? did. Uh speaking of run ins, uh your quote running into something. Okay, that was fake. Now by the that way, that was a thousand those, percent fake. Those are my what do you mean fake? They were literally having a conversation. What nah. was faked? Th- that felt like, hey, let's do this, let's have people record it and let's put it out there. Oh, that I mean, uh, sure, but that like the Garcia thing fake. got spicy. The Garcia they're, thing got you just called. No, Ka- but they're they're faking attention, right? They were they recorded a conversation. There's nothing too fake. They they had the conversation. By the way, those are my two quotes. That's that's yeah, the quote, quote on quote action. MMA's uh, yeah, that's another one that won't and, happen and either. Boxing's greatest woman. Um, one other thing from the weekend. Yeah. Our guy, Ryan Mazzaferi. Oh, thank you so much. uh, Battlefield Fight League, 79. Look at this. Ryan (laughs) Mazzaferi. Ah, he hit him with the who me. Look at that. What a legend. Who me? Amazing. Doesn't matter what happened in the fight. That was a win right there. Yeah, we don't care. Like we said earlier, you either win or you learn. He hit me up on Instagram. He learned. He'll be back. I'm not even worried about it. Yeah, he's the man. That was amazing. That was incredible. I, I mean, he looked smooth doing it. I can't lie. Looked confident. Looks, I mean, look at this. He looks ready to go. <laughs> yeah, the smirk pointing down. I mean, it's smooth. Oh, my God. Frank, Shut this up. is all you. You created yeah, this that. moment. Mm, exactly. Did you know about this? Who, me? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Did you know about this? Yeah, we talked about it last week. Oh, my God. This has to live forever. It just gets me every time. It's oh, my like, gosh. I can tell that he's starting to, like, man, I need to take that away from him. No. What? Who, me? <laughs> I love it. I say keep it going. I mean, that's right out of Fred Norris's book. Perfect. Yeah, shout out to Fred. You know Fred? Yeah, Fred Norris. Are you kidding? Yeah, I've never heard that. I don't think oh. I oh Yeah. Rick, you know Fred. Howard Stern course, show? Yeah. Yes, he's like the, the he's the one that created this drop thing. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it, mm, I, that I can actually I can, isn't true. But what? Other than he popularized it drops. It. He popularized it in the middle of a show to be just dropping sounds. Who did it before Fred? Like every radio, the radio, no, nah, like human uh, history. That's the busiest. Yes, bingo. There it is. <laughs> There's another one. No, I'm talking like Frank is our friend. He's been he did doing not invent radio drops. He's been doing this since the late '80s to play. Like, no way. I'm not going to allow this. Listen, I also have to say they um, revolutionized this. Yes, no one sure. was doing this. Nobody. Nobody no, is. no one. Name Nobody one. Ever. Who are you going to say? Uh, radio. Free- you think Who? I know the, the Lazarus? Disc, any disc jockey? No. Nah. Every disc jockey, case, every radio yeah. DJ from on a every, national scale, a disc jockey in well, uh, at WJPG in Detroit isn't the same as doing it on NBC radio. This national. is not the argument. Yeah. Who said that he invented it? He po- I said he popularized, popularized it. Popularized it, okay. Yeah. Larry David uh, made the cop salad. Popularized it, meaning yes, because they did it, it became popular because the rest of the world found out about it. Okay. World. By the way, not just America, world, Canada. I'm listening to it, yeah. right? All right, I, I do have to say before that I was able to guess Howard Stern. Uh, that is good. Just because anything with you, it's it's sort of just take the context clues, and I either guess Howard Stern or Billy Madison. It's pretty. Much- I'm hitting at like eighty <laughs> percent on that, just like going in blind. How did yeah, it's the, been working um, out for me? By the, the way, Bukes we- King reference earlier. The Bukes, that was, yeah, that was funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Frank, Frank goes. Frank goes. Oh, is that from Billy Madison? I'm just like, uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Did it's you actually Bukes Queen in the movie. Yes, but, he but was I'm making a, a subtle nod. Yes, yeah. the Mucus Queen is yours. Someone like must that. have known that somewhere. There's got to be Frank, someone out there Frank, who has in this control room knew it. I feel like Connor. You also have to account for like the Seinfeld percentage. There's another. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot there's of another sound. element yeah. to yeah. include there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But I I'll pick up on those once I start watching. Uh, Listen, I'm not a very complicated Sorry. guy. There's a there's a wrestling reference here, a Seinfeld reference there, Billy Madison reference there. By the way, what about that? Uh, were you guys locked into the uh, the WWE thing on Thursday? I was all in. Uh, no, but I saw the tweet from uh, uh, Triple H about Cody now being the main event. I so then I went to you guys for intel and I found out. Oh my gosh, I was at Ronnie Chang. And shout then out, I come out. Shout out to our guy Ron, the man, and uh, Strong and then all. Of, no, listen. Do we take a picture together in the VIP? Sure, but that's that great. that's neither here nor there. Uh, by the way, you, you, ugh, I wish I gave you the picture. Freaking Todd Duffy takes the. Fo- I'm walking out of the venue, and Todd freaking Duffy comes and rear naked chokes me. <laughs> Big Todd Duffy. He's like, guess who? Guess who? I, I can't think. I, I thought it was Schultz, maybe. I'm like, nah. And then it's Todd Duffy. Similar like, physique, did you did you sure. guess someone? I said the only person I said was Schultz. Yeah, I wasn't thinking Todd Duffy. He's West Coast guy. Todd Duffy wearing sweatpants and like those shoes. He's you know those shoes that, you know those shoes that like are slip ons and each toe is oh, oh the yeah. vibro. Oh, like, <laughs> what he was wearing those to a comedy show? Not just so, a comedy like, show. Radio City Music Hall. In- individualized toes. Oh yeah, rubber rubber toes out at. Radio City Musical. Oh, yeah. As one does. As That's Todd a Duffy wild does. move. I can't and see then why running up on someone and, and... As and I'm talking to some other people, and, and I'm looking at my wife, oh. like, trying to... And she has... And she should know Todd Duffy, because he's from the era where we were living in a tiny apartment, and she had to by, you know, just by proxy watch all the fights. <laughs> and I was like, that was Todd Duffy. Anyway, then we hang out with Todd, and I'm like, Todd, what do we do? We're in the VIP room now, and there's... It, this is like being at a wedding, but the problem is... You know, like when we did like the the show in New York, there was like a meet and greet after, but I don't know these people personally. So you can just kind of say hello, take the picture and move on. Everyone there he knows. So everyone there wants to have a moment with him and talk to him in some way, shape or form. Todd, I guess, DMs with him. He's a big MMA fan, et cetera. So I'm like, man, how are we going to, I need to get back to the kids, uh, drive back home, babysitter and all that stuff. Todd's like, oh, no big deal. I'll just walk you to the front. Todd freaking walks me to the front, barreling into everyone. I felt so embarrassed afterwards. Robert you know, toes massive out. man. What's that? He's a massive man. He's a gigantic human being. And uh, I mean, in his defense, he did get me to the front of the line. 
It felt like a bit of a schmuck. Doesn't need defense. We're we're supportive of this. <laughs> How'd Ronnie feel about it? Uh, he was cool. He was. He's like, oh, Todd, good to see no you. Worries. Actually, you know, Ronnie said, let's take a picture. Like, told his guy to take a picture. You know. Amazing. Mm. Did, did you get a copy of that pic? No, and then I told Todd to take a pic, and he freaking botched it <laughs> with like a hundred yards of headroom. Didn't he? Yeah. He said, oh, I was nervous. I was shaking. No one really asked me to take a picture. Yeah, now I know why, Todd. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Anyway, couldn't use the phone. Open the phone. I see Rick telling me it's now Cody versus Rock. I was very confused. Went home, watched it, enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I actually still haven't watched it yet. No, nah, you're missing out. April 6th and 7th. Oh, Cody crybabies. They're satisfied now. We, I mean, We're there's not. a world we should do. We should do live from Philly for Mania, live from uh, live from 300, live from Haney Garcia. I mean, I love that little. Uh, Sign me up. Three weeks in a row. I'll have to miss uh, Mania. Got to go to the weddings. Ah, uh, that's off. That's yeah. off. Yeah, the whole thing's ruined. It's all or nothing. Yeah. yeah. Last thing. Guess who's in coach? All the stuff with the. Uh, I mean, do we have a Strickland, the Sneeko, and, and Machine Gun? Do we have a say? The less, the less we talk about this. Okay. Uh, what's the <laughs> What's the say? I don't know. Is this I worrisome don't. or? No. Nah, all I'm. I don't all, care. all I'll say on this is I'm over the like I'm gonna kill you stuff. Can we Can we put this to bed, please? Where Where did that happen? Every single time Sean Strickland opens his mouth, he's he's talking about. Rules of engagement. I'm gonna kill this person. Legalize kill. Like, oh, right. it's just enough. Yeah, it's just, it's just enough. At one this thing. Point. One thing I am for. I mean, he dropped a YouTube video going after Jake Paul today. Uh, today? Did yeah. Didn't watch the whole thing, but I mean, his setup is unbelievable now. It's got a it's got a, like a super HD camera in his living room. Who? Big Sean? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Motorcycle behind him in the living room. He's got an actual set. I'm talking like it's a high quality setup. He's sitting there in a robe. With his with his feet up in a mug, talking about Jake Paul can fly out and he'll fight him for free. Oh my gosh, this is great for Jake as he prepares for his fight on March second. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't see that. Obviously, I was locked in on the show, but, uh, right, right. but everyone's got a great setup now. Yeah, I mean, uh, it looked like uh, once over went over there and. <laughs> That's right. I mean, that's how nice the it man. is. <laughs> I, mean, I like how, and now anytime someone has an improved setup, you just think, oh, did Michael Wantover go over there? I mean, did we ever talk about Tim Welch's? If we had just given uh, yeah. him a touch more headroom, it would have been. I know, he was a little beautiful. bit, he was a little bit zoomed in. It still was just an incredible setup. I mean, yes, it was great. Even setup. I got a, an improved camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. the same backdrop and everything. No depth, but. I mean, you can't change what's on your walls. That's true. It's a bookcase. <laughs> Quite it, a collection. I did get it a little bit blurred in the back, so yeah, that was smart on you. Um, how do you guys feel about the Welsh gangster Oban Elliot? Yeah, debuting, huh? Yeah, versus no. uh, Woodburn. Well, before he debuts on uh, Saturday, he'll debut on our show hey. uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, uh, we'll have him on. Who else we have? We have some other people already booked. Uh, did you say Jack Hermanson? Oh, yeah, Jack Hermanson. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Nice. Jack Hermanson, Captain Eric, perhaps. So oh! <laughs> nice that was drama. a perhaps. That's not a for sure yet. Drama. That was a perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drama, drama. But, uh, wow, a lot of uh, text messages here. Uh, people excited about 300 or? No. no. About UFC okay, 300? No, yeah. Nobody excited about that. Can't wait. All right. Uh, we'll talk more about all of that, I am sure, on Wednesday. Time to go now, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Um, I got nothing else, Frank. I got Man. nothing else. I'm so mad that I screwed up the uh, the math on the time zones there. Been a while oh, since it, I've done that. It happens. Yeah. You got to think geographically, like no, Mexico City I, I, I further east it up. than us. No, no, no. The crazy thing is, is that anytime someone's not in America or the eastern time zone, I always say, "What time is it in Prague?" Oh, and, and compare it to the time now. Yeah, no. So I tell them. Oh, I want you on it too. I do the math. Not only did I do all that, I just did the math wrong. Instead of doing plus one, I did minus one. So I told I him you, three. Yeah. I thought it was two, but really three is four. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's always some insignificant thing like a decimal point or something. Mm, I don't know if that but really applies here. Given but. the modular <laughs> build of the show, like we were able to adapt. Like it didn't even. No, it's great. It, it, it couldn't have worked out better. Um, I'm just saying. I'm upset because we reached out. Hey, where are you? Like, hey, wait a second. Isn't uh, isn't it supposed to be at three, four? Mm. 
screwed it up. But uh, these things happen when you're booking an all-star cast like the one we just had on the program. And so all's well that ends well. Very happy about that. And uh, very excited that we're getting a quality card on Saturday. Again, it was supposed to be the Anaheim card going up against the uh, Tyson Fury fight. But now, of course, Tyson Fury has been moved to May 18th. So some people who think that it's not going to happen because of the cut. But I'm holding out hope. And I'm very much looking forward to Saturday. Uh, we'll talk more about it on Wednesday. For now, though, thank you very much to all our guests today. Great, great five-pack of guests. Thank you very much to everyone. Thanks to all of them. Thanks to all of you. Back on Wednesday, same time and place. Until the same, peace.